Hey guys, in this lecture we are going to see what is SonarCube and what is the advantages of using SonarCube. At last, how to set up SonarCube. To understand SonarCube better, let's jump into the development phase. In the development phase, developers write the code. Once they have written the code, we need to validate whether they have written the quality code or not. Quality code nothing but, we need to check whether it is a bug free code or not. Is it secure or not? Secure nothing but it is not exposed to any secure vulnerabilities or problems. Duplication is avoided. Sometimes we may write repeated code. Instead of that one, we can write once and we can use that functionality in other places. Maybe we can call it as a reusability. Then tested properly. Whatever code you have written, whether have you tested it properly. Then complex code. Have you written any complex code? If so, it will be very difficult in case of any problems arises or somebody want to understand your code they will take much more longer time sometimes it may lead to confusion and easy to integrate with others code nothing but maybe you are working with a group of people or in a team then you need to integrate your code with their code so in these cases it should not be create a problem apart from this you can do some other checks to validate your code quality but all this who can do that is where peer review comes into the picture. Maybe you can ask your colleague who is good in writing the programs, whatever you are writing, and he will review it and he may suggest some of the betterments to your code. But if you are writing lengthy of the programs, reviewing manually is a quite a tedious task. So we need some kind of automation which can help us to review our code quality. That is where static code analysis comes into the picture. By using static code analysis, you can improve the code quality and also it reduces a lot of your time efforts. So now let's understand what is the static code analysis tools are available in the market. I have just listed some of the code quality or code analysis tools. So SonarCube, Cleverty, Rexis, Veracode, CodeSense. Okay, these are some of the code quality analysis tools. Among these, SonarCube is one of the static code analysis or code quality tool. Now, what is the advantages of using SonarCube? The major advantage of using SonarCube is it is quality management tool. What do you mean by quality management? Apart from the code analysis, it is also gather the reports of various testings which you are doing. Maybe unit testing reports, code coverage reports, and few other things it is going to collect and display in the GUI in very nice understandable format. So if you see here quality gate is passed, how many bugs you have, vulnerabilities, code smells, coverage, duplications, such kind of information is displayed over here. So it is quite easy for us to understand where you can improve. Now let's understand the components of SonarCube. Three major components in the SonarCube server. First thing rules. Rules nothing but instructions which you need to follow while writing your code. There are some best practices, right? Those are converted into rules and they kept it. There are many default rules which comes along with your SonarCube installation. So you can run those rules. Next thing, database. You have rules. These rules are run on your source code. Once that is done, you will get an analysis report. That analysis report you need to store in a database. That is the reason in SonarCube, whenever you install, you will get a database as well. Next, web interface. Once your analysis reports are stored in database, through the web interface, you can see and understand easily. Okay, these are the major components. Apart from this, we have a elastic search which helps to search required data from your SonarCube database. Next to thing, Sonar Scanner. Sonar Scanner is a service or agent which runs on the system where code exists. Let's take that you have a Java code. Now you want to gather the report of your Java code. In that case, you need to install Sonar Scanner on the where your source code exists and run the scan. Once it runs the scan, it is going to gather the report and that will be get published into the SonarCube. How it is getting published, I will discuss in a while. Next thing, wherever you have a Sonar Scanner, you should have the source code. Okay, that you need to remember. Next, this Sonar Scanner can run and generate reports from quite different languages. If you want to know the list of the languages which are supported by our SonarCube and Sonar Scanner, let's jump into SonarCube website and check it out. You can see here, this is the SonarCube official website and if you scroll down, it supports 27 programming languages and if you want to see the detailed one, 
you can see over here. These all are the languages which are supported by the Sonar Cube. It can able to generate code quality report of any of these programs. All right, let's go back. Next thing we will see how the communication happens between the Sonar Cube and Sonar Scanner. So let's take this. This is a developer system or where your source code does exist. And we want to run the Sonar Scanner over here. So we must install Sonar Scanner over here. This is the Sonar Cube server where we have a database and you just think that it is a web interface. So first step, Sonar Scanner collects required information from the source code. So in this case, your source code should have the Sonar Scanner dot properties file in that it will have some of the information that it is going to collect it. If it doesn't have the Sonar Scanner file, okay, you should generate one. That is the first step. Second step is it is going to gather the applicable rules. Let's take that it is a Java program. How does it know? Because in the Sonar Scanner file, it will have that information. Now Sonar Scanner is going to pull the rules which are applicable for the Java. In next step, it is going to generate the reports. Sonar Scanner runs the rules on the source code and generate a report like any bugs are there, security problems, code coverage issues, such kind of things it is going to run and it generates a report. This report with the help of SonarCube, it stores in a database. Once it is stored in a database, through the graphical user interface, we can able to see a visual diagrams or visual reports, which can be easy for us to understand. That is how SonarCube and Sonar Scanner works together to generate the reports. Now let's go and set up SonarCube server. To set up SonarCube server, I have created list of the steps in my GitHub account. Let's go and have a look. This is my GitHub repository. I'm going to share this URL in the description of the video. You can go and check it out. Here you can see a directory called SonarCube. If you go inside, I have a couple of files. To set up SonarCube, you can choose this option. And here I mentioned prerequisites and installation steps. As part of prerequisites, we need an EC2 instance with 2 GB RAM. So T2 small instance can be capable to handle our sonar cube and same thing is mentioned in the sonar cube documentation maybe you can open the sonar cube documentation over here and here you have a hardware requirements and if you see sonar cube server requires at least 2 GB of RAM to run efficiently and 1 GB of free RAM for the OS anyway I tried with the 2 GB system it is working fine and another thing which we need to notice is supported platforms and if you see the java we should install java why because sonar cube developed in java program and uh, if you are using oracle jre then we should go with the server side oracle 11 even in the scanner oracle 11 we required similar way open jdk we need 11 we need to install open jdk 11 before installing or before setting up sonar cube all right so now let's go back and we can see here i already mentioned these two next thing we need a sonar cube user why because sonar cube cannot be run as a root on unix based systems so create a dedicated user account for sonar cube if necessary this is what we are going to do we can create a sonar admin user which can be capable to handle our sonar cube next to download sonar cube you can use this url to download the latest version i'm just opening it in the new window and if you see here we have different editions or else you can go to the sonar cube official website this is sonarcube.org and the download option here you can see all the editions community edition is the free and open source we can use this one without any issue but if you want to go with the developer or enterprise edition we must go with the free trial so you can use it but this is the latest version i can say 9.0.1 but if you want to go with the lta nothing but long term support or stable version we should go with the 8.9.2 and this we can download it from here all right next thing once we have downloaded just unzip it and change the ownership to the sonar user in our case we are going to create sonar admin to him we are going to grant access to this opt because i am going to download it onto opt opt sonar cube directory once that is done we should start it as a user okay that's it after that we can access it from the browser all right so to start with it we need an ec2 instance with minimum of 2 gb ram i have already launched a server and named it as a sonar cube and it is just now came up and another thing is if you go to security group 
okay we have opened port number 9000 you must open this port to access sonar cube from the browser now let's connect to this system i'm just copying it session ssh and i'm loading my key pair devops key ec2 minus user okay so i have logged into my system and we need to install java right and also we need to do some setup that's the reason i am switching as a root and clear the screen and first thing is we should install java let's see whether java is installed or not okay there is no java installed so far now what i can do i can install java to do that one m list we are going to install open jdk Open JDK, we need 11, but let's see what and all options are available. We have Java 7, Open JDK, Java 8, but we need Java 11. For that, we can use the Amazon distribution. Amazon Linux Extras is a Amazon Linux distribution, and you can see list of the packages which are available over here. We are looking for Java Open JDK 11. This is what I would like to install. So we can give Amazon Linux Extras install and the Java Open JDK 11. That's it. So it may take a while to install. Let's wait. Yes. All right. Our Java installation is successful. Now let me check Java minus version. Okay, this time it is showing it as a 11.0.12. Alright, next thing we need to download the packages. For that I am going to opt directory. I don't have anything over here. So to download the packages, wget and go to your documentation. Here you will have a latest version or else you can directly go here. And I am going to take the long term support version. Right click and copy link address. So that we can copy the link. and paste it over here and you can see here it is downloading sonar cube 8.9.2 again it may take a while okay download is successful if i check the files yes you can see here sonar cube 8.9.2 now let's extract it for that unzip because it is a zip file so i am using unzip unzip is successful and uh, now let's go into sonar cube and if i check there are multiple files among this if you go to the config directory in config directory we will have a file file called sonar properties okay if you are using apart from the default settings then you need to update this sonar properties file okay let me open this one and run through with some of the important parameters among this sonar.jdbc username password so these are for databases if you want to connect with the database which is running in the other system yes you need to enable it next thing is oracle if you are running independent database then what is the database you are using according to that you need to enable so in next lecture i am going to show you that postgre sql how to use it okay we need to uh, enable it okay apart from this if you are using microsoft sql server you can enable like this you can have the different different parameters you can upload even you can see here sonar cube web port it is 9000 if you wish to change from 9000 to something else you can change it this is also sonar cube web host from where you need to access it you can restrict that such kind of options are customizable in the sonar properties file okay it will be a bit advanced topic so i'm skipping this one at this moment so let's go back and if i check again there is a bin directory under bin you can find the different operating systems it can support mac os windows linux but in our case we are looking for linux go inside to linux and here we have a file called sonar.sh this is what we need to start so to start dot slash sonar we should give and start we should give if you don't provide anything okay it will give the list of the options which you can input with this one but anyway we should run it as a another user because root user is not entertained to start it because your elastic search works with the non root user if you want to try it out we can just try it out okay let's see what will happen and it is saying that it is started but we'll check the status now you can see here again it got stopped okay that's the problem it is not worked with the root user if you want to see the what exactly the error 
you will have a log file over here okay if you go here pwd under your sonar cube directory there is a logs okay logs directory under logs you will have a log file i'm just exploring this log file and you can see the error explicitly cannot run elastic search as a root that is the error which is it is triggering so we must create a non non root user for that i am going to create a new user user sonar admin okay and the next thing i need to give ownership of the opt sonar cube why because we have the sonar.sh file over there without privilege we cannot able to start as a sonar admin so what i will do sorry ch1 minus r sonar admin colon sonar admin opt slash sonar okay so now we have changed the ownership and if you check the cd slash anyway i'm in the same directory and if i do ll now you can see all are owned by the sonar cube user okay if you see earlier it was owned by the root user all right now let's jump in as a sonar user sonar admin and uh, let's jump back to opt sonar cube then cd bin and linux here we have a sonar then sonar sh dot start so this is how we can start now let's check the status okay it is running fine and another thing you can check that on which port your sonar cube is working net stat sorry minus tulpn okay so this is the command to check it out and if you see here there is a 9000 port is opened and it is running by java application now let's try to access our sonar cube from the browser 9000 once it is ready we can provide the credentials default credentials for sonar cube is admin and admin all right admin admin okay in the first login it will ask us to change the password i am just changing the password once we have changed the password we will successfully logged into the gui of sonar cube this is our gui and you can see there are various options over here in next lecture i will just quickly run through with the what and all these options how we can use it that's all for this lecture thanks for watching and see you in the next lecture hey guys welcome back in previous lecture we have seen what is sonar cube and how to set up sonar cube in this lecture we are going to understand overview of sonar cube console if you see here project tab here you can create a new project okay you can see this console is filling up if we are running the reports but so far we haven't ran any reports that's the reason you couldn't able to see but if you want to add any project you can add it manually by choosing this option and also you can integrate it with another source code management tools but let it be manually for this time so if you choose manually it will ask the project key i am going to give the project key as a maven project and set up whenever you set up it will ask you to provide a token you can choose the some name to your token so i am giving the same name maven project and generate it so now it generate the token by using this token we can able to authenticate our sonar cube okay you can use this one either jenkins or maven system it will get authenticated now if you want to more specific about that you can just click on continue then it will list out that what and all options you can choose let's say that i am integrating it with maven so choose this option it will give the list of the steps which you need to follow if i execute this one i could able to directly communicate with my sonar cube from my jenkins why because it have the project key host name of the our sonar cube and also login credentials okay key is nothing but a credential so you need to keep it in a secure way whenever you are using it that is one thing now once this is done you can able to see issues so far we haven't run any analysis so there is no issues once you start running the projects you can see the issues which are faced by that specific project usually developers come over here once their code analysis is done they will try to fix up the issues which are triggered over here i will show you that as well next thing rules 
as we discussed previously rules are nothing but instructions of your best practices and sonar cube supports various languages okay in each language some of the predefined rules are enabled over here if you see the java we have 639 rules are there similar way c sharp 400 plus javascript typescript like that depends upon the language okay it has some predefined set of rules these rules we can use to create the quality profiles so now what do you mean by quality profile it is a collection of rules let's take that you have a java application now you want to applicable all these rules then you can create a quality profile with the all these rules but by default you will have some quality profiles and if you see here for c sharp we have quality profile css flex go html jsp java okay we will concentrate on java okay before that if you go to c sharp you can see here sonar way this is the profile name of projects it is a default nothing but by default it will be applicable you can change these projects like only specific projects i want to applicable this profile such a way you can design and the rules if you see in the c sharp we have how many rules 401 rules but if you see the quality profile 253 not all rules are enabled on the default c sharp quality profile so they are ignoring some of these rules and when it was updated 16 minutes ago when it was used never okay this is how you will come to know similar way in java we have around 600 plus right among this you can see here only 452 we are using in the sonar wave built-in default profile that is how we can check it out and if you wish to create your own profile maybe then you can choose this option so by choosing this option you can give your own profile name i am giving like a maven profile okay and this is for not c sharp i am giving for java okay next create it i have just created a new quality profile and here you can see how many rules you have activated in this profile there are different rules bugs vulnerabilities code smells security hotspots for these things they have written rules so at this moment i haven't activated any rule on this quality profile which i just created so inactive this many are inactive if i want to add any rules on my quality profile i can choose this option activate more and you can see here activate i am using this one so activate it again i am choosing this one while choosing you can choose the severity also what kind of issue it is how i can treat it if it is not a major issue for this project then i can make it as a minor this is where you can activate it so far i have only activated two right i can even activate all together at one go this is the option okay before activating it if i go here now you can see under java you have a maven profile and uh, at this moment only two rules are enabled and if i click on this and activate more i can choose all of them okay activate in on maven profile apply so among this some maybe get skipped yes couple of rules got skipped but anyway it is added most of the rules to my new quality profile and if you see so far 633 has been added over here now assume that i want to make it as a default profile then i can choose over here you can see here set as a default so that from next time onwards whenever a new java program we are running for analysis then it is going to take this quality profile that is about the quality profiles next thing is quality gates let's take that you have run this quality profile okay maven profile you have run so on your code you found around 100 bugs by running this one now this quality gateway what does it do how many bugs are there if this bugs is reaching to the threshold value then you can limit your code is passing or failing passing nothing but okay the quality is good failing nothing but the quality is not up to the mark that is the meaning so in the sonar cube we can decide whether the quality is good or not let's take that code coverage if you see here code coverage if code coverage is less than 80 percent i'm not going to treat it as a passed which means that the quality of code is not good similar way duplication lines if duplication lines are more than three percent i will treat it as a not good code maintainability reusability security hotspot like that different things you can activate it based on this one we can treat whether our code is good or not again these values may vary based on the project necessity if you want to create your own you can create your own quality gateway by choosing this option okay let's take that demo project okay so i have created a new 
quality gate with the demo project and I can add conditions over here. Okay, condition, condition coverage, how much percentage? I will mention 90%. So 90% of the code coverage has to be done. So whatever test cases they have written, that should be cover 90% of the code. Otherwise, I will treat it as a failed one. How the code coverage does work? Let's take that you have written 100 lines of code and you are testing or checking only 70 lines of code. Then I can say that code coverage is only 70%. If your test cases are covering around 95% of the lines, then I can treat it as a 95% is the code coverage. Next, another thing is I am going to add the bugs, okay, duplicate lines, issues. Critical issues should not be more than 10. Okay, if critical issues is more are more than 10, I will treat it as a not good code. Like this, you can add your own quality profiles and even you can make this as a default. Okay, you can see here set as a default. So it is going to take this as a quality gateways. Next administration. Okay, there are various options you can do. Okay, security, even you can create users over here, projects. If you want to delete some projects and do some activity, all this stuff can be done over here. That is how it is going to work. Alright, now what we do, we will try to run one project over here and see the analysis report. For that, I need a Maven server. Let me quickly set up a Maven server and come back. I have just set up a Maven server and uh, I have logged in over here. Let me go to OPT and uh, Maven MVN minus version. If you check, you can see it is 3.8.2 and uh, this is my Maven server. Okay, where is Maven here? Yep. This is Maven server. Alright, next thing is I am going to clone one project, git clone from my GitHub repository. Let's go to GitHub. Okay, hello world I am taking. This is the project. Let me clone it. Git is not there. Huh? So let me clone it again. Alright code is cloned onto my system. Now we need to generate the analysis report or code quality report of this hello world program. For that if you do remember in our previous lecture we were talking that we need a sonar scanner. But if you are having a maven you no need to explicitly install sonar scanner. It will come by default so you can execute the sonar scanner or sonar cube goal on your maven command it works fine. You don't need to explicitly maintain that. Let's grab that command. If you do remember while creating a project, we could able to see that, right? Similar way, we can grab it. This is our sonar cube. So we have missed to note the token of the Maven project. So I'm going to create a new one. Before creating, even you can delete it. To delete, you need to go to administration and projects, management, and you can select the existing project and you can delete it, sorry, here, okay? Once you have deleted, again you can create a new project or else go to home page and create a project or add a project manually. Then I am going to name it as a hello world. I just named it as a hello world project. Set it up and uh, hello world project generate it. So now we have generated the token but I want to get the command as well. So for that just choose Maven and you will get the command. This is what you need to execute in your project. So now I have my project over here. Here I can run my command. So I'm just copying the command which I just taken. Let's execute and see what will happen. Okay, it is running, but we are not doing build here. Why? Because if you see here, we are just done the sonar sonar. There is no build option. We need to add package if we need the build. This is first time we are running. That is the reason it is pulling the all the dependency packages. Okay, it is running the sonar scan now. Alright, it has been successfully ran and you can see here, you can access the analysis report from here and if you scroll up little bit, you can see the quality profile as well. If you see here, quality profile for Java, it is sonar way. Even it has some of the JSP code and the XML code. That is the reason it is running those quality profiles. Alright, if you want to change it to the something else, we can change it, but that's okay. Let's jump into our sonar cube and we'll see. Yes, new code is came and if I click on here and bugs are zero, code smells are two and if you want to see the detailed report, you can find it over here. Okay, two smells are there. There is no bugs in this code. Now what I will do, I will change my quality profile 
to another one so maven project and just making it as a default and i will rerun this code okay while rerunning i will add build option as well i'm just using the same credentials so package and i can do the clean clean package and also sonar goal we are running This time compilation and build also going to happen. All right, build is successful and this time build also happened. And if we see the quality profile, it should be executed Maven profile, right? Yep, you can see here Maven profile has been executed. Why? Because we made it as a default. Now let's go and see the report. Sonar cube. And you can see here vulnerability this time it has been added. Why? Because we are doing more tests this time. And also overall, if I see one vulnerability is there and 18 code smells this time it is more and if you see the date three minutes ago it has been started and it it has been executed that is how we can run or we can change our quality profiles and also i can make it as a failed how i can make if code smells are less than 20 i can make it as a failed as well and if you want to know the more details you can go to the issues and here it will display the each issue what is the issue so that developers comes over here and they identify the bugs or critical issues all this stuff and they act on this based on the priority that's how it is going to work that's all for this video thanks for watching i hope you found this video valuable hey guys welcome back in previous lectures we have seen how to what is SonarCube and how to install SonarCube? Next, understanding the SonarCube GUI. In this lecture, again, I am trying to show you how to install SonarCube, but it is a little bit different. Why? Because whenever you install SonarCube, by default, it is going to use default database. But in this case, I am going to create a database as a separate one. Why? Because in production ready environments, that is how we need to set it up. I have already done similar kind of video for the around sonar cube version 6.x but now they have done some changes and they withdrawn the support for the mysql databases that is the reason i am trying to create this document once again at this moment sonar cube is supporting only for mysql server oracle and postgresql databases so in this case we are going to see how to set up sonar cube with the postgres sql and these are the instructions which we need to follow but before that i have already explained this diagram in our previous lecture but let me quickly explain so there is a sonar scanner where you are have there is a sonar scanner is kind of agent for your sonar cube server and it resides on the system where you have a source code so it runs the source code it's it runs the it runs the analysis on source code and generate a report this report it is going to share with the sonar cube and it stores in the database Whenever, whenever you want to retrieve the database, you are going to use the search server like Elasticsearch to retrieve the data in the web server. That is how it works. So the major components on this one is a web server and Elasticsearch and the database. So these are the three co major components we are having on the Sonar Cube. Now we are going to use these two as one server. Now we can set up. Now we can set up these two in one server and this one in setup and this one in the separate system but uh, for this demo i am setting up all this in the same system however i will treat however i am going to install database separately and install sonar cube separately and will integrate these two that is what way uh, that is what i am going to do and the next thing there are some system requirements which we need to follow and also some steps we need to follow some steps we need to follow which are not mentioned in this document so with all those steps i have created a separate document in my github repository called devops and if you go here in the integration with this if you go here if you see here sonar cube with database in this document i kept all the all all the steps and there is one more there is one more there is one more document that is set up sonar cube it is inbuilt database okay anyway we have covered this in the previous lectures now it's time to cover this one let's go inside and I have set up all the steps which we need to follow. First thing is prerequisites. We need an EC2 instance. This time we are going to use the Ubuntu system with the T2 small. Why? Because we need 2 GB RAM minimum. Next, install Java 11. So to install Java 11, we can use this one and to list out and to install. So first we need to update. 
to install java first we need to update then we can check for the then we can check for the open jdk and install open jdk next these steps i have copied from the postgresql official website so these are the steps to install postgre database okay this is to add the repository and key once that is done we can install the postgre database after that we should create password for the user whenever we install database it will create a user called postgres and we are setting up the password for that after that we need to create a database and a database user where we are going to grant access to the database in this case we are creating a sonar cube as a database and sonar as a database user after that we need to restart our postgres sql services so that it will take effect next postgres sql postgres 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 SQL is going to run on 5432 port. You can just check it out by using the net start minus T U L P N. If it is not working, try to if you if it is not working, use this command to install net start. Use this command to install net start. After that, remaining steps I have copied from the SonarCube official documentation. So we need to do some system configuration changes. That is slash etc ctl.conf. So these are the number of files, U limits, all this stuff. Uh, and also we need to add the limits once this is done we need to reboot our system to take it effect it is it is not going to take effect immediately after that the this after that this procedure is to download sonar cube and set it up so these are the steps to download and i was discussing about the sonar properties file in our previous lecture where we need to update the username and password and some of the other information we should update and this is actually talks about the database if you have your database in your local system you can use the local host and if it is in another system you need to specify the another system with the port number so that it can able to connect with your database all right after that to run sonar cube as a service this is the file we just need to create it is a extra step i can say otherwise you need to go to this location and you can execute it and uh, one more thing is uh, this is what we need to concentrate if we are going to download it under opt and we are not renaming it to sonar cube it doesn't work as expected maybe i will explain while doing it okay for now let it be and uh, at last what we need to do is we need to give ownership to the our sonar cube directory to the sonar user why because we should not run sonar cube service as a root user that is what we told and we have encountered an issue with the elastic search as well when we were doing the sonar cube setup in our previous lectures okay at last we are going to at last we are going to reload and we'll start the sonar cube service so for this we need an ec2 instance that to ubuntu system why because the steps which we are following over here are belongs to the ubuntu operating system so let's go here and start setting up a ubuntu system and i am choosing the ubuntu system and this time this is t2 way because we are going to use it for the sonar cube as well it requires the 2 gb ram and name sonar sonar cube i am giving okay there could be another server with the sonar cube name and select the security group not this one yep sonar cube server and launch it all right so it may take a while meantime what i will show you is okay in case if you are encountering any issue while following these steps you just need to cross check these steps that is you should open the port number 9000 in the security group which i have already done and start the sonar cube service as a sonar user in this case sonar is the user and use the correct database credentials in the sonar properties and uh, this is use not user use instance which has at least 2 gb of ram all right so i hope this system could be ready by this time let's connect to the system copy the public ip and uh, ssh let me load the key pair and uh, ubuntu okay username is ubuntu for the ubuntu system all right i have connected to this system and clear the screen let me become a root because we are doing administrative activities and go back to our documentation so we need to install java so this is before installing java this is to update
all right updation is completed now i am going to install java apt list which will show you the i think uh, all the files out of this we are going to grip java open jdk 11 right okay open jdk minus 11 so open jdk minus 11 among this we are going to use the open jdk 11 jdk jdk nothing but java development kit usually it is necessary if you are doing the development but for us jre is sufficient but however if you install jdk it automatically brings the jre as well so let's install jdk apt install yes to install Alright, Java installation is completed. Next thing is we need to install Postgres SQL. So let's go back and these are the steps to install Postgres SQL. First thing is we are adding the repository, then adding the key. Next we are updating our next we are updating our system with the latest files, then install the Postgres SQL. Okay, that's it. Let's copy it and go to the system and install it. Alright, database installation is successful. You can cross check your database by using systemctl status postgres sql. Okay, it is active now. Now, next thing is we need to do some modifications. <coughs> next thing we need to create the database. Before that, if you see the next thing is we need to create a database for sonar cube before that we just need to see the user which is created by the postgres database that is postgres and i am going to set up the password for this and postgres i have given devops at one two three anyway so pass now password has been obtained and let's switch to postgres sql user now we are going to create a database user the database username is user now we are going to create a database user database user can be anything we can use the sonar admin or sonar anything so in this case i'm using sonar okay create user so as a database user i'm creating a user that is sonar once you have created you can switch to the psql to jump into the database and here we need to create a tables and grant ownership to the sonar user so what does it mean that first thing we are adding the sonar as a admin user in the database level we are adding we are giving the password for the sonar cube user as a admin that is encrypted then we are creating a data next we are creating a database with sonar cube Next, we are creating a database as a sonar cube and owner is sonar and we are granting all privileges, privileges on the database to the sonar cube and to date. Next, we are going to grant all privileges of a sonar cube database to sonar scan, sorry, sonar user. Okay, that is the meaning. Let's copy this and create this database. Okay, I think double time it got copied anyway. So we have granted access. That's it next thing we just need to restart our sonar postgres sorry we just need to restart our postgres database so we need to just restart our postgres sql so let's oops okay restarted and if we want to see the oops not here i need to come out from the database and let's restart oops even not as a user we need to run it as a root user okay we just restarted it now if i check the status okay it is running
so now it is so now it is running so now it is running let's go back and uh, next thing is we need to do some operating system level modifications for that yeah now one last thing is we need to check that whether it is running on port number 5432 or not only thing is net start minus tulpn okay if it is not working it is clearly giving the instruction okay by using this one you can install the net start command next uh, if i run the same command now you can see your database 543t sorry 5432 it is running on so postgres sql is running on 5432 5432 all right next so next we are going to do some operating system changes operating system level changes so we just need to copy it and if you want to know more about it just copy this url and you can see the all the requirements over here hardware requirements is 2 gb and java 11 is required and if you scroll down okay you can see here you can set this dynamically this is dynamically however we need to keep it as a permanent that's the reason i have said, I, that's the reason i am updating in the slash etc slash slash etc.ctl.com file similar way these are also these also so i am updating in this file all right let's go and do that one vi so sorry here right this is the file and shift g i'm just going to end of this one and insert mode now copy the values and uh, save this file similar way we are going to update the limits files va slash etc security limits shift g o and copy the values which we need to update and save this file that's it and to make it effect we need to reboot it so in it 6 i am giving in it 6 is a command to reboot your system even reboot also could work depends upon the linux operating system once our system is up we are going to set up the sonar cube so meantime you can download the sonar cube from here so if you click over here i think i have already explained in our previous lectures that okay we have different editions we are going with the community edition why because it is free and open source and remaining you can still use it by enabling the free trial so this is the lta version long term support so we are going to use the long term support one sorry cancel so i will just copy it into my sys clipboard so let's go back i think our system might be up by this time so it's still coming up all right so it's up now let me become a root again clear the screen and cd opt so for under opt nothing is there so w get and the link all right we have downloaded it let's extract it Ta sorry gunjip not even gunjip unzip tar sorry unzip sonar cube okay unzip is not installed apt install unzip now let's run it again and uh, i'm going to rename it this is what we are going to talk okay let it be for now and uh, let's go 
here okay now we need to update the sonar cube jdbc user okay you know right to username and password let's go and connect with this system that we need to update under conf directory so we have a sonar dot properties just editing and uh, by default all the parameters are commented out so i'm uncommenting this so username is we have created it as a sonar right and password is admin okay if you do remember those information we have specified over here okay create user this is database user and password okay once that is done we need to update this parameter as well jdbc url this is where we need to specify our database and if you come down little bit okay you can see here postgresql okay postgresql 9.3 or later postgresql 9.3 or greater we should use it okay anyway we are using around uh, 12 i think I missed to show you that but anyway you just need to uncomment it and another thing is uh, our database is located in our local system that is the reason we need to specify it local host if it is in another system we need to specify the ip address of another system that is the only change and this current schema is not required just till sonar cube is sufficient and uh, one last thing is uh, This is by SQL and uh, let me search one last parameter that is sonar search. Okay, so slash. Yep, this is where we need to do uncomment it. That's it. Okay, that's it. Now let's save this file. Now, what do I mean? What I have done is in our sonar cube properties, instead of using the default database, you just go and connect with the database which we just created. That's it. Once that is done, okay, we want to add our sonar cube service as a sonar cube as a service. So for that one, we need to execute it. I have already done the cat. So it is going to create this file and add this content to that file. So that's what I'm going to do. Before that, let me check this file okay so this file doesn't exist and i'm creating it in one shot enter okay now this file is has been created and content has been added and if you see the uh, stuff we are starting it as a sonar user and group also sonar and execution start so where is your sonar.sh but in this case our directory name is sonar cube minus 8.9.2 slash so and so dot so and so so this we need to change it as a just to sonar cube then only it will be possible to start otherwise you need to give this name in in this location okay either way does work and if you go come out i mean to say if you come out from the conf directory and if you do ll and uh, go to bin here we have a linux and uh, ll so this is where we have a sonar cube.sh is there if you do the pwd so this is the path you need to mention here okay but uh, here just sonar cube is there so to make it aligned what i will do i will go to opt and I will move this one to just to sonar cube so that it will be aligned with the what information we have provided in the exec start and stop location okay that's it and one last thing we need to do is owning the sorry giving the ownership of this slash opt sonar cube to sonar user what I am doing is user add I am creating a user called sonar while creating just to make the slash opt sonar cube as his home directory minus d nothing but a directory that is one thing i am doing so i have done that and we need to give ownership still it is owned by the root only if you check ls minus l sorry okay you can see still it is owned by the root ch own minus r 
sonar colon sonar on opt okay now if i check it should be owned by the sonar user that's it now let's start the sonar cube so before that we just need to reload the daemon and system ctl start sonar cube dot service okay so there is a typo let me copy it here system ctl start sonar cube dot service okay so let's enter and uh, if i check now maybe you might be think that okay i'm starting it as a root no because we have updated in the configuration that whoever starting it it has to start with the sonar user only so now ps minus ef grep sonar if i search yes it started and if you see the user it is sonar user and also net stat minus tulpn it should be running on port number 9000 yes it's running and let's connect to our database sorry sonar cube server okay what is our ec2 instance ip this is the public ip colon 9000 all right it is getting ready once it is ready we are going to set up the password and we'll see nice now give the username as a admin password also admin and no need to save let's uh, change the admin password okay that's it we have set up the sonar cube and this one i have already explained uh, to understand the sonar cube console in our last video if you haven't checked it please go and check it out and in next video, I am going to integrate this Sonar Cube server with the Jenkins so that you can understand how we can run the projects from the Jenkins. And also in our previous lecture, we have seen how to integrate Sonar Cube with the Maven as well, right? All right, so that's all for this lecture. I hope. Uh... All right, that's all for this lecture. I hope you found this video valuable. Okay, that's all for this lecture. Okay, that's all for this lecture. I hope you found this valuable. That's all right. That's all for this lecture. I hope you found this video valuable. Please show your support by subscribing to our channel or give a thumbs up if you like this video. And we we'll like to hear you. Please comment out in the chat window if you have any questions. Thank you. See you in the next video. Hey guys, welcome back. In previous lectures, we have seen how to set up SonarCube and console overview of the SonarCube. And in case if we are running SonarCube with the different database, how does it work? In this lecture, we are going to see how to integrate SonarCube with Jenkins so that whenever we run any job, it should be able to run the code quality analysis as well. For this, I have prepared list of the steps which we should follow and updated in our github account let's go and have a look this is my github repository and i'm going to share this url in the description of this video and if you see here we have a directory called sonarcube under this we have a file called integrate sonarcube with jenkins and here i have list out list of the steps which we should follow first thing is we need a sonarcube server yes i have already set up a sonarcube server this is up and running and the next thing a Jenkins server. Yes, this is our Jenkins server. These two are up and running. I have launched it on AWS. You can see here Jenkins server and SonarCube. Next thing on SonarCube, we need to generate a token which can authenticate from our Jenkins system. This authentication token we are going to use on Jenkins. And next on Jenkins server, first thing is install SonarCube plugin. 
Next, configure Sonar Cube credentials. These credentials place we are going to use this token. Next thing, install Sonar Scanner. In our previous lectures, we were talking about that wherever we have code in that system, we need a Sonar Scanner. That is the reason we are installing it over here because we are going to run the analysis on our Jenkins system. At last, we are going to run the pipeline job to generate the code quality analysis. These are the steps we need to follow and pipeline, I have already created a file for that one and kept it in the same directory that is SonarCube and if I open it over here, this is the pipeline script. I just mentioned the list of the steps which we are following. In this, we are going to get the code, build at last SonarCube analysis. These steps I have copied it from the these steps I have copied it from the Sonar Cube official documentation itself. If you see Sonar Scanner for Jenkins and uh, here we have a Sonar Scanner for Maven. These are the steps I have copied. Anyway, I am going to give this link in the description of this video. You can check it out to get more detailed idea. Let's go back and uh, I am going back to again into our documentation. As per this one, these two steps are already completed. Next thing is we need to generate a sonar cube token. For that, let's jump into our sonar cube server. Here we need to generate a token. We can generate a token for a project. So for that, add a project or you can choose here also add a project. Either way is fine. So I'm choosing this one. And while adding our project, we can integrate this one with the with the version control systems, or else we can choose the manual way. For now, I am going to use the manual way and we need to provide a key name over here. So here we need to provide a key name and display name. I have given demo app project as a key name as well as display name next to setup. And here also we need to provide token name. I am going to give the same name and generate. This has generated a token. This is the token which we are going to use in our Jenkins. Now let's go back to our Jenkins server. Here we need to install plugin. That is what we need to do as per the documentation. So we have completed this step. Now on Jenkins server, install SonarCube plugin. Let's go to Jenkins server and to install plugins, go to manage Jenkins, manage plugins and uh, available. Now let's search for SonarCube. Okay, here you can see SonarCube scanner. This is the one we should install. Install without restart. Installation is successful. Now let's go back and next step is configure SonarCube credentials and for that manage Jenkins manage credentials Here we need to add credentials that is under Jenkins then global credentials Here we need to add credentials now the credential type what we are having is a key, right? So this is the token and we don't have username or password That is the reason we need to go with the secret text Let's choose this one and uh, the secret text which we are going to copy now. And I'm going to name it as a sonar cube token. So ID and description I have given as a sonar cube token. Okay to add the credentials. Now let's go back to dashboard. Next thing is we need to add our sonar cube to Jenkins. I missed that step to add over here. I will add it. So let's go back to manage Jenkins. And configure system. We should go here to add our sonar cube with the Jenkins. And if you scroll down over here, if you see here, here we have a sonar cube server. Here we need to enable this checkbox environment variable. It should be available for the build environments. Then add sonar cube. Here we should provide the name. I am going to give sonar cube 8.9. Okay. 8.9.2 let's take the detailed version that is the version which we are using here you can see here version 8.9.2 so it's easy to identify and url of our sonar cube server so this is the ip address and be careful while using the public ip because it will be keep on changing whenever you reboot your system that's the reason in real world we will be using only private ip addresses Next thing, authentication, we have already added our token. With this token, it can authenticate to our SonarCube server. That's it. Now apply and save. And one last thing, what we need to do is install Sonar Scanner. This installation we can do in the CLI of this Jenkins. Nothing but log into the Jenkins with the SSH and we can install it over there. Or else another option is manage Jenkins, global tool configuration. 
and uh, if we scroll down over here you can see sonar cube scanner add sonar cube scanner here we can choose install automatically and i'm going to name it as a sonar cube scanner 4.6.2 okay so this is another way it is automatically installs this version on our jenkins apply and save that's it we are ready to run our job with the sonar cube analysis or code quality analysis for that let's go and create a new item here i'm going to name it as a sonar cube pipeline and this is a pipeline job and okay and nothing to do over here anyway we have pipeline script let's copy that one we need to do minor changes to our code according to our configurations let me copy it just click on raw and take it then copy it here if you see first thing is we are going to run on any agent anyway we don't have the slave systems that's the reason it will run over here next thing path of our apache maven i have installed my apache maven under this path that is the reason i have mentioned it over here okay if this location is very for your environment you need to change it i will just show you so this is my jenkins server if i run mbn version okay you can see here this is maven home slash bin same thing i have provided over there right so slash opt and uh, apache maven path slash bin let me increase font little bit next thing get code this is the code i am going to use it that is java login app next thing we are going to build the code and to build the code we are going to use a command called mvn clean package and this mvn look for in this path in case in this path maven is not available this build step is going to fail at last sonar cube analysis for this we can define the sonar scanner anyway if if we are installing automatically we can disable this option if we want to enable we can enable and we need to provide the name what we have given in the global tool configuration but i am just disabled it and the next step we are going to use the sonar cube env that is sonar cube 8.9.2 we have given this should be matched to our jenkins system configuration at last we are going to run the maven sonar dot sonar this is the goal we are executing that's it apply and save it let me bring it to normal size and build now once we build this it is going to build our code then it is going to communicate with our sonar cube and uh, generate the reports over there so first thing clone is successful then build is happening if we want to see the things what is going on we can just see the console output build is successful now you can see sonar goal is running okay our build is successful and if we see here analysis successful it has been successfully analysis our code and we can open this one by going here or else we can open it from here itself okay here you can see the report or else let me open it in the new window same thing you can see this is the report and the overall report is passed okay here also you can see it is passed so it has 15 bugs zero vulnerabilities and hotspots code smells and few other options let's open this one for more detailed information you can see here this is overall code these are the bugs these are the security hotspots and few other things and usually this is accessed by the developers and they can review their code over here nothing but how many bugs they got and what are those bugs so these are the bugs which are generated next one if you click on this one it will give the more detailed where this bug occurred and some recommendations also we are going to get so this is how we can able to find it again if i go to overview and uh, if you want to see the all the issues you can click over here here it will list out the all the issues next thing if i go to overall and or else if i go to dashboard next thing how does it generated this report next thing how does it identify the bugs it is based on the rules okay here we have the list of the rules right so for java we have the list of the rules in these rules are applicable by using the quality profiles i mean to say for java we have a quality profile called sonar way these rules are applied on our code and among these rules whatever issues it feels those are triggered over here 
and we can change these quality profiles with the more rules as well. If you see, we have 600 plus Java rules, but 452 are applicable. What I will do, I am going to create a new quality profile for that create. I am going to name it as a test profile for this. This is for Java and create it. While creating, I am going to activate all the rules which are applicable for Java. For that, go to the bulk change option here. I am adding all the rules which are applicable for Java to the test profile. I hope uh, except 6 remaining all are going to get added to this one. Yes, 633 has been added anyway. Now, I am going to run the same code by applying the new profile. For that, I can make it as a default, set it as a default and you can see the minor changes in this analysis report i think the bugs could be same but we can see some of the changes to the current analysis okay just to remember that what we are having here we have 38 code smells and five security hotspots now let's run this job once again build now and let me open it all right build is successful if we scroll down little bit somewhere we can see the what and all quality profiles are applicable over here you can see here quality profile for java test profile this has been applied and if we go and check in the previous build i missed it to show you there it should be definitely sonar way okay if i go to the end and if i scroll little bit up yeah you can see here quality profile sonar way now let's go back to our sonar cube and if i click on the Again, sonar cube, and you can see here 95 code smells. Bugs is 15 only, but vulnerabilities are 3. Earlier, there were no vulnerabilities. And if I click on over here, here it is saying that you haven't done the, any new code to this one. But uh, if I go to the overall, these are the 3 vulnerabilities, 6 security hotspots, 95 code smells. So it has done the more detailed analysis. This is how we are going to use the quality profiles. Similar way, we can use the quality gates. Here, we can change these values according to the project necessity, according to the project necessity, and we can apply these quality gates. According to that, it is going to calculate the bugs vulnerabilities. And if these bugs or vulnerabilities are below to threshold value, it is going to make it as a failed. All right. That is how we can integrate SonarCube with the Jenkins and run the code quality analysis reports. Thanks for watching. Alright, hope this video have. Alright, hope this. Alright, hope you found this video valuable. Please show your support. Alright, hope you found this video valuable and please showcase your support by subscribing to our channel or liking this video. That's how we can deliver more interesting content in our channel. Thank you. See you in the next video. In today's class, we are going to discuss about configuration management. First, we'll understand what is configuration management. So what is configuration management? Configuration management is a process for maintaining computer systems, servers and software in a desired consistent state. The funda of using configuration management is we should maintain our systems consistent and desired level. Uh, I'm going to give examples for this one in the later of this session. For now, you just think that we have a target system and the target system should, should be like this. That is your goal. In that case, we are going to tell to our configuration management system that, okay, keep this system at this level or keep, uh, keep the target servers, list of the target servers at this so-and-so operating system level. So these kind of commands or these kind of instructions, we can give it to the configuration management and it is going to fulfill our requirement. And it's, way, it's a way to make sure that a system performs as expected to 
as change as changes are made over the time so whenever we have any changes we can apply those changes to the system and the system should be performing as expected if it is not performing as expected again we can tell to configuration management system and it is going to do it for now why we are using configuration management what is the purpose of using configuration management majorly we are going to configure our configuration management uh, sorry uh, configurations so yep okay yeah so we are going to update our configurations by using the configuration management let's take an example that we have updated sshd underscore config file sometime back to enable the user based authentication so our httpd dot conf file or else some other configuration files if you want to update it is a good way to use configuration management rather than uh, doing it manually next provisioning provisioning means we can create new resources new resources nothing but it may be a vm virtual mission or it may be a disk it may be a uh, some other uh, it resource in our case we can able to create an aws server also using by ansible sorry using configuration management okay so provisioning also a another option to use the configuration management next application deployment this is the one more advantage of using configuration management so we can deploy our application by using configuration management so why it is fitting for a devops process is this is the advantage sorry this is the future that we can take the applications which are built by our jenkins and we can deploy it on config target system by using configuration management next orchestration orchestration is the option of maintaining all the environment consistency uh, let's take an example that you have 100 systems in your project for your client you want to maintain all systems at the same operating system level let's take an example that recently the linux has released the latest version operating system you want to install that one on all the systems then you can tell to your configuration management it is going to take care of that at last we have uptime and site reliability so the major problem in the uh, real world uh, when it occurs is whenever you are doing changes changes are causing for lot of outages okay that is the statistics 70 percent of the outages happens due to the changes either it could be a human error or it could be something else but 70 percent of the outages causes by the change remaining 30 percent maybe it is either uh, hardware issue or uh, some bugs or application related issues maybe performance issues but 70 percent it is causing due to uh, changes so if you are doing changes manually there is a um, more chances that it may uh, what i can say deviate from the actual work but if you are having the uh configuration management you will have the list of the instructions it is going to execute the list of the instructions if the instructions are working well and good not working revert it so like that we can do the changes so whenever we are using the configuration management we can reduce the outage outages which happens due to the changes we can reduce the outages which is caused by the changes so due to that it is going to increase the uptime and site reliability the, the trust on the that particular application or that particular particular app increases apart from this we can able to quickly recover our systems in case something goes wrong uh, let's take an example that we have configured by using um, we have configured jenkins by using configuration management all of a sudden your jenkins server went down if you if it is configured with the uh, and sorry 
all of sudden your Jenkins server went down and you could not able to bring it up. If it is part of your configuration management, then it is quite easy for you to set up a new Jenkins system with all the configurations within minutes. We are going to see that one in the later classes. Okay, so this kind of advantages we have if we are using configuration management systems. Now, what are the configuration management tools are available in the market? Okay, so we are talking about configuration management can do all this stuff. Then what is the products? Okay, uh, as of now, I just said that, okay, by using car, you will have this option, uh, this facility, that facility. Using a car, what is the advantages? Now, what are the brands are available? Similar way, in configuration management also, there are different uh, uh, tools are available. You can choose any tool. Uh, it's uh, purely depends upon project necessity, but we are going to see what and all products are there the one of the product is chef okay chef is the one of the configuration management tool next ansible next salt stack puppet so i just list out, uh, listed out only four uh, configuration management tools apart from this we have few other but among these sorry these are the few of the configuration management systems which are used by the industry Earlier, we could see that Puppet is mostly used configuration management tool, but due to the, uh, what I can say, advantages of using Ansible. So now industry is more using Ansible. Industry is more using Ansible. So even in our uh, classes, we are going to discuss, discuss about Ansible, how we can use Ansible as a configuration management tool system as well as a deployment tool i said that configuration management tool also useful for application deployment so we are going to deploy using ansible for the deployment as well now let's discuss little more about how the configuration management works uh, let's take an example that uh, even we have deployed uh, our test web app application on tomcat server Okay, if you do remember in our previous classes, we have set up a Tomcat system. Sorry. So we have set up a Tomcat system. Then on top of that one, we have deployed a var file. So for the deployment of var file, we have used Jenkins. Okay. And uh, if you ask Jenkins to set up Tomcat system, it cannot able to do. I don't say that it is not achievable. It is achievable if you write the cell scripts and you need to give the cell scripts in the Jenkins. But it, it is not meant for that. Jenkins is meant for to build the uh, your source code. So now we can use configuration management, I mean to say Ansible, to set up our Tomcat system even though if it is empty if tomcat system is tomcat is not installed just install it and set up everything and take the var file and deploy it on the server take the var file and deploy it on the server so that both instructions you can give it to your ansible so setting up tomcat server is a configuration management job and deploying a var file i mean to say uh, artifact artifacts on the target system is the deployment tool activity so ansible can able to efficiently manage both the jobs without any issues okay that's the reason we are going to use ansible as a configuration management management tool now now why ansible became so much popular okay why can't any uh, what i can say yeah i cannot uh, compare with others but why it became a more popular uh, configuration management tool the first advantage for this one is it is currently owned by red hat okay as you know red hat have the wide range of market already they have uh, operating system and few other products it are those are already used by industry and uh, now the ansible is owned by red hat so they they are efficiently able to promote it okay but uh, we we are going to see few other futures sorry options 
why we are using ansible more before discussing about that one let's see what we are going to discuss uh, in the ansible in today's class okay first we are discussing about introduction why what and why ansible and how ansible works and prerequisites to start okay then we are going to prepare ansible lab environment ansible setup and install ansible okay these are the activities we are going to do in today's class managed nodes may not be possible but we are going to do still installation of ansible these all are we are going to cover in later classes let me quickly skip this one <coughs> okay so now what what is ansible okay ansible is okay radically simple open source it automation engine okay so it is a simple it automation engine it is going to automate your it related work now what kind of work it majorly deals it deals infrastructure as a code whether you heard about this term or not but the major purpose of configuration management is infrastructure as a code how we can able to achieve it assume that you want to provision a new system and you want to do some configurations and then install application rather than doing all these steps manually we can convert into a script all these steps and whenever we execute the script the script is going to provision the provision a new system install all prerequisites deploy the application okay it can able to do that one so that is the major advantage of using the configuration sorry yep ansible okay so as i said the ansible features configuration management provisioning application deployment and orchestration so these are the options now why ansible is mostly used for configuration management system so the first advantage is very simple it is very simple it is written in python this application or tool written in python okay and it is very easy to use and the playbooks are code what we written over here is the yaml format okay uh, yaml format is very simple to understand there are very few syntaxes to know uh, if you know that one it is like writing an uh, what i can say if a uh, message as a in the english that's it so it is quite easy for you to un uh, write as well as understand so human readable and uh, no specific code skills you don't require any prerequisites to write this uh, uh, scripting and the tasks executed in order so in order nothing but if you take any programming languages like java c c p p there is a functions okay functions is a a piece of code which will get executed whenever you call that function so we split our code into functions okay if somebody uh, are there somebody or developers over here they can able to understand otherwise so functions they use and uh, your code execution will be jumping here and there you don't know uh, how the uh, what i can say it is executing you need to ch check it out your controller how it is going but in ansible it is a execute in sequence format nothing but line one line two line three there is no shifting of your controller from line one to line 10 it is going to execute in the sequence next powerful it is so powerful okay why it is powerful because we are going to use it as a configuration management application deployment and also provisioning okay so that is the reason a single tool can able to achieve achieve multiple activities and as well as orchestration next agentless okay this is one of the most advantage i can say for ansible is it is agentless whenever i say agentless it doesn't mean that it doesn't use any agent it uses the agent but in other configuration management tools what we need to do is uh, let's take an example that we have 100 systems and one configuration management system to manage these 100 systems so now we need to install 
agent to all the clients hundred systems to make as a slaves to this particular configuration management system i will explain that with the image now you may not understand but uh, just uh, think uh, just think that it is agentless why because it uses open ssh so open ssh is the default uh, agent in our linux system even to connect to our system we are using ssh right so that is open ssh so without that your linux system doesn't run maybe you can do the telnet but it is not secure way the secure way is to connect through ssh so same uh, port number and same agent it is going to use to manage your client system so additional agent doesn't required on your all the client systems next it is secure anyway ssh is secure that is the reason even to log into our systems we are using ssh okay so these are the options or features uh, made ansible is the mostly used uh, configuration management system in the market at this moment okay apart from this it is efficient okay the resources which which it is consuming is going to very less okay it doesn't require much resources and open source this is the one more advantage you can if you have a linux system you can install it is uh, what i can say ansible without any issues it is a open source and flexible okay it can manage different uh, operating systems like you can manage with windows mac linux okay any of the operating systems you can use and also you can customize your ansible playbooks or modules so these are the advantages but ansible configuration management master node must be a linux system nothing but you cannot install ansible on windows system you should install only on linux system so let's take how ansible does work okay this is what i was talking so this is control node wherever we install ansible that we call it as a control node and from control node from control node we are going to give instructions to our nodes nodes nothing but the systems which are managed by your ansible control node okay either sometimes i may pronounce it master either master or control node control node is the actual uh, what i can say name given by ansible so we we should call it as a control node so control node manages all the nodes okay and these nodes we call it as a managed nodes managed nodes nothing but which are managed by your control system those nodes we call it as a managed nodes so node 1 node 2 node 3 like this we have hundreds of systems in our environment and uh, control node can able to communicate with these systems through the ssh through ssh it is going to communicate we don't require any additional agent to communicate with your node but only thing is we need to tell to our node that okay this is the control node this is the control node that we need to tell we need to tell to that one we should enable the passwordless authentication okay passwordless authentication if you uh, do remember we have discussed it some time back uh, how we are using our ec2 user key right similar keys we need to generate and push it into all the client systems if we push it into all the managed nodes it means that your ansible can able to communicate with your nodes okay but anyway we are going to see this one uh, practically but for now just to think that your control node is going to manage your managed nodes through the ssh port okay now we are going to see what are the components of now we are going to see what are the components of control node okay majorly in ansible we have inventory okay inventory is a uh, list of the systems which are managed by your ansible control node so your ansible control node want to manage 100 systems these 100 systems information should be available in the inventory otherwise it cannot able to manage it so the system should be listed out in the inventory otherwise ansible cannot able to manage it next playbooks so playbooks are the scripts which we give where we can give instructions 
so in the playbook we are going to give instructions that okay go and install tomcat go and upgrade this system or go and install git go and uh, update this uh, particular file okay these kind of instructions we can give in the uh, in a file that file we call it as a playbook okay next modules so modules are uh, something like a predefined libraries okay so if you do remember again uh, whenever we are using some programming languages we are going to import some of the libraries right okay so those libraries will have additional features if i use that library i'm i need not to write a uh, heavy line of code which is already developed and also you, you are going to import that feature similar way we have hundreds of modules in ansible so we can use our modules in the playbooks to write our playbooks just to give instructions okay so most of the modules are predefined modules and uh, most of the cases we can use the modules which are available okay i am going to repeat once again so modules are something like a libraries okay so rather than uh, if we do remember if somebody written c language uh, we are going to call uh, std in std out okay so which means uh, to print your uh, output or to read out uh, input you need those libraries otherwise you cannot able to read it so it makes our uh, work easier similar way ansible have uh, some modules hundreds of modules i can say most of the cases we are going to use these modules in our playbooks to write our scripts and i mean to say yaml scripts and uh, sometimes you may need to define the uh, custom modules but custom modules we rarely use but to write custom modules again you need the python programming language okay so that is the reason we cannot able to touch the customized modules but most of the cases our work is fulfilled with the predefined modules we are going to see these again with the examples there you will get more clarity but the co major components in our control node is inventory playbooks and modules okay we are working with these three all the time throughout our ansible training okay next ansible terminology okay i hope today is little lengthy theoretical classes but uh, uh, we are you know what i can say focusing little bit on the infrastructure side so that is the reason i would like to take little more time but all this is already uh, what i can say available in my ansible course at the end of this today's session i am going to give free coupons for that maybe you can use that one okay now ansible terminology so first control node as i said control node is any mission with ansible installed wherever we install ansible that we call it as a control node next managed nodes managed nodes nothing but the network devices or serv servers you managed with ansible so through the ansible whatever we are managing those we call it as a managed nodes next inventory the list of the managed nodes an inventory file is also something called as a host file either host file or inventory we call it as a uh, what i can say yep either either way we can call and it will have the list of managed nodes so whatever managed nodes managed by ansible all those systems information is listed out in the inventory next modules so the unit of code ansible executes okay so it is a ansible executable code kind of thing each module have the particular functionality if we use that module we are going to get some feature uh, just a quick example assume that i want to copy a file from uh, my ansible system to another location then i can use a module called copy okay so copy is a one of the module which is comes with ansible so it's like a one of the command even if you do a, uh, if you if we compare with our linux ls is a command right whenever we execute ls uh, it is going to display what is there in your current directory but ls is not just a command if you go 
your us are bin and there if you see ls file it is a code if you open there is a file called ls if you open that code of course linux is defined in c language you can see that c language code means whenever somebody executes what this ls should do those instructions it has given so it will go to the hardware level and pull up the uh, whatever files are there and the displays over there but anyway but we treat it as a command similar way modules will help us to do the copy activity but in the copy uh, module whenever you we are using in the background the copy module is written in python so they have written a, a functionality how the copy module does work okay next tasks okay so tasks are the uh, what i can say part of your playbook the unit of action in ansible just now i i told you that copy i want to copy a file so copying a file is a task okay next to playbooks playbooks is ordered list of tasks we can put our task in a playbook and we can execute it okay so playbook will have the instructions like where to execute how to execute all this information is there but the task will have the only information what to do so these are the terminologies you should know sorry these are the terminologies you should know in ansible most of the cases we are going to use these terminologies next ansible lab setup so this is how we are going to set it up as i said ansible can able to manage either windows linux or mac any os but uh, in our case what we are doing rather than going with different uh, uh, operating systems we will go with the different flavors of linux operating systems that is rhel amazon linux and ubuntu linux and we are going to manage three kind of different systems with the ansible and uh, it while executing on different operating systems i mean to say flavors of linux the playbook or tasks may change okay which we are going to see that in a in our labs so this is how we need to set up our environment and we are going to set up this at the by end of this uh, ansible training and we can able to manage all these systems efficiently okay next we are going to set up ansible so to set up ansible it is quite simple we need a control node uh, okay these are this is we are going to discuss later okay yep so to set up ansible control node we are going to follow the instructions which we are going to discuss over here that is first we need to set up an ec2 instance then set up host name okay it is optional but uh, it is a best practice to set up host name and create ans admin user we need to create a dedicated user for ansible uh, because this user is going to useful to manage our uh, target systems next add users add user to sudo's file so whatever user we have created that user we need to add to sudo's file then generate ssh keys so we should generate ssh keys because ansible works with the passwordless authentication and enable password based login why because we want to copy these keys onto the target system for that purpose we need uh, password based login if, without password based login also we can do but i don't want to get you guys confused so we are going to enable password based authentication then once this is done we are going to install ansible okay so these are the instructions we should follow to set up ansible these are the prerequisites i can say once this is done we are going to install ansible okay before setting up ansible any questions okay let's continue so as i have listed out the instructions first thing is we need to launch an ec2 instance so launching an ec2 instance this is for ansible this time so i am going with the amazon linux 2 so in this system i am going to install ansible even you can choose the red hat as well there is no issue or susi or ubuntu i am going with the amazon linux and uh, I'm going with the T2 micro free tier uh, EC2 instance is fine 
because it is uh, we are managing very limited servers we don't require a lot of resources and we are going with the default options name and simple server i'm giving and select security group uh, for this one we don't need to use any additional port number so we can use the our default devops right so default even we don't require 8082 or 8080 or 80 all this okay just 22 would be fine but we are using a common security group for our all labs so let it be but in real time world we don't use the same security group for all the systems because enabling the additional ports is always a problem that's the reason we are going to uh, enable only the required ports at the security group level i'm using the existing key pair i have launched my ec2 instance so once we have launched our ec2 instance let's connect to this system so ip address followed by our key pair devops key right i think still it is coming up okay it could not able to connect you can see here press r to restart the session just if i click on r yes i could be able to log in because it came up so this is my ansible server let's become a root as i said first we are going to change our host name so va slash etc host name i'm going to name it as a managed not managed control right control node okay so i'm naming it as a control node next thing is we should create an user i'm going to create a user called ans admin so user add ans admin and set up the password password ans admin so abc123 i'm giving abc123 so i have set up the password for my user next thing is whenever you create a user by default the user doesn't have root privileges user doesn't have root privileges but our ansible system requires a root privileges either in the local system or on the remote system so for that purpose we must add this user to sudo's file why because we are going to install some softwares on the target systems uh, uh, if necessary so that's the reason we should add the this user to sudo's file uh, maybe it may not required on the control node but still it is best practice to add uh, in all the systems sudo's file so sudo's is a file cat slash etc sudo's okay this is the file so far i haven't discussed about this one but this is the sudo's file so sudo's file is a file which will help us to get the additional privileges to our user additional privileges to our user so this will help you to restrict a user to execute particular command okay let's take an example that our, our ansible system sorry ansible user don't want to do the uh, what i can say uh, reboot then we can add the ansible user and we can deny that particular command or else we can ansible server should do the reboot then still we can do that one like that we can either allow the permissions to execute specific commands or deny the uh, execute the commands uh, sorry execute specific commands either way you can do okay now what i can do i can edit this file i can edit this uh, uh, sudo's file so to edit sudo's file i'm just clearing this uh, actually we opened this file right cat slash ctc sudo's okay okay this is the file usually we are doing va to edit this file okay any file if we want to edit va we are doing but for, for sudo's file that is not the process we need to use the va sudo okay if you execute this command it automatically open up the 
slash etc sudo file in the edited mode but you must be a root user to edit this file otherwise you cannot able to edit it okay so vi sudo and uh, you can add a just an entry that your uh, i just came back or down to this particular file it's because i need this instruction so if you give this one what will happen our ans admin user can execute any command without password okay while executing any root privileged command it won't ask for password okay that is the meaning of this one so i'm going to just add so ans admin space and this one okay that's it now what will happen our ans admin can execute any command without any password it won't ask for password if it is not there then it cannot execute uh, admin privileged commands okay so let's save this file okay i have saved this file next thing if i do su do su so i want to switch as a ans admin su minus ans admin okay this is how this is ans admin so this is how we can able to switch from root user to ans admin user okay but before switching i forgot to enable password based authentication so that is va slash etc shh sshd underscore config okay this is the file in this file we want to enable password based authentication so just we have to open this in edit mode and give slash okay whenever you give slash over here uh, and uh, any keyword p a s s w o r d okay any keyword you are going to give then this keyword get searched once you have given keyword and give enter you can see here password authentication is yes okay this is the option we should enable but currently it is commented out but password authentication no is enabled okay so we just uncomment this one and comment this one that's it if you do this one the password based authentication is enabled so from now onwards we can log in with the password okay if we, if we are logging as a ec2 user we have loaded key pair right but now what we can do we can set up a password to ec2 minus user and rather than loading the key pair we can directly use the password itself but we are not dealing with the ec2 minus user we are dealing with the ans admin so for ans admin we have already set up the password as well now if i open the new session ssh and the same ip address let me get it and i will log in as a ans admin to this system and uh, sorry i no need to load key pair because i want to log in as a user with the password now you see here it is asking for password ans admin and i know the password of ans admin oops yep one last thing i need to do i have edited this file i just need to reload the my sshd configuration otherwise it cannot able to read this configuration so sudo anyway i'm a root so service sshd reload okay don't stop it if you stop it uh, it when it may not come up and currently we have connected with the sshd service only if the service goes down even we will get disconnected and we cannot able to log in and we need to reboot the server again okay so now i have reloaded now let me again click uh, press on r so this time it is asking for uh, username ans admin and you can see here it is asking for password why because we have enabled password based authentication over here so abc123 is the password yes i would like to connect and you can see here i can able to log into the ans admin and uh, pwd if i give my present working directory slash home slash ans admin and who am i i am ans admin okay so this is how you can log in but if you want to log in from your root user okay here we have logged in as a root user right root can switch as any user so su minus ans admin if i give directly i can switch to the ans admin okay now if i do who am i ans admin and uh, pwd slash home ans admin all right 
so this is how we can switch to our ans admin next thing is we need to generate the ssh keys we need to generate the ssh keys so why do we need ssh keys because these ssh keys if i copy into target system then those servers allow me to without using my password i don't want to use my password each and every time okay that is the purpose of creating ssh keys so to generate ssh keys ssh minus key gen okay ssh minus key gen is the command to execute the keys okay you may ask that we have logged in already as a key uh, again we are creating new key if you do remember we have logged in with the key based authentication onto ec2 minus user if i go and check for ec2 minus user of course there is a authorizer keys but if i want to log in as a ans admin ans admin doesn't have any keys at this moment okay before executing this one let me cancel this and if i do ls minus la you can see here in the current directory we have only bash files there is no dot ssh so whenever we execute ssh keygen it is going to create a dot ssh directory in my home directory and it keeps the public and private keys okay whenever we execute this command it is going to create two files that is one is public key another one is private key private key nothing but the key pair which we are loading while logging into our system so in our case what is that uh, devops key we are loading right so that key is the private key which is there in our local laptop and uh, public key nothing but if you log into the ans admin okay let me log in as a ans admin okay i'm i'm doing an ans admin user so sudo su minus is to become a root user i have a pseudo privileges so i can become a root as well and su minus ec2 minus user okay so again i have switched to ec2 minus user if you don't want all this confusion just log in as a ec2 minus user okay so just a duplicate session so i have logged in as a ec2 minus user and if i do ls minus la you can see here dot ssh directory is there if i go inside to dot ssh there is a file called authorizer keys if i open this file you can see here devops key okay this is the devops key public key this is public key this is public key and where is private key private key which we have loaded so if you load the appropriate private key to communicate with public key then only it it works and this public key is available under ec2 minus user that's the reason you can log in as a ec2 minus user if i keep this public key in ans admin user home directory under dot ssh and authorizer keys then from now onwards by using the devops key you can log into the ans admin as well okay but uh, ignore it if it is still confusing but to generate the ssh you just need to execute this command whenever we execute it is going to generate the ssh keys nothing to give any information just enter okay don't give any keys or any passwords so once we have executed if i do ls minus la you can see here there is a file called dot ssh has been created and if i go to dot ssh and uh, here you can see here id rsa it is a public private key and this is the public key we should not share our private key with anyone okay we should have our uh, with us only see here this is private key and if you see the public key it is sim similar to how it is there right even for a devops key how it is there similar way it is there and it will give the information where you have generated that's not a problem even you can remove this one if it is let it be like this also not an issue okay so this is the public key now if i give this public key to you and you kept in your system then i can able to log in from this system to your system without any issues okay that is also possible 
okay so whatever prerequisites we required to set up our ansible system we have generated everything again i'm going with one one more time just to, to check out we didn't miss any steps first thing is we have set up an ec2 instance then set up host name then create ans admin user add user to sudo file next generate ssh keys next enable password login at last we need to install ansible okay so far we just set up our environment now let's try to install ansible okay so clear the screen and cd dot dot okay please do remember that you should generate the keys for ans admin not for any other user like ec2 or root user you must generate ssh keys for ans admin user all right next thing is we are going to install ansible to install ansible we should be root or else we can install from here itself with the sudo command whenever i use sudo i will become a root or the commands are executed as a root user okay so sudo m install ansible okay sudo m install ansible so whenever we do this command it is going to install ansible but i don't think so it is going to work or not earlier uh, it is working with this command but as i said to install ansible we should have python right so before executing this command let's see whether python is installed or not so to check whether python is installed or not python minus version okay this command is going to give sorry minus minus version i think okay this command is going to give what is the python version you have installed in your system so by default uh, for uh, amazon linux system you are going to get python version 2.7 okay so let it be 2.7 would be sufficient if you want to upgrade your python still we can do by using m command but uh, this is sufficient to install our ansible now let's install ansible sudo m install ansible okay sudo m install ansible let's try it okay so it is saying that ansible is not there and use this command okay sudo amazon linux uh, extras install ansible 2 if you execute this command we are going to install ansible okay so if you do remember i said that uh, repositories right nothing but uh, by default all the packages may not be available in a single repository when we have discussed while we were installing jenkins i believe okay so what we need to do is we need to use the extra packages that is already available over here so we will just execute this command so it is going to install ansible so let's execute it yes i would like to install you can see here it is also installing some of the dependencies which are required uh, uh, by python and it takes a while to install see here first it is installed python related packages then ansible it is installing okay ansible installation is successful once the in installation is successful we just check it out and sorry let me clear the screen ansible minus minus version okay so it is going to display our ansible information you can see here ansible 2.9.5 and configuration file is slash etc ansible dot ansible dot cfg so this is the con file it is there okay so the default directory for ansible is cd slash etc ansible okay this is the default directory so by default whatever files we have over here these files we are going to manage it so in this file we have the ansible dot cfg sorry in this directory we have ansible.cfg hosts and roles roles we are going to discuss about later but hosts nothing but inventory file the servers which are managed by this particular system that information we need to set up but so far we don't have any client system so we no need to update over here yet but in the later point of time we are going to update it 
Okay, so this is how we are going to install Ansible. Installing Ansible is quite simple, but prerequisites uh, we need to have. Okay, and the order may be anything. It doesn't mean that you should follow the same order. You can do in any order. Still, it is fine, but you must execute all these steps. Okay, except the first step. Of course, we need a server first, right? Okay, so any questions? Uh, Shankar, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, can you please repeat that part of uh, adding, uh, creating a user and then adding it to sudo source file uh, and then generating the SSH key for that user? Yeah, I will do that. So to uh, do this once again, I'm going to remove this user. So user de del is a uh, command. Why, why did you add? Why did you first add the user into sudo source file, and then generated the SSH key, and then you generated the SSH key for that that user, right? No, that that won't possible. Uh, why? Because uh, if you don't create your user, of course you can add it to the sudo file, not a issue. But without user existence, you are adding a user to the sudo file. That is first problem. Second problem is uh, you are asking generating SSH why, key. Why do you add that user to that file? Okay, uh, you will understand in the later classes. Uh, let's take an example that uh, now if I go to this, uh, yeah. So now my Ansible system, I'm going to manage my target systems. Assume that my ANS admin user is not part of the sudo file. Let's take an example that he is a normal user. So in Linux, there are two kind of users. That is normal user and administrative user. So whenever I say normal user, normal user cannot able to execute the administrative related commands. Let's take an example that just now we have installed Ansible. But whenever I'm installing Ansible, I added the sudo uh, in front of our command. So sudo will work only if the user is added to the sudo file. Otherwise, sudo doesn't work. So if he is trying to install as a normal user, it doesn't work. Let's quickly what we do. Let me switch back to sudo su minus ans admin. So now ans admin, I'm doing m install or let me add a user. User add test user you can see here it is saying that permission denied nothing but a normal user doesn't have permission but this ans admin user is already part of sudo file and we have given that he can execute any command any command nothing but user add is a administrative command he can add, you execute this command also without any issue but you should use the sudo in front of your command so now you can see here the user got created and if I check it in the slash etc password. Okay, here the user is there, but this is not the purpose why we have given the sudo file. Okay, uh, in the target systems in going forward, what do we do? The target system is there in target system. You want to deploy a var file. Whenever you want to deploy a var file first, you need to install Tomcat to install Tomcat. If the ANS admin is a normal user, he cannot able to install it. Even here also, we should create a ANS admin user, of course. If he is a normal user, he cannot able to install it. If you want to add a user, he cannot able to do that one. If you want to update some configuration files, he cannot able to do that one. So to avoid all these problems, unnecessary issues, we are going to add our ANS admin user to the sudo file. Does it answers? Or still have confusion. No, it answers you. Yeah. And you were also asking that why can't we generate SSH keys first? So if you don't create your user, you don't get this particular home directory slash home ans admin. So you must create under this home directory. Uh, your keys must be generated under this home directory. Then only it will be recognized. Otherwise, it won't recognize. So. Uh, this is dependency right to generate keys again. That's the reason first we should create a user Any other questions uh, Shankar uh, you said uh, two 
two uh, things, right? One is uh, we have authorized keys and then uh, there is something called when we create this SSH key gen, there is something called dot pub, which is a public key. Uh, uh -huh. What is this difference like authorized key and uh, this dot pub? If there is dot pub, then why do we need authorized keys? Okay, good question. Uh, I need to make uh, highlight that point. Thanks, Happy. So the problem here is yes. Now we have generated keys over here. We have the uh, public key as well as private key in our control node. Now assume that I have a target system. I haven't created yet, but assume that I have created. Now I want to log into this target system without any password okay so then what i can do i can give this private key sorry public key to this system i will give this public key to this system but while copying onto this system our public key we need to keep it in the authorized file we should not keep it as a idrsa.pub no we should not keep like that once we copied into the target system we want to keep it under authorized keys so authorized keys is a file which will authorize your system. So now whenever I use my private key to connect to this system, in this system, it will check in the authorized keys whether this private key and this public key is matching or not. If it is matching, then only this control node user can able to communicate with the target user. Okay, maybe in the local system, it is ID RSA pub, but whenever it is reached to the target system, we need to copy it into the authorized keys. okay is it clear so, yeah it is clear uh, mm -hmm. but if there are multiple systems uh, uh, authorizing to the same system for example if rhel managed node has mm -hmm. multiple multiple systems connecting to it will these keys be appended in the same yeah. file called authorized keys yes we need to append to the same file uh, let's take an example that uh, ans admin okay uh, now, even I want to log into the ANS admin user by using my EC2 user key pairs. Then what I can do EC2 minus user public key I can copy into over here. So I can take this one. Sorry. Uh, let's take a reverse way. So I want to log into EC2 minus user account as a ANS admin user. Then what I can do my ANS admin user keys. Where I am. Yeah ls minus la so dot sh id rsa dot pub is there right so what i can do i can take this key and i can just add it to va authorized keys at the end of this file so whoever users want to log into this particular user or particular system those keys keep on appended now you can see here this is to log in as a ec2 minus user and this is to log in as a ans admin so this is how we can keep on increasing our authorizer keys file. Okay, thanks, Shankar. Understood. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So if you don't have any questions, we'll quickly set up our client system as well. Okay because uh, anyway i'm giving time for you guys to practice tomorrow so hope it won't be overloaded right shall i continue or is it overloaded yes shankar okay. yep yep so now what i'm going to do is we are going to so far So, so far what we have done, we have configured our, uh, so far we have configured our control node. Next, so next, next we are going to set up our managed node. So to set up our managed node, we need an EC2 instance and set up host name and create ANS admin user and add user to sudo's file okay these are the steps we need to do addition to this one we should enable the password based authentication so these five steps we need to do on the control node 
okay if you have 100 control nodes of course we need to do these activities on 100, 100 nodes again the manual steps are executing these on 100 systems is a little tricky so first time what we can do we can write a cell script to do this all the activity okay but uh, for our is it is a lab so let's do it manually okay so rather than creating a new server what i am going to do i am going to use my tomcat server i am going to use my tomcat server as a manager node okay so just i am going to start it or else okay why should i will create a fresh one i don't want to you guys to get confused so launch a new system and i am launching the rhl system okay so as per the lab first we are going to launch the rhl system and uh, name rhl server okay and here also devops security group i am choosing and launch it even i will bring up my tomcat server also uh, just i want to make both the servers as a uh, ansible client so fresh installation i am going to do this over here and over here as well why right? because both are doesn't have the uh, what i can say ans admin user or else uh, what i can say maybe password based might be enabled but uh, user uh, is not part of the sudo file So let's connect to Tomcat's Tomcat server meantime. So SSH. Okay, private key and EC2 minus user. And sudo root user. Okay, this is my Tomcat server. Next thing is RHL server. I'm just going to give the login to this system as well. And EC2 minus user. Okay. Oops. Did I use the wrong key? All right, I have logged into my both the systems which I want to manage as a uh, manager nodes by my Ansible. Okay, so this one and this one. So first thing is we need to set up the host name. So VA slash CTC host name host name and just uh, naming it as a Tomcat server. This is Tomcat server, right? And uh, here also I'm going to name it as a VA slash CTC host name RHL RHL server okay so we have set up the host name but if you want to see that it get affected we just need to restart it quickly and go to i'm going to restart it init 6 is a command to restart even my ansible control this node also i'm going to restart it i'm a ans admin still i can do the init 6 with the sudo's command Okay, so just to restart it, let me reconnect. Just you need to press R to reconnect it. Still it is coming up. So going forward, what we are going to do is even we are going to set up our Jenkins server also with Ansible. We don't want to set up our Jenkins server and keep it in our account also. 
so now it is became a tomcat server and uh, it is a rhl server now i would like to create user in the both the systems and add to the sudo as well so rather than executing independently we have a option here you can see here multi execute so whenever you say multi execute it is going to open your terminals in the uh, like this and uh, let me exit from here to exit control shift insert sorry this is to insert on all where to exit here yeah exit multi uh, terminal let me close this one this i don't need only in these two systems i just want to execute the commands so multi uh, execution so what i can do user add ans admin so in the both the systems it is creating and uh, password ans admin abc123 abc123 okay i have created user now i would like to update this user in the sudo file so va sudo okay and shift g to go to end of the file i just went to end of the file and you just observe in this here we can able to execute all the commands as a ec2 minus user why because he is having this entry okay similar kind of entry we are going to do so o ans admin space this one and here also i need to do okay oops it's not working as expected okay so o ans admin okay so i have added the same entry in the both the systems and save this file and also va slash etc ssh and sshd underscore config search for okay in the operating systems it may vary because one is uh, windows one sorry okay in both the systems so here password is uh, enabled in tomcat server it is already enabled here it is not enabled so what i am going to do is i am going to oops okay that's okay now both the systems it is enabled and uh, hash oops can't i do it only on one system okay so i have commented this one only and save the file and the service sshd reload fine so everything is fine i have set up the user given the password and enable the password based authentication now uh, everything is set up and uh, one thing you need to consider that is you should create what user you created in the master user maybe you can create a different user but this is the best practice so ans admin you need to create across the environment and use the same password which you have used in the master i have used abc123 same thing you should use in the clients okay so that you don't have any confusion now this is done and i am going to connect to my ansible server now this is my ansible server right this is rhl this is ah uh, shankar i have a question go ahead ah uh, shankar why there was no entry for uh, ec2 user in that sudo's file uh, for the uh, first session that you showed no in both the systems it is there i will just show you maybe in the some other uh, area in the same file so okay okay I will just show you. 
grep ec2 minus user slash etc sudo so i am just searching for whether this user is there in this file or not okay as a ec2 minus user i cannot execute so sudo you can see here there is a entry what this command does do it is going to check for whether this uh, keyword is there in the file or not same thing if i do in the rhl also this is uh, sorry this is already rhl in amazon system tomcat system why it is not there sudo va sorry va sudo it's it to okay no pattern found okay in linux the configuration may sorry here this is amazon linux right so in amazon linux maybe they have given it as a default activity at the os level maybe okay but it should be there otherwise it he won't get access at all we'll root user itself is not there anyway yep but anyway uh, they might have created at the os level itself because this os is available only on aws accounts sorry amazon aws console so they might have done but uh, uh, every uh, sorry usually it should be in the sudo file let's not deviate from the actual activity so let's go and uh, what we can do so this is rhl system this is tomcat server and this is control node nothing but ansible master node and on ansible master node i am moving into ans admin user okay so now i am a ans admin user <clears throat> so far all the systems are independent so first system i am making it as a ans admin or else let me change the settings let me okay i don't want to do that anyway so in control node i am going sorry from the control node i want to manage these two systems from the control node i want to manage these two systems for that what we should do now is we need to copy our ssh keys onto target servers we need to copy our ssh keys onto target system uh, to copy our ssh keys what we can do is go to dot ssh and cat idrsa.pub so this key this public key we can copy it into ec2 minus user account sorry ans admin user account I'm logging as ANS admin. So what I have done, okay, I'm explaining one more time because multiple sessions are there, you may get confused. So this is my control node, nothing but Ansible server. These two are managed nodes. In the managed nodes also, I have created ANS admin user so ans admin user i have created so now uh, i want to manage these two systems by using ansible for that purpose i want to copy this key into the target systems so in the target systems on which location should i need to copy this key can somebody tell me authorized keys yes we should create a here a dot ssh directory on the ec2 uh, ansible home directory under dot ssh directory again create a authorized file there we need to copy so rather than doing all this manual work we can do it do it with a simple way that is ssh copy minus id okay this is the command yeah so ssh copy id and followed by your username okay so followed by your username that is ans admin at and the target server name if i give the target server name as a ans admin so what does it do on to the target system okay let me take the ip address of target system 
okay so if i take the ip address of our rhl server this is the ip address and just check this is a private ip address so if you were all the systems are in the same region and uh, yeah same region and same vpc anyway we are using the same vpc so just to avoid the confusion if all your systems in the same region you can able to use the private keys rather than the public keys and using the private keys is more safer than the public keys whenever you are communicating internally okay it's something like that uh, in your family okay you don't want to disclose your identity for other people so what you can do you can have the pet names you usually in in our family we will call with the that uh, pet names right so similar way sorry not pet name uh, some alias name i can say so uh, with that names we can call it and it responds similar way we can use the private keys so i am using the private key now whenever i execute this command it will ask me the password that whether you are authorized to copy the keys or not if you are authorized these keys get copied that is the reason we have enabled password based authentication otherwise it won't ask for the password okay i haven't reloaded the ssh service right did i maybe if i haven't done it is going to throw an error anyway so ssh copy id and uh, onto ans admin account copy the keys that is the meaning of this one and which keys i need to copy i am executing this command as a ans admin from the, my control node right so this user keys will get copied into this user home directory so yes i would like to connect to this system and it is asking and you can see here attempting attempting to lo to log in with the new keys to filter out so and so is already installed and uh, one keys remain to be installed i just want to copy one key if you are prompted now it is to install the new keys so i want to install new keys that is what it is doing or this command does do so now now the password is abc123 right because it is common for all the ans admin users in the across the environment so if i give this one you can see here number of keys added one key has been added where it is added logged into remote system on remote system ans admin user account now this is the server we have given right so if i give ls minus la you can see here a dot ssh directory created if i go inside to that one and there is a file called authorized keys and if i open this file the key of the public sorry public key of our ans admin user okay both are same so it starts with double a double a it starts with double a double a okay so this is how we can copy similar way we need to do copy onto other system as well tomcat server as well right so ip addr and remove this ip address and enter yes abc123 and here also it's copied so this is how we can copy our keys onto the target system once it is successfully copied what we can do we can log into this system we can log into these systems without any password now you can see here ssh ans admin and uh, ip address i am giving whenever i give the ssh ans admin ip address what does it do it is going to log in without any password how it is going to log in without any password because in my home directory i have already a public key in my dot ssh in remote server already the sorry in my home directory i have private key and in the target system uh, user account we have the public key so this private key is going to match with the this user public key and it could able to log in without any password you can see here from control node to i have log into tomcat server now again if i want to go to control node just exit so that i can close the connection to this system similar way if i try for other system ssh and this is 115 right so if i do this one here also i can able to log into the rhl system without any issues so this will give you a confirmation that your keys is successfully copied if keys are not successfully copied 
sorry cd dot dot so if keys are not successfully copied whenever you execute this ssh command it is going to fail it tells that okay uh, authorized keys are not uh, what i can say matching or else you you don't have permission such kind of error you are going to get okay so this is how we can uh, add the managed node with the uh, sorry we can add the managed nodes with the control nodes so what we have done yeah. okay this is yet to do uh, all this stuff we are going to do so first first what we have done we have done the second step that is copy public ssh keys onto the managed nodes okay this is what we have done and we need to do the step one also so add server to inventory file now so far what i did i just enabled the passwordless authentication but uh, so far we have done at the operating system level we haven't touched anything in the ansible level now we need to tell to our ansible that which servers we need to manage okay which servers we need to manage we need to tell to ansible means we need to update our inventory file inventory file nothing but hosts file so the default location of our hosts file is slash etc ansible okay i told you right and this directory will get ansible minus minus version if you here you can check it out so configuration file is so and so in the same location you will have the hosts file as well so the default hosts file is here and the hosts nothing but inventory either we can call it as a host file or inventory so this is the inventory here we need to update these two systems information these two systems information we want to or we have to update in the hosts file and before updating let's see what is there in the hosts file vi hosts you can see here everything is commented out but they have given the instructions how you can add your inventory how you can add your inventory so i would recommend you to just read this one because it is going to useful in the later classes anyway i'm going to explain it in the later classes for now i'm going to remove all the data we don't require this one okay i have executed as a ans admin right so i should add va sorry sudo in front of my command otherwise i cannot able to remove so i have removed everything and i should just give the ip addresses of these two uh, servers and another system is this one so what i have done i told my ansible system to that you should manage you should manage these two systems you should manage these two systems now one one sorry now we are going to execute our first command first ansible command just to check out whether my setup is fine or not whether my setup is fine or not so to do that one ansible minus m ping okay ansible all minus m ping okay ansible all minus m ping i am going to explain this command in later uh, sessions but for now all ansible commands starts with ansible every ansible command starts with ansible so whenever you want to execute uh, whenever you could see ansible over here means it is a ansible command next thing is all so all nothing but it reads this hosts file and whatever is there in this uh, file try to connect to all these systems try to connect to all these systems so ping nothing but uh, i mean to say yes connect nothing but try to connect to these systems okay try to connect to these systems that is the meaning of this command ansible so i'm saying to ansible that please ping to the all the systems which are there in the hosts file please ping to all the systems which are there in the hosts file so here m you can see m is a module okay i told you that we are going to use module right so ping is a module whenever you use ping in the background it is going to ping the all the systems so how to ping this is a program again written in the python okay that is uh, not our business of course so we are just executing this one whenever we execute if it could able to connect to these systems these two systems you can see here if it could able to connect to these two systems it is going to give such kind of message that 
okay this is success okay connected to this system and it is success and uh, connected to this system and this is also success whenever you ping it is going to give you a response called pong ping pong nothing but success so this is how you can identify that your setup is fine or not i mean to say i can able to communicate with my client systems without any issues or manager systems one last test we are going to do for today that is just we are going to edit this file and we'll add one dummy system which is not at all launched by us so 172.31.38.0 so we don't have this system at all if we have this system also we haven't copied our keys onto that system okay so we haven't copied our systems keys onto this system if it is exist anyway it is not exist so whenever i connected to all the systems it should fail on this system it should fail right so let's execute our command one more time ansible all minus m ping you can see I can able to connect to this system successfully but this system unreachable because either you haven't copied the keys or the server itself is not exist whenever it comes as a unreachable it means that server doesn't exist i cannot able to connect to that system okay so this is how you can able to test your connection connection once it is set up all right so that's all for today from my side now I'm open for questions. Okay, so I'm going to give the basic concept of how the password based uh, passwordless authentication does work. So in Ansible, what we are going to do is we are just going to use the passwordless authentication, uh, the future which is given at the operating system level. So let me open the paint so usually what will happen in the real world sometimes we want to log into our target systems uh, without password because uh, every time uh, a user cannot able to log in right sometimes applications want to log in whenever applications want to log in they cannot enter the password they just need uh, some mechanism where they can just directly go and speak with the target system and complete their activity so to achieve this kind of problems industry come up with a concept called passwordless authentication so the passwordless authentication will work in this way so okay now this system want to this system want to communicate with this system we have two options that is either you can use the password or else pa either you can use the key based even uh, if if we take an example our aws server also we are logging with the uh, key why because whenever we launch aws server what do they do they generate the public and private key so they give the private key private key to us okay whatever you are downloading is a private key and public key public key they are going to keep it in the the server which you launched they are keeping on the server which you launched and where do they keep by default they create a user called ec2 minus user under ec2 minus user dot uh, ssh authorized keys so this public key they need to keep it under the authorized keys then only you can able to log in so now while logging on to your uh, aws ec2 instance you are loading your private key and logging on to ec2 minus user whenever you do that one this private key is going to match with the public key this private key is going to match with the public key and then it is authenticate you to log into the system assume that you have two different public private keys and if you use one private key to authenticate with the another public key it doesn't work the public key and private key should match it's something like this uh, you have a lock and key you have a lock and key and you manufactured uh, same type of locks which can work with the uh, same key so you will have a key and you have the lock and you can use the same key even though you use for the different locks that's how the private key does work so private key is a key and public key is a lock 
wherever you use this public key assume that 10 systems are there in 10 systems authorized file if you keep your public key you can use the same private key to connect it to the 10 those 10 systems okay now assume that 10 systems want to communicate with the one system okay i have 10 systems over here but these 10 systems want to communicate with the one system without any password in that case what do we do in these 10 systems we will take the pub public key from the each system and we will update in authorized keys we will amend the 10 keys so now what you can do either from the server 1 or server 2 server 3 or server 10 if you want to connect to the target system you can able to connect to the private sorry with your key and while connecting with the public and private key it won't ask for the password now next thing is uh, in our uh, windows while connecting to the system we are loading our key pair okay but here if you see i just connected to the target system okay anyway i'm going to connect it hosts so ssh i'm just connecting to this system without any key or without any user then what does it do whenever you execute this one by default ssh is going to check his home directory under his home directory whether dot ssh directory is there or not if dot ssh directory is there whether private key is there or not if private key is there that private key it will take and it will try to connect establish a connection with this one okay establish a connection with this one and with this one on which account it is going to establish it's assume that even ans admin user there in the target system as well and he has the public key that is the assumption it is going to do so now you can see here it could able to connect it okay but if you have assume that you have the ans admin user key but in the target system you have copied into some other user account okay rather than in the target system okay okay before executing that one same command this command we can execute in other way as well so this is another way so this also is going to allow you what this command is do i'm doing ssh by using this user public key and target system ans admin user and this is the target system and other way is one last thing that is ssh minus i dot ssh id sorry i am not in the home directory of user right so i will go here so ssh minus i dot ssh in the current location we have dot ssh right id rsa and ans admin at this server name so what does it mean so this is actually going to do even though you execute this one okay if you don't use this value minus i value by default it will go to this user home directory and fetch this path but detailly it is going to execute something like that i am doing ssh while doing ssh use the ssh authorized sorry private key which is there in the current location and on target system use the ans admin user and with this ip address with this ip address so you can able to why it is asking for password Yes, it have. is a ans admin at the rate yeah, ip yeah, right sorry mm, true yeah and okay ans admin so ans admin and the ip address okay now you can able to log in so to make better understanding i just exited what we will do we will copy our public key onto the target system not into ansible sorry ans admin user we are going to copy it into the ec2 minus user then you will understand clearly okay so just i will open the dot ssh id dot pub So I'm just copying it into RHL server. This is RHL server. I'm under a Ansible user. So let me exit. I'm an EC2 minus user now. Okay. So CD go to dot SSH. Here we have authorizer keys. But we, before executing, let's try it before we are setting up the keys. So SSH and uh, IP address, right?
I want to log into EC2 minus user. So EC2 minus user at you, you can see here I'm trying to log into EC2 minus user, but there is no this user private key, sorry, public key. That is the reason it is prompting for the password. And if I do just SSH I dot SSH ID RSA, still it could not able to authenticate with this one and it throws an error. Okay, not error, it are prompting for the password. Now let me copy the keys dot SSH ID RSA dot pub. This is public key and uh, I'm updating in the authorized keys on the target system. So shift G O I'm just copying into EC2 minus user account and don't make sure that you are not adding any special character. Otherwise it won't work. Now let's execute. Whenever I execute this one first one uh, in our local system, we have pu public key, right? Sorry, private key, right? So it will try to check the pub private key and the remote system public key. If it is matching, it automatically logs in. If it is not matching, it prompt for the password. Now you can see here, I have logged into target system as a EC2 minus user, not the ANS admin user. Okay, because I have specified to on to target system log into this user and on this user, I have already updated my public key. So my private key can able to authenticate with the public key and could able to log in. Is it clear? Still confusing? Uh, which private kit will use? I mean, uh, on the target, right? See, private key ANS admin user. As a which user you are executing this command? Currently, I'm a ANS admin user, right? Who am I if I give? I'm a ANS admin user. So ANS admin user private key it is going to use and uh, ANS admin user public key is also available in the EC2 minus user account, right? Here if I go here you can see here this is the public key of the ANS admin user. Public key of the ANS admin user and here I am executing command as a ANS admin user and uh, even though I execute this command uh, how it is executes in the background it executes something like that minus i dot ssh id rsa this is private key right so like this it is going to execute it so this is uh, what I can say uh, by default it takes this path if you are executing as a this user same thing you can log in and exit all right if you don't have any questions we'll wind up for today over here again we are going to meet uh, day after tomorrow in previous class we have uh, discussing or we were discussing about this lab setup we need a control server as well as aw sorry rhl server and amazon linux system these are the three uh, systems we have configured and we enable the connection as well so at this moment we set up the ansible and rhl server and enable the connection and also we have set up and control node and amazon linux system amazon linux nothing but tomcat system so both are connected but we haven't set up the UD, sorry ubuntu system ubuntu we are going to set it up in the later classes okay first we will make sure that these two are working fine then we'll update our uh, stuff with the ubuntu so, till here we have done so we have added our server to inventory and copied pu a public ssh keys onto managed systems and do a ping test we have done the ping test next ansible components so before diving into little more about ansible we just need to understand few files or few uh, terminologies okay terminologies we have already discussed in previous class but uh, these are a little bit uh, new and how we are going to work at the ansible level so the first file is slash etc ansible ansible.cfg file okay 
so this is the file which is helps to manage our ansible uh, playbooks or ansible commands we are going to discuss about this file uh, in today or next class and this will have some of the default configuration which will tells to your ansible what he he has to do okay next inventory and hosts we already discussed about this one so inventory or hosts host file is a file where we will keep all our managed servers information if you do remember we have added our rhl and amazon linux systems to this inventory file next to tasks so tasks are the activities which you are going to execute on the managed servers next to playbooks are collection of tasks and modules modules nothing but these are predefined uh, uh, commands which you can directly use in your ansible playbook so these are the components i can say now let's start with uh, ansible basics so what is the uh, what i can say basic concepts you need to understand so first thing is all ansible commands starts with ansible okay so whatever ansible commands you are executing everything starts with ansible next ansible default configuration file exists under slash etc ansible ansible.cfg so this is the default ansible configuration file location maybe we can create our own customized ansible.cfg file but we can see in the later classes for now we are going to use only default ansible configuration next default inventory file available under slash etc ansible hosts if you do remember in uh, if you do remember in our previous class we have added our manager servers to this file i will quickly show you so this is my control node i have logged into my control node let me clear the screen become an ans admin user because from now onwards i am going to manage my system with ans admin and sudo cat slash ctc ansible hosts okay here we have added two actual systems and one dummy system okay and even if you see the what i can say configuration file you can see in the same location cat slash ctc ansible ansible.cfg rather than cat i am going to use more more also another command to open a file so you can see some of the configuration has been updated over here we are going to discuss about this one in later because once we run with some of the commands you will quickly understand what is the value of this file all right let's go back next managed nodes information should be available in the inventory file so whatever servers you are managing those servers should be available in, in inventory file otherwise your ansible cannot able to manage it so let's take an example that uh, i want to manage maven server as well okay uh, for the upgradations or i want to do some activities on maven server if this maven server ip address is not added in the inventory file then it is not going to manage at all that's the reason it is able to manage only rhl and tomcat servers next so far the setup has been done something like this we have control node and rhl node we have enabled connection so control node can able to log into rhl without any password right now let's discuss about adac commands so ADAC commands nothing but whenever you have a task which you don't want to execute repeatedly which you don't want to execute repeatedly or you are you need some information only for the particular period of time then we are going to use the ADAC commands so it's nothing but running your ansible commands uh, directly on your system so ping is the one of the uh, what i can say command which we are going to execute right now and we have already tried it so the way what 
how we have executed is let me clear the screen ansible all minus m ping okay so this is the command we have executed so ansible all minus m ping i have explained about this command so all ansible commands starts with ansible all nothing but whatever servers are available in the inventory file try to ping to all these systems or try to execute this module on all these systems so m stands for module so this is the predefined module i said that modules are help us to use the um, execute our tasks rather than creating your own program so this is the way we are going to execute our ansible commands and i can say this as a ada commands so ada command nothing but just you are executing temporarily purpose and also it is not repeated work it is not repeated work whenever you want to do repeated activities same thing again and again then playbooks comes into the picture so we are going to execute a command module okay command module is the another module so just let me clear the screen ansible all i'm executing on all systems minus m command okay i'm using a module called command and minus a a stands for attribute okay a stands for attribute and what do you want to execute on the target system so i just want to uh, what i can say see the so i just want to see the uptime of my system uptime of my system so here also uptime just it will show you how long your system is up and running now assume that you have hundreds of systems in your environment you just want to gather uh, which servers are running from past uh, uh, few days or which servers are rebooted recently if that is the case going to each and every system and executing uptime may not be possible so you can execute that command from ansible if all the systems are uh, connected with your ansible server sorry ansible control node and uh, command is a module which helps us to execute linux commands as it is okay with command module you can execute your linux commands as it is even uptime is a linux command right so you can just execute uptime it is going to communicate with the all the client systems and will tell you how long these systems are up and running you can see here it could able to gather from these two systems and this system anyway doesn't exist it could not able to communicate right so whatever commands you want to execute directly on your target system then you can use a module called command module called command so command module will accept the attribute like as it is your uh, like what i can say as it is uh, whatever is the sorry execute as it is as your linux command nothing to change now let's execute one more example that i just want to uh what i can say ls minus l so i want to execute ls minus l on the target system now can somebody tell me uh, on which directory is it going to execute this command whenever i execute ls minus l yep go ahead on uh, ansible admin uh, home directory yes that's true okay so it is going to execute this command on ansible admin home directory why ansible admin home directory because we are logging with passwordless authentication onto the ansible admin home directory okay that is where we kept our keys right so by default it log into the same location let me switch to the ansible admin here as well so i have logged in as a ansible admin so whatever command i'm executing over here ls minus l whatever you could see same thing you are going to see there as well so clear the screen i'm going to i'm switching as so to switch just you can use su minus okay it's asking for password let me try with su su minus anyway i know password 
but if you use the su do su minus it won't ask for password so in both the systems in the home directory of ins admin account it is going to execute ls minus l command okay so nothing is there total zero right same output we have seen over here as well okay now i want to create a file over there so touch test file okay so i have created it and whenever the uh, it is executing successfully on the target system and if it made some changes it will be in the uh, what i can say blue color usually okay i have changed the color that is the reason it is appearing like this so blue color it is going to uh what i can say whenever something has been changed and if it comes as a green color it could able to communicate target system successfully but nothing changed okay nothing changed that is how it to do but if you see it is created files so that's the reason it is changed and if i do ls minus l earlier it is zero files now i can see the test file even in the this system as well okay and you can see here ans admin user created because i logged into target system as a ans admin and again i can use the ls minus l command this time i could see two files oh, sorry one file on the each system okay this is how we can use the command module next to stat okay stat is a uh, module which will help us that whether the target system have a particular file or not target system have a particular file or not so if you want to do some activity okay or updating some files before updating file you just need to check whether file is exist or not if that is the case you can use the stat command it will give some statistics like uh, when it was created and who is the owner all this information so let's try the stat command on the test file itself okay clear the screen ansible all minus m stat and I'm going to execute stat on the slash home slash ANS admin slash test file. Okay, I can give full path or else even if I give only test path, it will go and check in the target system under slash home ANS admin home directory only. So A stands for attribute. A stands for attribute. Okay. So sorry here. So same thing. This is the command, but we need to specify as a attribute minus a. Okay, minus a path is equal to host name. So the stat command is going to help us to list out whether this file is exist or not. So ansible all minus m stat minus a attribute. And what is the attribute you are giving? You are giving file path. Okay, the path you need to give. So let's execute now and you can see it displayed the file information okay statistics of that file in the both the systems okay let's take on one system it is successful and uh, it is giving the more details about uh, who is owning this file and what are the permissions i know lot of stuff okay so this is about the stat module I rarely use it, so that's why I could not able to recollect. So stat is a command which will help us to find out the whether file is exist or not. If it is there, what is the what is the characteristics of your file? Next, m. So m is a another module which helps us to install packages on our target systems okay which helps us to install packages on target system usually if we want to install any packages let's uh, go here this is my rhl server right so i want to install sudo m install git okay so i want to install git but if i execute m install git as a normal user in the ansible system it won't execute why because m is a command which should be executed by the root that is the reason we can use sudo m install git okay 
so now it is installing but i don't want to install i'm just canceling it so i will install with ansible so same command here also if i try sudo m install git okay so this package is already available on this tomcat system okay but not on the rhl server okay so now i would like to install git on my all the client systems from my ansible system if that is the case i don't want to go to each and every system manually i can just execute from my ansible server by using ansible all minus m module name is m okay module name is m next attribute we need to give the attribute in the attribute name we need to give the package name okay package name we need to give so the package name is name is equal to git sorry name is equal to git this is how you need to give so i'm just canceling and uh, will execute it again so name is equal to git now what will happen it is going to uh, install a package called git on the target system a package called git on the target system let's execute and see what will happen you can see here what it is trying to do it is trying to install over here but it is success success nothing but the particular package is already available so if nothing is changed over there then it will commit as a green color if it is changed it is a blue color if it is not changed uh, sorry it could not able to reach at all then red color so it is saying that on 38.38.13 it is success nothing but on this system i believe ip added here if i check you can see here this system 38.13 so in this system it is already there so it is saying that success success nothing but i don't want to install anything over there it is already there okay changed nothing but it is changing and you can see here in other system in this system it is failed it should install it right but it is failing why it is failing and if you come and see the message this command has to be run under the root user it is saying that boss you are executing a command but that command you are executing as a normal user you should execute it as a root user you should execute it as a root user so in that case you need to amend your command ada command little bit let me clear the screen so you can add minus b okay so minus b if you add it will tell you that execute this particular ansible command execute this particular ansible command as a root user as a root user b stands for become okay b stands for become a root so it is going to become a root on the target system and will execute in older versions we were using s s stands for sudo but in latest versions we are using b option b stands for become so let's execute this time and you can see here it is able to success on this system but uh, nothing to do on this one so it is not going to do anything but you can see here it has installed on one system and uh, yep so first system it is already there in second system it could not able to reach on third system it has been changed changed nothing but it has installed successfully and you can see the output of the result you can see the result over here and changed true nothing but i have changed it and if you see the first one changed should be false why because i haven't changed anything he is already having whatever you are asking okay that is the meaning so now if i check okay usually to check whether package is installed or not you can check out by using m list installed okay it will show you the all the installed packages and grep git okay so this will give whether a package is installed this particular with this particular name any package is installed or not so you can see the package name okay so this is the version and if i execute git command also you can see that it is there here also you can anyway here it is already there okay so this is how we can install packages on the target system as a root user 
okay as a root user so this b is working why because we have added our ans admin user to the sudoers file if we don't add our ans admin to the sudoers file on the target systems even though you specify b it won't get executed let's try that one also so in rhl server what i am doing i'm just removing the sudoers file i'm editing sudoers file and will remove will remove the uh, sudo access on this system for ans admin and we'll try it out with one more installation so quickly i'm editing this file and shift g hash so i'm just commenting it out and save this file that's it now what i will do i have removed sudo access over here and i'm going to execute a tree this time i'm trying to install tree command so if you do remember we have executed tree it list out the list of the directories in the tree format so it's saying that it's not found here also if i check tree it's saying that it's not found now if we execute or if we install from our ansible system it is going to install only on tomcat server but not on the rhl server why because rhl server doesn't have root privileges for the user which we are going to use to execute the playbook let's try this one so instead of git i'm giving tree okay tree is the command and we'll see what will happen you can see here it is saying that so on 18.2.1.5 it is saying that missing pseudo password so it is saying that i don't have pseudo password to execute that command so no route to host so i could not able to do on the rhl system but i have changed on the uh, tomcat server why because in tomcat server i have the root privileges and if i go and execute a tree over here it is going to execute successfully in our current location we have a file called tree file and if i execute a still here it is not going to do okay and now i cannot execute sudo vi sudo as well because i'm i'm a ans admin and i don't have sudo privileges at all so let me just will try it you can see here it is saying that you don't have root, root privileges so let's cancel it and uh, exit i'm going back to ec2 minus user because ec2 minus user have the root privileges so again i'm editing my file with the ec2 minus user and we'll add the shift g so i'm going to add the an root privileges to ans admin user okay so i have saved it again now if i execute this time it is going to install again only one server because on another server it's already installed so nothing to do and you don't get the uh, sudo password error you can see here it's already installed on 13 system so nothing to do changed false and it is installed on the 215 system and changed true and installed this package and now if i execute tree here it is going to show you whatever files are there currently i'm under my ec2 minus user home directory so nothing they, we don't have anything over here so let's switch back to again ans admin and if i give tree here you can see the file so this is how we can execute or uh, run the uh, installation command uh, by using the m module next user so user is a another module which helps us to create a user which helps us to create a user let's go and create a user on the all the target systems so i just would like to create a user called modi on all my target systems so let's create it user add sorry usually we should give the user add command so i'm executing with the an ansible all minus m so m minus m stands for module right so what is the module i want to uh, use a module called user and a and name is equal to modi okay so this is the command don't get confused why i am giving name over here why can't i use another i will just explain in a while but this is how we can specify minus a stands for attribute and name is equal to modi 
now what does it do it is going to create a user called modi on all the target systems but whenever you want to create a user you should have a root privileges right because user id creation is not done by a normal user so let's try without b option and we'll see that it is triggering any error why because you don't have permission now let's try with minus b option this time it should not throw an error it just create a user called modi on the target systems and changed true here also uh, changed true okay nothing but it created a user called modi on the both the systems if i see slash etc password you can see a user called modi is exist even clear the screen cat slash etc passwd you can see a user called modi right so this is how we can create users so these all are we call it as a adapt commands adapt commands nothing but you are going to execute it from the command line or just using the ansible command is there any other module yeah setup module is there okay setup module is the one of the important module which we are going to use in the later classes so ansible all minus m setup okay it doesn't expect any attributes at all you just need to give ansible all minus m setup whenever you execute this command it is going to communicate with your client and it generates sorry it gathers all your clients information either system level network level or uh, hardware level all this information it gathers and give it to your ansible control node it is going to give it to your ansible control node so let's execute this okay you can see here uh, changed false and this server anyway it is going to fail so in one server changed false why because it is just gathering the information it is not changing anything and if you scroll up you can see here ansible uh, as a which user you have executed on target system that is ansible and home directory of that user what is the uh, target system architecture all this information is there and it displays a lot of information you can see here ansible system linux and uh, some of the important things i'm going to show you you can see here what is the cpu count it have only one cpu it is hardware related information right course also one and what is the product this is a amazon linux so 4.2. amazon for other system you can see the rhcl so next uh, this is this is the important one okay ansible os family red hat even amazon linux also uh, created from the uh, sorry not this is ansible linux this is rhcl only you can see here node name it is a rhcl server and uh, uh, operating system is uh, uh, red hat so this is the ansible os family so from red hat you have the different operating systems again like rhcl cent os amazon linux all these are from the red hat okay i mean to say not red hat red hat uh, base operating system mm, not red hat i can say yep uh, red hat uh, yeah base operating system okay so like this it is going to display about your memory information you can see here available uh, ansible memory mb 815 mb it is available and uh, how much is free real memory all this information it is going to display about your server what is the ethernet card the ethernet card nothing but network device uh, we will connect to the internet cable to our system right similar way for servers it is a ethernet ca cable so broadcast ip address what is the ip address 3 18.215 so all this information is displayed over here and if i scroll up this all belongs to a single system okay this is the system 38.215 nothing but this system right ip addr so 38.215 rhcl server it is a rhcl server now if i scroll up this is amazon linux system you can see for amazon linux also red hat is the distribution so ansible product version is so and so and uh, you can see here 
this is a tomcat system and the ansible os family it is a red hat because it is derived derived from the red hat base operating system so this is the all the information about the other system so if you want to gather your system information then we are going to use setup module setup module is going to gather all your system information okay so those are the some of the adac commands you can use as many as commands uh, as adac commands it, it's up to you but the only advantage you want to do uh, sorry only advantage of using adac commands is if you are using a command and you may you you think that you may not execute that command repeatedly or going forward you may not need it so then you can sorry then you can go with the adac commands right now we are going to talk about inventory so ansible works against multiple managed nodes or hosts in your infrastructure at the same time using a list or group of lists known as the inventory so it is going to manage okay your infrastructure whatever list of the uh, systems are there in your hosts file or inventory file next inventory file is a collection of hosts or nodes which are managed by ansible control node of course that is what we were talking and hosts information can be defined in following ways okay so we can define our hosts information so far we just kept only our ip address you can see here you can uh, define in uh, your default home directory sorry default ansible hosts file that is slash etc ansible hosts or else you can create your own hosts file and you can use minus i option to give your own hosts file and define in the ansible.cfg but this we are going to discuss later but now for our adac commands we are going to do little bit change okay little bit change so far if i execute any of my adac command it is going to execute on all my systems it is going to execute on all my systems now what i would like to do is i don't want to execute on all my systems i want to execute only on the tomcat server i want to execute only on my tomcat system sorry i want to execute this particular stuff only on my tomcat system in that case we are going to specify the okay in that case we are going to specify the uh, sorry in that case we need to edit our ansible hosts file to pick up only that tomcat server okay so for that in inventory we need to do some changes so cat slash etc ansible and sorry hosts okay so far we are just keeping our ip addresses over here and we are executing it we are executing it uh, even i can limit my hosts file okay so anyway so now what i am going to do is i am going to create my own inventory file and i will tell to my ansible command that okay use this inventory file to execute this particular file okay so let's do that one currently i am under my ansible home directory so let's create a hosts file or inventory you can give any name it is not yet uh, what i can say fixed name or uh, uh, hosts is not a syntax you can use any name i am going to give inventory.ini usually we will give this name so inventory.ini and uh, i will just specify our tomcat server ip address ip addr so this is the tomcat server ip address so i am going to copy this into my system and save this file and save this file so if i open my inventory ini i have this particular file i have this sorry particular server now if i execute this one whatever command uh, let's take this one yeah modi command itself so if i execute this command by default this all is going to check in this location all is going to check in this location 
rather than taking up this inventory file i would like to take this inventory file i would like to take this inventory file in that case you can remove this option and you can give minus i option minus i stands for inventory minus i stands for inventory and you can give your inventory file name you can give your inventory file name so i am executing in my current location and this file is exist in the current location so even if you give just a file name that would be fine but if your your inventory file is in some other location and you want to pick up that inventory file then you should give the full path but anyway giving full path is a, a best practice so i am giving my full path of where my inventory file does exist where my inventory file does exist so ansible minus i slash home ansible inventory dot ini minus m user add name modi minus b so i am creating a user called modi only on tomcat server that is the meaning of this one are only on the servers which are there in this particular inventory file which are there in this particular inventory file okay so let's execute it Oops. I need to give all okay. So I'm specifying that execute uh, take this inventory file and execute in all the uh, what I mean to say all the servers which are there in this particular inventory file. Now let's execute it. And you can see here anyway the change is false and uh, appended nothing but if there is any updates okay it is going to append it but anyway it is uh, not there but this time what we have done in our command is we have given our own customized inventory file we have given our own customized inventory file rather than giving the default inventory file okay so this is one way to limit uh, your what i can say execution onto the specific uh, what i can say yep specific servers on specific servers usually in real world what do we do we always prefer to create our own inventory most of the cases okay we we don't use or we never use the default hosts file nothing but whatever we are having slash etc ansible hosts file we don't use it but in going forward you will understand why we are not using that one but in the real world we will create our own inventory file and we'll use that inventory file so from now onwards even i'm going to make that practice we we are going to use uh, our own inventory file rather than using the default inventory file clear any questions there is a lot to talk about inventory file but for now we have seen how to create a custom inventory file and use it as a uh, our inventory file to execute our commands okay so we'll talk about a little bit about inventory and ansible.cfg file now so if you do remember whenever i execute sorry yep so whenever we execute this command whenever we execute this command let's take this command ansible all minus m setup who is telling to our ansible that go and check the servers in the uh, slash etc ansible host okay somebody might be telling to your ansible command that go and do this activity right so that is where the ansible.cfg comes into the picture so ansible.cfg configuration file have this information what is your default inventory file what is your default inventory file so let's open our ansible.cfg file so i'm just editing opening in the va mode slash ctc ansible ansible.cfg so with sudo i need to do because i'm a ans admin user permissions are very important in ansible otherwise you you will end up not could not be able to execute all the commands properly okay you can see here here you have a directive called the defaults and there is a entry and you can see a entry called inventory 
okay so defaults nothing but whether it is commented it out or uncommented it out by default i am going to take this information by default it is going to take this information so some default values so these default values are uh, what it is going to take by default if you see here there is a attribute called inventory uh, it is referred to the slash etc ansible hosts this is the reason whenever we don't specify any hosts file while executing our ansible adapt command by default it is going to take this one by default it is going to take this one so inventory is going to tell that one now let's uh, think that okay i don't want to use my default inventory by default i want to use my uh, inventory.ini file in that case what we can do is we just need to uncomment this one and give the path of your custom inventory file slash home slash ans admin slash inventory.ini okay so i just telling to my ansible configuration that don't use the default inventory file i i want to use the customized inventory file okay now let's save this file and if i execute this command okay same command ansible all minus m ping setup okay so on which server otherwise what i will do ansible all command sorry minus m command ls minus l so now if i do ls minus l or else i can take a simple command uptime now how many servers uptime it is going to gather can somebody tell me either it is two systems three systems or one system one one yes so now what it will do whenever i say ansible all and uh, if i don't provide any inventory file by default this ansible command go and check the ansible.cfg file what is the inventory file you have specified so in this configuration file we have specified our inventory file as a slash ansible sorry slash home ansible inventory.ini file now it is going to execute on this particular system sorry minus here right so it is going to execute only on the system which we have specified in our custom inventory you can see this one it is executed only on the tomcat system not on all the systems now your ansible sorry slash etc ansible hosts is not a default host inventory so this is how we can customize so the purpose of ansible.cfg is customize your configuration or else i will go with the default if you don't provide any inputs while executing your command that is the meaning of that one okay if you don't specify the inventory file i will go and check in the ansible.cfg file and whatever is specified over there i will pick it up if you specify it i will take the uh, whatever you have specified that is the meaning of this one so again i am going to open my ei slash ctc ansible ansible.cfg so next library okay library nothing but modules where is your modules are available and uh, even this is also module utilities and uh, remote tmp okay so this is one of the important uh, entry so remote tmp nothing but whenever you execute your command on uh, to do something on your target system it requires some uh, space or some uh, temporary area to execute your uh, command or keep some temporary files or else even i can say the modules so in those case it is going to use the slash uh, sorry tilde slash dot ansible dot tmp so here tilde nothing but home directory home directory of the remote system so in the home directory of remote system is slash home ansible right so in the slash home ansible it is going to create a dot ansible and it is going to use it as a temporary directory so i am on my remote system pwd i am under home directory let's clear the screen and if i give ls minus la why i am giving la because it starts with dot ansible right dot ansible nothing but it is a hidden file hidden file you can list out by using a a command okay so you can see here it created a dot ansible directory why because we have specified in our configuration file is that remote to tmp you can use the dot ansible 
uh, slash TMP, even local TMP, local TMP, nothing but in my local system as well. Okay, even if I go to another system, okay, PWD LS minus LA, here also there is a dot Ansible. Okay, so this is the temporary. Even you can customize this location. If you are using the uh, what I can say shared directories, then this could be the problem. Okay, even in our environments, we will update these configurations. But just understand that Ansible required some space to do activities on the target systems. Then it is going to use the remote TMP directory location which you have specified. But this is common for every system. By default, it refers to the home directory of the re remote user. So I'm going with the some of the important uh, entries and most of them are self-explanatory and whenever it is necessary, we will go and update over here. Okay, over here. Okay. So next uh, forks. So forks nothing but currently if you see here, I'm running an, our Ansible ADAC command, right? Whenever you execute Ansible ADAC command, it is going to run all the systems parallelly all the systems parallelly now three servers are there it is running three servers parallelly but let's take an example that you have hundreds of system maybe 200 systems okay running parallelly is not at all possible on 200 systems if you want to do that one you have you should have lot of resources okay so that is the difficulty right that's the reason ansible is going to execute uh, what I can say systems batch wise batch wise nothing but first I will complete only on 10 systems first I will complete only on 20 systems like that it is going to execute it so we, how many systems it should execute at a time that has given under the forks so forks nothing but execute five systems at a time execute on five systems at a time if you are executing same uh, command on 100 uh, 100 systems it execute uh, five systems at a time like uh, it has to execute around 20 times, right? So that is the use of forks command. So in real world it could be higher higher value and moreover It depends upon your ansible resource capacity if you are having Sorry Higher capacity of ansible system then you are going to increase it if it is lesser then you will be uh, using uh, less value over here mm -hmm clear next uh, poll interval so poll interval nothing but uh, if server is not reachable it will wait for 15 seconds and if it is still not reachable it will uh, say it as a unreachable even in our case whenever we execute ansible playbook it is giving unreachable right so it waits for 15 seconds before saying unreachable next sudo user sudo user nothing but whenever you use the sudo uh, we used minus B option, right? Whenever you use the minus B option, you are going to become your root. You are going to become your root. Ask sudo pass. So ask sudo pass nothing but whenever you are becoming or executing your command as a root user, you should ask password. But in our sudo's file, we have updated that. Don't ask me the password, so it won't ask. <coughs> Even ask pass is uh, uh, regarding the even as a normal user if you are executing ask me the password like that lot of stuff is there even remote port so remote port nothing but it is going to uh, connect with the port number 22 so this is the default port number right even you can customize your port number you don't want to use port number 22 you can customize other port numbers but your services also should run I mean to say SSH also should run on the other port so we never customize it but uh, till that level you can do and uh, you can see here few other are there gather timeout so gather timeout nothing but i will explain when now we are doing ansible playbooks next you can see here role path ansible slash it is ansible roles whenever we are using roles we can see next to host key checking so host key checking uh, is false nothing but whenever you connect to your uh, target system first time it will ask you that do you really want to connect to this system yes or no so if you give yes then only will enter right so this parameter will 
don't ask that command nothing but it won't prompt for whether do you want to connect to target system or not all this it won't ask if it is false but it is not the default value you need to enable it okay next to tasks include SSH timeout whenever it is doing SSH it is not connecting then timeout like this there are a lot of uh, options are there in our inventory file so one more thing I would like to show you so retrace file so retrace file nothing but whenever you do uh, any playbook okay whenever we are talking about playbooks it will come whenever we do the uh, uh, creating a playbook if any it is uh, okay rather than playbook i will say that whenever your ansible is trying to do some activity on the target system if target system is not re reachable it is going to create a file called retry and it keep the uh, on which servers it is not executed those servers information it keeps in the retry file so that you will understand that okay in these systems the command is not executed that's how the retry file will help next so there is a lot of information here just go through with this one yeah privilege escalation you can see here become true yes nothing but i can become a root user and become method sudo and become user even you have seen above but uh, uh, it is a privileged escalation uh, this is actually taken to the effect you can see here become ask password false okay so these are the default privileged escalations so we are going to deal with these in the later point of time okay and i want to show you one more thing i'm just searching for module you can see here uh, not this one n next next yep you can see here default module name for slash us are bin ansible and module name is command so assume that you if you don't specify any module while executing your ADAC command it is going to tr treat it as a uh, command module it is going to treat it as a command module okay so we'll experiment this one but anyway this is how the ansible.cfg file looks like you just need to go through with this one and whenever it is necessary then you can understand about this one uh, more but we rarely update our ansible.cfg file and rather than updating the default ansible.cfg file you can create your own customized ansible.cfg file how we have created inventory right similar way we can do i'm going to show you anyway so first let's do come out here and i am going to execute one again uh, one more time my uptime command so assume that i want to check out the uptime but i forgot to give the module name okay i am giving attribute name and i want to see the uptime but i forgot to give my module name so now does this command get execute or is it going to fail anyone yes it will execute users command module yes so now in this case what will happen we haven't specified any module how we are not specifying as a inventory now our ansible command go and asks your ansible.cfg file that okay what is the module i should use to execute this particular stuff then it says that okay use command module now you can see here even though we don't specify the module name by default it is a command module by default it is a command module now if i do okay name is equal to, okay git so i want to install git command module cannot able to install git right if you want to install git i need to give my command sorry i need to my command as a m install git okay so if i do this one it won't execute it won't execute no such file or directory it is saying okay now assume that with this command i would like to install my git package on the on this system what can i do without changing this command still i want to make this command successful what can i do can somebody tell me 
can we make a entry uh, uh, in that CFG file? Yes. So what we can do is we can just edit in the ansible.cfg file that if somebody doesn't provide any module, use the M module. Why? Because in M module, attribute name is equal to git will accept. So let's go and edit that one. So command if I do, you can see here module name. This is the default module name, right? So if you know module are specified, use the command module. Now I am saying to my ansible.cfg that use M module if no module is specified. Use M module if no module is specified. Now if I execute this one, it is going to use M module and try to install anyway, Git is already there and it won't install it. So this is how you can use your ansible.cfg file to customize your, uh, what I can say, way of work. Uh, is sensor, it clear? Uh, in CFG file, can't we enter multiple entries, like multiple commands? Mm, I never tried it. Maybe it will take the whatever entry you have first. Let's okay. try in that. Order of so I'm just going to yum. So what I will do, I will give the one more entry. Okay, so we are using two and let's see what will happen. I think we can do that and let's try with our previous command as well. So uptime also we should get it right. Mm -hmm. It is taking only M module. Why only M? On top of yum, I have given command module. Okay, I think it is going to take only one. It is not allowed to define multiple times. Okay. So it is not best practice to add multiple times. So we are going to use the default one again so by default if your module is not specified use the m module and uh, even though it is commented out it is a default one right so it is going to take up so this is how we can customize our configuration okay so now we'll talk about as a team so far what we are doing is we are updating our ansible.cfg file itself Okay, but in real world, you are not the only one guy who is using Ansible, uh, Ansible server, right? Maybe you are a group of team and you all together working. If you go and change something on your Ansible.cfg and uh, another team member might be thinking that, okay, it is having a default values and he executed and it done uh, some other unexpected activity on your target systems rather than what he has expected. Okay. So it creates an unnecessary confusion if you edit the configuration file default ansible.cfg even hosts file also right so i have updated my hosts file i want to do some activity only on my database systems i have updated that and i uh, in my hosts file to execute only on database systems and some other guy came and uh, uh, he used the same hosts file so it creates an unnecessary confusion. That's the reason in Ansible there is a flexibility to create your own ansible.cfg file as well as your own inventory file. That's why we have created our own inventory file. Now we are going to create our own ansible.cfg file. Now we are going to create our own ansible.cfg file. But there is a, uh, what I can say, um, some hierarchy it is going through, okay? Uh, where uh, ansible.cfg file is there okay even whenever i execute ansible sorry ansible command by default it will it doesn't go to the uh, slash it is ansible it will go with some hierarchy i will just discuss about that one let's search for that one so ansible.cfg file Okay, so ansible.cfg file configure ansible.
okay you can see here this is the hierarchy what i am talking changes can be made and used in the ansible uh, configuration file which will be processed in the following order okay let me increase the font size okay so as i said ansible.cfg file it doesn't go directly to your ansible dot sorry slash it is ansible ansible.cfg file first it will check whether ansible underscore config environment variable has been set up okay so this is the uh, we need to export it export ansible dot ansible underscore cfg is equal to so and so then it will take this one as a highest priority if nothing is set up over here then it will go and check for the ansible.cfg file in your current directory current directory nothing but from where you are executing your ansible playbook in the current directory it will check for the ansible.cfg file and if in the current directory if you don't have ansible.cfg it will go to the dot ansible.cfg file in your home directory in your home directory nothing but our home directory is slash home uh, slash ans admin right in our ansible home directory it is going to check at last it will go to the default ansible.cfg file at last it will go to the default dot ansible.cfg okay so this is the hierarchy it is going to follow whenever you are executing this one so we rarely use ansible uh, underscore config mostly we use the our own custom inventory file under our home directory that is dot ansible dot cfg or else this this one so these two we are going to do now what i will do i am going to create a custom ansible dot cfg file so pwd i am under my home directory let me switch into the temp i am going to temp for better understanding so here you can see here nothing is there i am going to create my ansible dot cfg file before uh, creating my ansible.cfg i'm going to reset the default values of our default ansible.cfg file so slash etc ansible ansible.cfg so we have changed only one parameter that is inventory okay and uh, i'm just changing it to the default one even though you don't change it it will take it as a default because it is commented out so it is going to take etc ansible hosts only but let me keep it as a default okay i have a read only permission why because i haven't used sudo command so let's go back etc ansible sorry ansible ansible dot cfg okay all right i have updated it now what i want to do is i want to use my custom ansible dot cfg file there i will specify my inventory file okay so i am under my tmp so i will create ansible dot cfg file what i will do i am going to use inventory right inventory is equal to slash home ansible ansible dot sorry in invent inventory dot ini okay so if i check this one i just updated my inventory file in my ansible dot cfg file i know that it is not right way to define okay ans admin i need to give all right so i am saving my file cat ansible.cfg file and this file i have given so what i am telling to my ansible.cfg file is take this one now let's execute our ansible command okay ansible all minus m okay just i am giving ping module okay ping module doesn't require any attributes so ansible all minus m ping now our ansible command what does it do it will go with the hierarchy which i just shown so first it will check for the ansible underscore cfg anyway we haven't done that one next thing is it is going to check for the ansible dot cfg file in our uh, current location so we are under tmp under tmp we have a ansible dot cfg file so it is going to prefer this one i mean to say 
it is going to give the preference to this one rather than the default one and uh, anyway the whatever entry we have given in this file it should uh, uh, take it but we'll see what will happen now you can see here it is ansible is being run in the uh, old readable directory slash tmp ignoring it as a ansible.cfg source okay i should not create under tmp it seems okay let's switch to the opt and it is going to the default one because it is not considering the uh, uh, tmp location file okay even i didn't know so let's move to this one to ansible.cfg to slash opt okay i don't have permission so move ansible.cfg to slash opt okay go to opt now we have ansible.cfg over here let's execute our command once more okay now what it should do it should take this ansible.cfg and you can see here it is throwing an error that okay you have given a inventory file but i could not able to read it properly because it is not a right syntax to define it is not right syntax to define and if you see the error file contains no section headers okay file contains no section headers so in ansible whenever you are giving uh, creating your own configuration you need to tell that on which section does it belongs on which section does it belongs if you do remember inventory you can see under the default configuration right so those defaults we should give let me open our default ansible.cfg file i will go with more so you can see here this is the default section under default section we have inventory like that we have different sections are there and all the sections will be in the braces okay even we have seen the privileges privileges section right there it is yep you can see here inventory section this is inventory section this is privileged escalation section this is a parameter connection section like that each section is under braces so if you are defining the privilege escalation you need to give the privilege escalation group like this and then you can specify entries in your custom ansible.cfg file so now what i am going to do is i am going to update my default ansible.cfg so va ansible sorry not default my custom ansible.cfg file sudo slash opt sorry sudo vi ansible.cfg so here what we need to do we need to give the defaults right so this is the one we need to give that's it now i can say that you have written your ansible custom configuration file and let's execute our command this time it is going to execute your command only on this one because it in your custom ansible.cfg file you have specified inventory what inventory it should take so whatever entries you have specified over here it is going to take these entries remaining entries it will go and fetch in the your ansible.cfg file sorry default ansible.cfg file so let's take an example that uh, minus m sorry i'm not giving any module but i want to just see the uptime now what will happen it is going to take the inventory file from your custom ansible.cfg file but module from the default configuration file so that's how it is work so in the current working directory if you have a ansible.cfg file it is going to take that uh, what i can say into effect assume that you don't have this file or this file is exist in the your home directory okay i'm just moving it to slash home slash ansible dot ansible admin okay let me use the sudo now i have changed ansible.cfg file into my slash home ansible uh, sorry ans admin directory now if i execute the same command okay ansible all minus a uptime so which inventory file does it take is it going to take the default or my custom one so now we'll see what will happen now we have copied into our ansible.cfg file into okay let's cancel this execution and we'll see the where is our slash home ansible okay 
here we have ansible.cfg as well as inventory now if i execute this one it is going to take the custom one or default one let's go with our hierarchy once more time sorry one more time so here you can see here by default it looks for this one but anyway we don't have here and the next one is this one uh, i'm going to execute from opt so in opt we don't have this one next one is it is going to take dot ansible.cfg not only ansible.cfg in your home directory but in my home directory i don't have dot ansible.cfg i have only ansible.cfg file so even it is going to ignore this one next one is it is going with the default one if it is don't find the in your home directory also so now tell me uh, which one it is going to take whenever i execute this command please in chat default or custom of course it is going to take the default one why because we don't have dot ansible.cfc file in our home directory okay you can see here it it's executed on the default one now if i want to execute my custom one only i need to change this one to dot ansible.cfg so anyway it is my home directory just move slash home ansible ansible.cfg file onto into same location dot ansible.cfg that's it okay now it is a it is satisfying the third rule third rule nothing but it is going to take the dot ansible.cfg file so now it is going to execute only on one server okay so this is how you can create your custom ansible.cfg file and a custom inventory file okay so that's all for uh, today's lecture and i would like to tell you that uh, how i am using my commands or how i am providing my attributes how do i know okay it's quite simple you just need to go here and search for whatever module okay any module you want to know just search for ansible module command okay we have command module right if you search here it will take you into the docs.ansible.cfg this is the best place you can learn about modules they will give the detailed information about that module what it is do and what is the syntax and how to use it and what are the parameters it is expecting okay you can see here these are the parameters you can use for this command and you can see here this command the command module takes the command name followed by the list of the space delimited arguments okay and if you scroll down you could able to see the uh, what i can say uh, how you can use these commands in your uh, playbook it is talks more about playbook not with the adac commands but if you want to use it in the adac command just you need to use the as it is okay whatever you could see over here so you can see here how you can use your command module similar way if you want to know about m module you just need to give ansible module m it is going to give m module how to use the m module okay even in m module i have given the name parameter right so whatever is necessary those would be mandatory uh, what i can say options okay so the name is you can see here name a package name or the package specified the specified the uh, with version and if i scroll down you can see here name colon httpd is there instead of colon we should use the equal to in the adac commands okay so if you want to list out all the existing modules i have shown only five six modules right so you just search for ansible modules okay so it will take you into the module index page in ansible just to open this one and you can see here all modules if you click on all modules it displays whatever modules are available and custom modules okay clustering modules command modules crypto modules database like that different sections are there if you click on all it is going to display all the modules if you don't know which module you should use for what command for example let's take an example that i want to copy a file so how to copy 
a file in ansible okay so it is going to give the module called copy okay there is a module called copy is there if you open this copy module it will give the syntax how to use and you can see here required means you should specify that parameter without that parameter you cannot able to execute it okay and with the examples so this is the best place even in the real world everyone refer to the ansible documentation i regularly go to the ansible documentation uh, to check out my commands whether i'm executing correctly or not or what are the parameters i need to take it up all this stuff i'm going to use the ansible mod sorry ansible documentation itself okay so that's all for uh, from my side for today i'm open for questions now um shankar uh, i have a question related to vi editor uh, so can you just quickly tell me like what are the shortcuts you use while editing a file in vi editor because i when i whenever i try i mess i mess up a lot of things in vi editor because i don't know many of the shortcuts that you've been using okay okay uh, i will tell you what quite commonly we use there are a lot of uh, yeah. shortcuts yeah. are there in vi yeah. Just the very common shortcuts yeah. that you yeah. like. Okay, sure. So let's take our ansible.cfg file itself. Slash it is ansible, ansible.cfg file. So once it is opened, what I will do if I want to go to the end of the file, I will give the shift G. Okay, shift G is going to take us to end of the file. You can see my cursor is here, right? If I give shift G directly, I went to the last line 490. Okay uh so g means ground uh up means shift to tr i never tried with the upper one but anyway that is the command to go up next thing is if you want to go to the your cursor is starting of your line if you want to go to the end of the line then you can use the uh, end of the line and you want to write something at the end of the line then you can use the uh, shift a shift a nothing but sorry yeah shift a shift a nothing but it will go to the end of the line and it will go to the insert mode you can see here it went to the insert mode there are three modes are there in uh, what i can say not three yes three modes i believe yep so three modes are there in va uh, one is uh, command mode another one is uh, insert mode and one more is there execution mode or something okay i don't remember exactly place or sorry there is just a word called replace whenever you i i you to escape you uh, to escape out of the file you use escape then yes, yes. Then, then 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 it shows replace at the end is it escape okay. colon like this we will give to escape and uh, escape w colon yeah w, w q nothing but save and quit Okay, okay right and quit that is the command okay escape how we do save our file escape colon wq nothing but right and quit if you don't want to write it just quit okay uh, just give quit so that whatever changes you have done it won't write or quit escalate remark escalate remark nothing but uh, forcefully don't save it okay, okay. next uh, what else we will use and uh, in the command mode now i am in command mode okay if you see here insert mode means you can write it if you don't see anything over here it means that you are in command mode in command mode whenever you uh, uh, what you can say type your characters it will treat it as a each character have its own command so it will treat it as a command now if i give slash okay you can see here slash we got it whenever you are in command mode but if you are in insert mode if you give slash it will write it over there you can see here there is a slash okay but you go to escape and if you give slash it will go to the uh, search mode now whatever characters you give i am giving command okay you can see here whatever characters i am giving over here it will search over here so now there could be in more locations the command oh, sorry uh, it will search for this keyword but this keyword is exist in the multiple times in the same file you want to reach to the your desired uh, entry 
phase then what you can do you can do the uh, enter now okay so whenever you do the enter you are going to search for the command and the next time again you want to search for the command again you can give the n n nothing but next okay you can see here next it find the module name command and user uh, this is another command again if i give next it will go to the next okay wherever command is there it will go to the same phase so how you will do i'm going to explain one more time first you need to uh, go execute the escape if you are in the insert mode assume that i'm in insert mode insert mode means you can write it i'm escaping whenever you use escape you will go to the command mo mode slash command and enter you should give first first entry enter next time n okay this is uh, i use frequently next one uh, what i can say wo yeah whenever i'm in command mode i will use wo so wherever your cursor is there okay my cursor is here right so whenever i give wo it will create a empty space down the your current cursor level and you can start writing over here so let's take that i want to write something below to my okay let's take that i want to write something below to command timeout uh, entry so just give o whenever you are in command mode it will create a new empty space below to your cursor and you can start writing whatever you want okay similar way uh, i'm going again from insert mode to command mode if i give cap capital o okay small o is in give the empty space below to your current cursor if i give capital o it is going to give empty space above to cursor and you can write it so these are the quite commonly used entries most of the cases i use these either appending at the end of the line or else i am creating a new line and i am start writing so to append at the end of the line you will use a and to uh, what i can say create a new create a new line and you want to write use small o or caps o small o creates a new line below to cursor caps o create a uh, line uh, above to cluster sorry cursor yeah uh, two more commands that is x sorry deleting so to delete a entire line okay to delete a entire line dd means you if you execute double time d two times it is going to delete a line see here i have pressed double time d again double d again double d if you hold your d uh, like that it will delete all the file why because it's treated it as a uh, what i can say you are executing double d's continuously okay that is to delete a entire line but if you want to delete a single character then you can use x option okay so i want to uh, delete defines so if i execute x x x x x x x so if you press x holding then it removes the all the characters it continue to remove the characters but x is going to remove the characters from your cursor to next nothing but here whatever characters are there those characters it is going to delete but if you want to delete the value okay i don't want to delete the time i want to delete the value so uh, it is like a backspace backspace nothing but we need to delete the entries which is in front of my cursor right then you can use the capital x nothing but shift x shift x nothing but it is going to delete the previous character rather than the uh, back character okay so these two and the next thing is uh, i want to only replace the only one thing okay rather than i want to replace only one character rather than 30 i want to give 60 then what you can do you can go to the command mode and if you press r i'm just pressing r r nothing but replace it replace only a single character now i can give whatever value i want to give i want to give 50 so just i will give 50 that's it you cannot change one more character if i give again 60 it won't take it okay so if you want to replace a single character in command mode itself just to press r and replace the single character that is one thing and uh, next thing is if you have done some changes you don't want to uh, go with that change then you can use the u u stands for undo the change mm -hmm. 
so i'm just giving you so that 30 replaced with the sorry 50 replaced with the 30 again if i give you value uh, whatever we have deleted value or all this stuff is going to come and it you can see here i can go before to 38 times so if i give keep on giving you it is going to give the all the changes whatever i have done and uh, if you come to the your older version it says that already at the older changes so these are the commands i'm just going to uh, list out what uh, i have explained quickly uh, Shankar, one more yes go ahead uh, if i need to delete the whole content of the file in one go then why you need to go into va editor just if you want to delete whole the content then cat greater than if you do the file name it removes the all the content so the commands what i have executed is caps g shift g nothing but just caps g okay caps g end of end of the file next h is there so many are there but or we, i use commonly this then shift a nothing but caps a end of the line next uh, x delete a character after the cursor caps x delete a character before cursor next caps o create new line about to small o same thing create a new line but below okay next or replace character in the command mode okay next slash next pattern so pattern to search in your file okay any other so wq okay so these are the stuff and one last thing if you are not much familiar with this one what you can do you can use the nano okay nano is the easiest way it will be uh, how you use the notepad only but while saving you can see here uh, character nothing but control control o nothing but write out control w nothing but search control came nothing but cut text okay like this whatever commands we are having same thing and control x means exit okay so same thing you can do over here you can just write whatever you want you don't want to do all this nonsense i mean to say all this hard work sorry so you can write it once you have write it you can see here control o you need to give control o and uh, are you sure do you want to con control right yes i just want to give yes then exit control x that's it and if i see the inventory you can see this so in when uh, what i can say i'm using va from starting of my career that's the reason i'm habituated for this one okay then that's all for today's session and again we are going to meet on monday good morning and good evening guys so in previous lecture we have discussed about how adac commands does work and also how ansible.cfg file does work and uh, apart from that we have seen little bit about inventory nothing but using default inventory file and also creating our own inventory file all right 
so we can change our inventory file by changing explicitly specifying the minus option while executing our ansible command and also by updating ansible.cfg file to the latest file so you know that in today's class we are going to see how can we write our first ansible playbook there is a few more stuff we should know about inventory but going forward whenever we are doing exercises you will come to know how we can update our inventory file now let's discuss quickly about modules a module is a reusable standalone script that ansible runs on you on your behalf either locally or remotely so a module is a script okay which contains a code which can do certain task that task it will do act behalf of yourself either in locally or remotely remotely nothing but we have the managed servers remotely on those managed systems this module works next modules interact with your local mission and api or a remote system to perform specific tasks okay so even if you want to do some installation or some activity on your local system nothing but ansible control node or on the remote system it works whenever i say specific activities those activities like creating users we tried this activity and uh, installing packages we tried this updating configuration maybe we haven't tried it spinning up instances still we haven't tried this one like this there are various uh, modules are there which can able to fulfill this kind of tasks next modules are the programs that perform the actual work of the task of a play so usually in a playbook i mean to say in a task play a uh, play is uh, a, a sorry playbook is collection of plays okay so we have multiple plays each play does do some activity so in a play we are going to call a module ansible ansible ships with thousands of modules okay whenever we install ansible by default it is coming with thousands of modules okay if we want to do some activity where you could not able to find any module then you may need to develop your own module okay so with that we are going to use these modules in our playbooks before writing playbook let's once again uh, quickly execute the adapt commands okay for installing packages or creating users I have logged into my Ansible system. This is control node and uh, whatever having solarized dark, those are managed systems. Okay, this is Tomcat server and this one is RHL server. Okay, so let's execute a command called Ansible all minus M ping. I just want to check which host city is reaching at this moment. Okay, I think it would defined to the default sorry default host and uh, i can list out by using so this is the command ansible all minus minus list hosts so what does it do at this moment for which inventory file it is mapping or it is redirecting that inventory uh, hosts it is going to display so it is mapping to the file called host okay which is available under slash etc ansible host and here we have three files sorry three systems so it is communicating that system now let's quickly execute a user user creation module ansible all minus m module name is user and uh, assume that you don't know which attributes to pass it's quite simple okay it's quite simple just go here and search for user module ansible it gives the information okay which fields are required to execute a command or what could be the necessary parameters 
so you can check it out and you can give that one if you scroll down you can see here name is required for the user module so we should provide the name so name of the user to create or remove or modify okay so how do you specify name uh, we are going to see this one in the playbooks but uh, name equal to whatever name you want to create okay same thing i am going to execute name name is equal to john okay so i'm creating a user called john at this moment if i go and check for the user called john in the target system okay you don't have a user called john last user created by our ansible the name is modi here also all right so here developer 2 okay i, I was doing some testing during the weekend okay that's okay so developer 2 is the user now let's execute this command and we we should become a root so anyway it is failing now i'm giving minus b option so that become a root and create user on the target system all right now you can see if i do the same command this time user called john is there and user called john over here as well clear so this is how we can create user by using the module here user is a module user is a module so like that we are going to use modules and one more module i am going to use that is m module m minus a okay name is equal to degree. okay for m module also there is a name field so tree is the software if we if we execute tree command it is going to display the files like this structure so tomcat server already there is a tree and let me see whether here we have tree or not yes in the both the systems we have tree let's use another one telnet okay so telnet you can see here command not found as well as here also okay command not found so we are installing telnet telnet is a protocol kind of ssh but we don't use nowadays it is not much secure uh, but uh, for few reasons we may use it uh, something like whether ports are opened or not to know such kind of things we use the telnet now you can see here telnet you you could be able to log into telnet quit here also telnet okay so this is how we can able to install packages by using the modules now we'll see how we can write our first ansible playbook usually okay just for a clear idea we don't use ada commands much whatever commands we are executing those kind of commands we we, we rarely use most of the cases all the activities runs through ansible playbook all the activities runs through playbook now we'll see how can we create a ansible playbook and what is ansible playbook okay so ansible playbook a playbook is a test file written in yaml format and is normally saved it as a dot yml okay so it is a text file which is written in yml format okay yml format is quite simple and uh, we save the file name it as a yml dot yml or dot yml next rule is the playbook begins with the with a line consisting of the three dashes as a start of the document marker so the file ansible playbook whenever we are writing starting it starts with three dashes okay we just need to specify three dashes if you if we specify three dashes it means that it is a yml format next an item in a ml list starts with a single a single dash followed by a space so 
whenever we are listing out our items items nothing but either tasks or uh, uh, any new item okay you will come to know while writing ansible playbook okay so it starts with a single dash and uh, after that it should have a space okay i'm talking about the syntax this is how the syntax looks like next hosts and tasks are mandatory items in a playbook whenever we are executing ansible adapt commands if you see without uh, uh, modules or hosts we cannot able to execute our uh, adapt command either we are using all uh, ansible all all nothing but here hosts information minus m ping uh, ping is a module so these two are the mandatory fields in a playbook if you are writing your playbook without this it doesn't work next the playbook primarily use indentation with space characters to indicate the structure of its data so the major uh, syntax in yaml format is just the spaces we need to give appropriate spaces okay so that it can able to understand that okay what is the task and what is the play okay so we need to give the appropriate indentation indentation nothing but the spaces what we give next modules are used to perform tasks so whenever we want to create a task we should use the modules next comments starts with hash nothing but if we want to do the comments we need to start with hash next let's convert our ansible command to a ansible playbook okay so this is the ansible playbook we, which we just executed right ansible all minus m user minus a name is equal to john minus b now i would like to convert this one into a ansible playbook why because i may want to create or execute this ansible playbook regularly or quite frequently uh, because i might be deleting john user or i might be recreating it okay whatever reason first thing let's convert this one into a ansible playbook because i don't want to execute it as a ansible adapt command so if we convert okay just to follow the structure so now i first i need to create a file right so file name i'm giving create underscore user dot yml okay so this is a yml format but it is not mandatory okay it is a just to identify the syntax either yml or yml we are going to give okay next thing is the file starts with three dashes right within the file it starts with three dashes so this is the file next what is the next next one hosts and tasks are mandatory items in the playbook hosts and tasks are mandatory items in the playbook and before that one you can see here an item in a yml list starts with the single dash followed by a space okay this is a item even hosts is a item tasks is a item okay uh, you will come to know so sp minus space okay minus space hosts is equal to all next next tasks okay so tasks is a again one more um, what i can say uh, item okay one more item but uh, under tasks we are going to see mm -hmm. now under tasks task is a activity which we are doing right you can see here so what is the task we are doing we are doing a task called user id creation so so task is user okay this is the module colon what is you are doing with that module name is equal to john under tasks again we will have item okay so hosts and tasks belongs to the same items same kind of items okay same kind of items whenever we are talking so first item will get minus and subsequent items doesn't get minus okay please remember first item will get minus and subsequent items doesn't get minus if those all are belongs to the same items and the next kind of items again it starts with minus okay these all are what i can say header items we call 
hosts, tasks become true. All this we call it as a header items. These are tasks or plays, I can say. Okay, this is a play that is user. Uh, we are creating a user called John. That's why minus user name is equal to John. We need to specify. So it means that we have converted all this one except to minus B. Now we need to give the uh, we need to become a root user, right? To create this user. So then we need to give the become true. Okay, become true nothing but I am becoming a root user on the while executing this particular task. Now you can see the indentation. First, it starts with minus hosts, and uh, these three belongs to the same items. That's the reason you can see the indentation and uh, uh, where it starts. You should not start B before to H. Okay, these three belongs to the same, so alignment should be the same. And uh, this user can start somewhere inside also, but uh, it should not. This minus should not come out of T, because this user is a part of uh, what, what I can say sub item in the task. This user is a sub item in the task. Okay, this is how we can write a playbook. Now what we are going to do same whatever ADA command we have executed will convert into a Ansible playbook and will execute it clear. So this is my Ansible server. PWD I'm in my home directory. Okay, so let's create a directory called playbooks so that I can keep all my directories inside the playbook. MKDAR playbooks go inside to playbooks. Here we are going to create a file called create user, right? So VA or I'm going to use VAM create underscore user dot YML. Okay. So first thing is it starts with three minuses. So three minuses. Next thing is we need to give the item with single sp single dash single dash space. Then your item name. What is our items we would like to display? We need to give the hosts, right? I told you host is a mandatory field. Without this, you cannot able to execute your Ansible playbook. And VAM can able to identify the syntax what you are doing. That's the reason it's whenever I press enter, you can see here it give the it has given the spaces. Okay. So now I am going to execute this as a root user. So become true. Become true. We need to give. Next thing we need to give the tasks. Okay. Tasks. So whenever we are giving tasks, we, we don't have directly a value to the task. We need to give the tasks with modules. Tasks it is not task. Tasks. Yes. Okay. So whenever we give tasks, we need to. Okay. Start from here. Okay. So under tasks again, we have sub items. So that's the reason it starts with minus and name sorry module name is user right so user module under user module we are creating a user called john user sorry name is equal to john okay so this is how we can convert our ansible ada command into a ansible module sorry ansible playbook but we have already created a user called john but let it be We'll see what will happen when we execute this Ansible playbook. Okay, I'm just opening this Ansible playbook. Just have a look. So three minuses, and this indentation starts here at the host sol, and these three belongs to the same indentation. You can see the uh, spaces where it starts everything, and this one belongs to the under tasks. So I need to either uh, start from the T or I can go a little bit inside also not a problem. Okay. Now I want to execute this Ansible playbook. I want to execute this Ansible playbook. Whenever we are executing Ansible playbook, we need to give command as a Ansible playbook. It is not just Ansible. We should give Ansible playbook followed by your playbook name followed by your playbook name. This is how we can execute our Ansible command. Let's execute and we'll see what will happen. 
okay it is connected to the only one server why okay see here i'm creating my ansible playbook in my home directory so whenever i'm executing this user it is taking this particular one let me check my ansible.cfg file do i have ansible.cfg in my local system oh okay that's the reason see here in my home directory i have ansible.cfg so it will take in this as a ansible configuration we have a ansible.cfg file in the user home directory under that file we have specified our inventory that's the reason it is taking this as a inventory file so what i can do i can change it to the i, I will update this inventory file to equal to the my default inventory file so what is the default inventory file content so just copying cp to my inventory file that's it now let's execute again our ansible playbook or ansible all minus minus list hosts okay so now it could able to display and let's execute our ansible playbook again so the command is ansible playbook create user now you can see here it is executing on two systems okay let's understand the output so first thing is play all it means that i am executing this ansible playbook on all the systems all nothing but whatever you have given in the your ansible playbook where we have given all okay so hosts equal to all we have given right so that it is taking next tasks gathering facts we'll discuss about this one little later but what it is doing it is trying to connect to the systems and uh, uh, it's fine next it could not able to connect to the other system next task so what is the task we are executing you can see here task called user we are executing and it's okay okay means there is nothing to change see here output is green color whenever it comes to the green color there is nothing to change it is already there that is the meaning of this green color okay and play recap once everything is completed it is going to give the result what will happen so on this server okay zero nothing but i didn't do anything changed also zero nothing to change over here sorry nothing to change over here unreachable yes i could not able to reach to this system remaining all are just zeros similar way if you see here okay nothing but it is already fine in two cases okay and changed zero remaining all are zero same thing for this system so it executed two tasks on the remote system and both looks fine nothing but nothing to change in the both the cases that is the meaning of this one okay okay so all right now what we are going to do is we are going to add little more changes to our ansible playbook why because whenever we get output uh, we don't have appropriate information what exactly this playbook is doing okay here user which user is it creating or here just play means all it is giving so we can give appropriate uh, what i can say uh, name or appropriate uh, output while executing our ansible playbook for that one va create user so now what do we do we are going to give some comment kind of thing comment nothing but what this ansible playbook is doing so usually to give the comment kind of thing we are going to use a name parameter in ansible name parameter in ansible so let's go here so first thing i am going to give the what this playbook is doing what this playbook is doing so minus name colon create 
creating user okay so i am saying that this playbook is creating user and and name hosts become true tasks all belongs to the same items now can somebody tell me do we need this minus or not no 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 yes we don't need this minus why because these all are belongs to the same indentation and we have already given over here so we need we no need to specify over here next come to the tasks tasks also we can add name okay so instead of here what i am going to do minus name okay i don't want to here you can start from here also there is no problem how many spaces you want to give you can give here also you can start but uh, it looks like a uh, appropriate way if i start over here so creating user john okay i'm just giving appropriate name and you can see here here of course we don't need minus as i said we don't need minus and uh, we are not creating a new task we are just giving the for existing task one more attribute in those cases these two belongs to the same indentation because these these two belongs to the same task only that's the reason even user should start with the n where n started in the same place even user should start okay that's it i have updated with the appropriate comments i can say so that while executing our ansible playbook it displays these comments rather than earlier we were just got the all our module user okay now let's execute this playbook by saving it so we just saved this file and if i display this file you can see here we have given the name creating user hosts all become true task under task we are giving the name right clear the screen let's execute again our ansible playbook command okay see here earlier while executing this play we could see that all but this time whatever name field we have given it is displaying over here and uh, here tasks it was giving only user now it is saying that creating user john so this is how we can modify our output to a uh, readable language i mean to say understandable way by using the name field next thing is okay how many tasks I, we are executing through this playbook can somebody tell me how many tasks we are executing at this moment one Two. yes okay one is correct so far we are executing only one but how it is going to do the two you can see here it is saying that task task okay so we are mentioning only one task but why it is creating two tasks if you see this task it is saying that gathering facts okay gathering facts nothing but by default even though you don't specify anything ansible playbook will run one extra task that we call it as a gathering facts this gathering facts is equal to a command called ansible all sorry ansible all minus m setup if you do remember we have executed setup command okay so this setup is equal to the gathering facts in ansible playbook this setup is equal to the gathering facts in our playbook so even though we don't execute a setup module it is going to take by default and this setup module is displayed it as a gathering facts so why it gathers the facts the question is so whenever we execute ansible playbook it is going to gather all the system information because it thinks that it may be useful later in the playbook it may be useful later in the playbook that's the reason it is going to gather facts if it is really necessary for you to gather facts you can just leave like this if it is not necessary you can skip this task you can skip this task why we do we need to skip this task assume that you are executing on 100 systems 
a particular task it has to gather all the systems information before executing that that playbook it unnecessarily creates the uh, delay while executing your ansible playbook and also the additional network traffic because gather facts collect the lot of information from your client system if you are not using that one it is not necessary in your playbook right so then you can disable this gather facts in your ansible playbook let's modify our ansible playbook little bit so vi creating user and uh, gather facts also comes under to the uh, same header indentation so wo i have given next gather underscore facts okay this is how we can give entry okay gather facts sorry no so gather facts no if you do it is not going to gather facts of your system so this time let's execute our ansible playbook and you can see here this time there is no task called gather facts and if you see only one task it is executing it is executing only one task so gather facts when do we use whenever it is necessary for you to use that in a your next task or for the tasks then you need to enable gather facts otherwise we don't need yes in going forward we are going to use gather facts we'll see that one when we are going to use it so for any questions so this is how we can create a user in a playbook okay now we'll modify a little bit okay i'm bringing it into a appropriate structure how we create a playbook in real world okay so one last change to do this one to make it as a, a good looks like a good playbook that is so we have given a user and you can see here name is equal to john usually we rarely use equal to option in a playbook rather than that one what we can do user is a module right under user module under user module again we can queue just name is equal to john okay so this is how we can you because name is equal to again sub item in user because in user there are a lot of items if you see user module right so these parameters we can call it as a uh what i can say items in the user module whenever we are using this uh what i can say whenever we are using these items we need to give the uh sorry yep we need to give name is equal to john okay name colon john so something like this we need to specify if you see the syntax of this user you just see here so we have given the name under name user module so this two belongs to the same item and here you may ask that why don't we specify minus okay but under module whatever is there for those we don't specify minus i mean to say this is module right we are using module for module items there won't be minus there won't be minus that is how the syntax works don't say that okay we will use minus again over here okay in this case it is exceptional we should not use minus over here so here you can see here but two spaces we should use because it is under this one right so two or three whatever spaces you want to give you can give but it should not starts with the where you started okay or else where module started you should not start in the same structure so let's save this file and we'll execute our ansible playbook again okay so it's executed successfully <clears throat> now we'll do what kind of mistakes we usually tempted to do okay so usually what kind of mistakes we do sometimes we may start our this module module attribute under your uh, username itself now what will happen we'll see ansible playbook you can see here it is giving fatal error and discovered so and so so and so okay and uh, what is other mistakes we do the indentation also okay we are we haven't given indentation right indentation over here and sometimes this will starts from here okay by mistake we may do this one 
So what happens whenever we do this one? You can see here it is throwing error. So these kind of errors we do. If you see the syntax, it is quite simple. You need to give the appropriate spaces. If you could not able to do the appropriate spaces, it is throwing an error. And if you are still not confident that whether this playbook is written correctly or not, Okay, then what we can do is we have a one more option called Ansible playbook minus minus check. Okay, so whenever you use minus minus check option, it is not going to execute your Ansible playbook really. Okay, so let's execute it. You can see here it is saying that what does it do, but it won't do the real execution of your playbook. Once you get execute this one, if it is working fine, then you can execute without minus minus check option. So let's change our user John to some other user and we'll try this option. So I'm creating a user called Sonia and here also. Okay, so I have changed it and uh, clear the screen and I want to execute my playbook with check option okay before executing let's go and see whether this user is there or not on the client systems so there is no user called Sonia even over here also okay there is no user let's execute with the check option and we'll see what will happen you can see here changed this time it is not okay it is changed why because this particular user is not exist on the client systems of course it is going to change and here also only okay one and changed one okay because we are changing and changing is successful that is the reason it is saying that okay and if i go actually and check my system still you cannot see this user because we are ha we have executed this playbook as a with the check option so if you want to execute it actually we need to try with minus minus check so that the user will create over here as well as over here okay so let's try now so if it is blue color sorry yellow color it means that it is creating user a red color nothing but it's failing now if i execute again you can see here user called Sonia is there similar way a user called Sonia is there right so this is how we can create our Ansible playbook so now let's write another Ansible playbook to create uh, sorry to install packages let's write another Ansible playbook to install packages so clear the screen I'm going to create a new playbook that is VA install package.yml. Okay, install package.yml. So let's write quickly minus minus minus. And if you are not convenient or uh, if you want to write it outside, maybe you can use the Sublime Text Editor. So this is Sublime Text Editor. So it starts with the three minuses. Next, minus name, installing packages. So Sublime Text I'm using. Next, hosts. I'm going to give all and become because we are doing installation, right? Become true and gather facts. I'm giving no next thing tasks so here we need to provide the tasks first task i am giving name is equal to installing packages okay so next our module name is m right so m starts with under name then we are giving name so in m module we should provide the name so name could be something like uh, which name do we use okay we'll install um, wget command okay i don't know whether wget is there or not 
let me check it's there okay in one system it is there in another system it is not there okay so the advantage of ansible is if it is already installed it doesn't do anything if it is not installed then it is going to install okay so in this case it should change only one system so let it be so w get okay so we are saying it it that install the package called w get and just copy this one and we'll go to our ansible system and paste it over here I have given my Ansible playbook. Now, let's save this one. And you can see the syntax. So these all are under same indentation. And the next name, name started over here. And uh, I hope it should work. It should not throw any error. Only the, here is, you can give any number of spaces. Only thing is, it should be in the same alignment. Okay, now Ansible playbook install packages minus minus check i'm doing i don't want to execute it actually okay you can see here it looks like on one system it is fine another system i could not able to reachable and another system i'm able to change it so here we are changing it this system looks fine okay now let's execute this actually without check i'm executing all right so it's installed on the target system of course here wget is already there nothing to do so wget is a command which can download packages into our system right so now here you can see here it is going to it has installed on rhl server as well so this is how we can create a package to install a play sorry wget now let's modify this one so far what we are doing is we are executing only one task i want to execute one more task i want to execute one more task so let's change this one to okay httpd so i am installing a service called httpd i am installing a service called httpd m module so whenever you do the uh, what i can say uh, httpd then we are, we need to provide the state as well okay so let's go and check the syntax of your m module module m okay if you go i want to install httpd right okay so this is m module and parameters if you see here name parameter so you can see the name parameter name a package name or package specifier the specifier with the version name minus 1.0 if you want to specify the version and uh, we also need to give the state as well okay even for the wget command also it is better to use the state yes you can see here example this is what we want to do install the latest version of apache that is what we are doing so m module name is equal to httpd state latest so what version do you want to install that you can specify here over here state latest are installed uh, like that there are various options if you go to the state module state you can see here state you can do the present or latest okay present nothing but uh, install the current uh, sorry keep this uh, version available sorry keep these packages are available and install the latest version packages like that we have various options if i go up state 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 yep state you can see here these are the choices we have that is absent nothing but if you give absent it is going to remove it installed nothing but just it it makes make sure that it's installed latest version present removed okay removed and option is going to remove the packages but in our case we are installing it right so let's install it so just you need to give name and state i can give any of these okay there is no variation you can use any of these options installed latest or present okay any of these you can use 
so state usually i prefer to use installed okay even you can do the present as well okay so this is the what i can say one task which we have done to create uh, what i can say sorry to install httpd now i would like to introduce one more task in the same playbook why because once httpd service is installed we need to start the service we need to start the service so that is how we do right once we have installed we need to start the service so to start the service again we need to use one more task to start the service we need to use one more task whenever we are starting one more task here if you see this task is started from here right so this task is started from here whenever we are writing one more task that task also should start from the same alignment okay from here and whenever we do the new task again we should provide the minus name what your new task is doing so let me give one more space and this task starting httpd services okay so i'm just renaming the installing httpd and here starting httpd services and to start the services we are going to use the use a module called service module if you don't know what is the module to start the service so ansible module to start service if you give this one you can see here manage services there is a module called service okay so here we have options so name is required followed by the state state nothing but do you want to start the service or stop the service reload the service all this you can specify okay here started we need to give it's like a past tense we should give even uh, here also if you see it is installed not just like install please remember that similar way it is not start to start the service it is started so next thing is we are using a module called service under service we should provide a name that is httpd and state started okay so this is how we can give now if you see here we have two tasks one task is first installing the service another task is it is starting the service i cannot change this uh, what i can say i cannot run this task first and i cannot run this task as a second why because ansible playbook execute in the sequential format that is what we have discussed in initial class right so it is going to execute in a sequential uh, format so first it is going to install the packages then only start the service then only start the service now let's copy this playbook and yeah one more thing i would like to tell you that here service module and m module should starts with the same alignment all your tasks should be the same alignment and this name and this name you can see here same alignment so that is how you need to write if i copy this one onto our system you can clearly understand so i am not disturbing the existing file so i am creating new file called install httpd dot yml okay so here i am just copying our content and if you see the alignment these two started at the same alignment and these two are the same alignment okay next to these are at same alignment so that is how it should be otherwise it throws an error all tasks should starts with the at the same level and uh, i am giving two spaces over here maybe it can be more spaces also there is no issue okay if i am giving like this four spaces you must give uh, here also four spaces okay the number of spaces it doesn't consider at least it should have at least one one space but uh, more spaces that would be fine there is no issue but i would like to give it as a it has a proper uh, visible sorry understandable syntax that's why i am doing this one even i don't to use this one over here this one i would like to start from the under tasks itself here also it should starts under task and this m also should come under name 
this one two spaces this one two spaces so this is what appropriate syntax i use okay it looks something better and i will give one more space over here so that we can divide the header section and the task section as a separate one so that it looks like okay this is area is tasks so all the activities comes under to only tasks whatever code you write everything should come under to the task this one just headers doesn't have any additional value just you give the header colon some value that's it until it comes to the variable so now i hope it looks good clear the screen and install httpd right so so far if i go and check whether httpd is installed or not yum list installed okay so this command is going to tell you what and all packages are installed in your system okay if i give enter there are hell lot of packages so all it is going to display among this i want to just grip httpd is installed or not okay there is no httpd and if i do the same thing okay there is no httpd once we execute this package playbook it should install httpd and also if i check for service httpd status okay there is no service called httpd at all once it is installed you are going to see the httpd and also it should be in the running state why because through the ansible playbook we are running it okay so state is started we are doing let's execute it sorry ansible playbook install httpd minus minus check it is always best practice to use minus minus check option why because you don't know where you have done the mistake so it's better to validate it before executing you can see here it is changing and it is also changing and first task is installing httpd second start is task is starting httpd service so let's ex execute it now okay still i'm just going to show you still it is not installed why because we just tested it out here also it is not yet installed we just tested it out let's install now all right so installation is successful now let's check for now you can see here httpd packages has been installed and if i see the service service is active why because we have started if you just install and leave it it won't be started we should start the service as well right so if i see the packages over here yes there are packages and service it's running and i can still access this application from the browser okay so now if i access the this application by default httpd runs on port number 80 so nothing to add just if i give this one it displays the default httpd page i think i need to open this port number on security group level so let's quickly open the port number in the security group level that is port number 80 because httpd runs on port number 80 devops sg right this is the one we are using inbound if you see there is no port number 8080 enabled let's edit and add port number 8080 add your rule sorry 80 not 8080 or else we can just check for http over here you can see here if i check http 80 is the port number and i would like to access it from anywhere save rules and uh, now you can see here it is displaying the default uh, http page even for tomcat server as well so if i give the tomcat server ip address in the browser you can see that this is the which is running on tomcat server and this is on rhl server okay so this is how we can install and start services by using ansible playbook okay so like this we can add uh, what i can say any kind of ada commands to our ansible playbook
even we have seen uh, what I can say now move and copy we have entered done right okay let's add one more module okay so before adding one more module we should understand how the httpd works okay it is quite simple application once you have installed uh, whenever you install it what does it do it is going to create a where www html okay it is going to create this directory it is going to create a this directory and in this directory if you have any index.html file it is going to pick up from the browser it is going to pick up from the browser if you don't have index.html file over here it is going to display the this default page so just for test i am going to create vi index.html here i am just giving h1 h1 nothing but header welcome to devops okay i am just giving h1 Oh, okay. I'm trying it as a user. So VA index index dot HTML. So H1. Welcome to DevOps. Okay. I'm just uh, writing some content. And uh, this is Tomcat server, right? If I access Tomcat server from the browser, now if I refresh it, you can see here, welcome to DevOps because we have created a test page over here so it is accessing assume that you are installing on around 10 to 15 systems and going and creating a index.html page over here uh, doesn't make sense right then what we can do we can update our ansible playbook to copy a file from our ansible system to in this location our ansible system to in this location then what we can do i am going to create a file only once in the ansible system and uh, and i will tell to my ansible playbook that okay take this ansible index.html and copy into all the target systems so what i am doing now on my ansible playbook i am going to create a index.html page okay index.html i am just giving h1 Welcome to Veloxi. Okay, just I am giving welcome to Veloxi Technologies. Okay, now what we want to do, I want to copy this file into all the target systems. Then we can use a module called copy. Okay, if you don't know, just search for the Ansible module to copy a file okay so there is a module called copy okay if you scroll down the parameters you can see okay uh, just go through with these parameters destination okay destination is required nothing but where do you want to copy your file you can see here remote absolute path where the file should be copied okay and we should also have the source nothing but src src nothing but where your file is located local path of a file to copy to the remote server okay just go through with this one and if you are not much clear you have options over here okay copy module src source file in ansible server in which location is it is there and destination on remote directory where do you want me to copy these three all uh, like owner we can specify group we can specify mode nothing but what are the permissions you want to do okay all this we can do with the copy module but we are just concentrating only these two so i know where is my source file is there it is under uh, my home directory and destination also where www.html so i just need to add a module called copy module right so copy module it should starts from here because it is again new module and please remember that name is not a mandatory field okay it is just to make sure that our output comes in the necessary format if you are not specifying name then you can directly specify module but while specifying module you should have the minus over here why because this is new task right so rather than uh, using name i'm just giving the module itself okay you can we can try try this so 
copy so src so where is my mod uh, file is there if i go here here i have created right index.html i can give the full path i can directly give the index.html but uh, if i copy this playbook into some other location it doesn't work that's the reason just will give the full path of this one slash index.html okay so index index.html and dest nothing but where do you want to copy so destination it looks for the path in the where www.html in the remote directory okay this is directory right so whenever you specify destination as a directory this file just copied into the destination directory even you can give slash index.html also okay but it is not recommended just give the give the directory and leave it so this is the module right so i'm just copying this module i don't want to copy entire stuff and here i haven't specified name so whenever display whenever it is running it just give the copy it doesn't give the detailed information like this okay just copy this one into our ansible playbook so let me edit va install httpd so here we are adding one more task all right so let me do the alignment otherwise it won't work it throws error so yes that is fine and src and test all right so i'm copying a file to the target system as well now let's execute this ansible playbook minus minus check this time already two tasks are already executed so you can see here these two are at green color i don't want to change anything only this one is going to copy and here we haven't specified the name parameter that's the reason it just displayed the module name now let's execute our playbook and if i access it from the browser it should give the welcome to velaxi technologies rather than here welcome welcome to devops okay playbook is successful let me reload it you can see here here also it should give the same thing all right so this is how we can keep on adding our modules to our ansible playbook sorry yep all right so that's all for today's session and uh, if you guys have any questions you can ask me yeah shankar i have a question yes go ahead so shankar in this playbook can you please uh, open this playbook i have opened it right do you want me uh, to yeah. edit it no 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 i'm just asking like can we uh, do uh, two installation simultaneously like you are uh, installing under yum httpd so can we do like httpd comma wget or something like that yes we can do that one we are going to discuss in later classes how to install multiple packages with a single task okay all right that's all for today if you don't have any questions we'll meet again on wednesday in previous lecture we have seen a couple of modules that is yum copy user module okay so in today's lecture we are going to see file module once once that is done then we are going to deal with the uh, conditions that is when with items and uh, notify okay that is the today's uh, agenda so next i'm connecting to my servers okay all right so i have connected to all my servers so this is my control node this is my rhl server and this is my tomcat server fine okay if you don't have any questions let's start so first we are going to see the file module okay we'll see the what is the purpose of file module just i'm going to check out 
file module in Ansible. Okay, the purpose of file module is to create a file or directory on the target system. Even though it is a file, you can still create a directory. You can see here set attributes of link files, symbolic links, sorry, sim links, nothing but symbolic links or directories. Alternatively, remove files, symbolic links or directories. We can create a file or as well as delete a file uh, by using this one. If you do remember, we were uh, creating um, we are we were copying a file by using the copy module onto the target directory if you are not aware that whether target directory is exist or not in those cases we can check it out by using this file module if directory is already exist nothing to do if directory is not doesn't exist it is going to create it so that is the file module and even you can copy the content of your uh, some content onto your file by using the file module sorry that is for copy copy module sorry copy module okay so the syntax is something like this let me increase brightness okay Syn syntax is something like this so change file ownership or group and permission if you want to change the ownership of your file also still you can use the file module it it requires a path that is which file you want to uh, change it and owner group mode similar way this is the what i can say another file where we are giving the root privileges this is to create a symbolic link if you want to create a symbolic link you need to create a source under direct uh, destination next if you scroll down where is the directory yeah so if you see here touch again the same file nothing but if you want to create a new file this is the one yeah touch the uh, same file not this one yep touch a file using the uh, symbolic mode so on so on so so what does it mean that you can create a new file okay you can create a new file by using this one and state we must give touch if you are giving state as a touch it is going to create a file and if you are giving state as a directory you are going to create a directory where is directory yeah you can see here create a directory if it does not exist then path you need to give the path then state directory and whatever permission you want to give so we'll create a uh, ansible playbook which can create a file or directory on the target system maybe we can create under home directory of ans admin user so let's jump in so this is my ansible server and pwd i am under my ec2 minus user home directory i am switching back to i am switching to ans admin user if you see here here we have a directory called playbooks we are doing all our playbooks over here now let's create a file called create files.yml okay so even though i named it as a file files we are going to create a directory as well so let's enter and i'm giving three minuses that is where it starts right next minus name creating files are directories okay creating files are directories and hosts all i am giving then become true because if you are creating in some location where ans admin doesn't have privileges then you should do it with with become option then gather facts it is creating a directory so we don't require gathering facts right so gather facts no and task okay so tasks i am giving minus name create a file and uh, module name is file and path is equal or path colon sorry so i am creating under my home directory itself so slash home slash ec2 minus user slash test file i'm creating a file whenever you are creating a file how does it understand whether you are creating a file or not you need to give the state 
okay in the state if you are giving touch it is going to create a file called test file if you give the directory then it is going to create a directory and mode if you want to change the permission you you can use the parameter called mode so mode 0755 nothing but read write execution to the owner and ignore this zero because it is the how we need to give the syntax while using ansible uh, it it is like a get a syd get guid that is in depth uh, of os platforms so you just give the zero over here and seven double five okay and even you can change the owner of the file okay i think owner only let me check the syntax mode yeah owner okay you can change the owner of the file also by default it is going to create it as a ans admin user right not ans admin user if you give the become true it creates as a root user let's try that one okay without uh, owner i'm just creating a file so ansible playbook and i'm i want to create on the default one so create files and i want to use the default hosts file okay just i'm creating a file okay what it is saying there is a typo which up true true yeah no this is yeah this is a typo but still it should work because i'm trying it as a normal user host sal become true gather facts you know, tasks name file okay so what it is saying failed to connect to the host ssh connection maybe we need to give ans admin right you have given ec2 admin ec2 user where I haven't created given any user at all. Yeah, in this path it is going to create it, right? So you should become a true. Now it works. Okay. Anyway, I want to give the EC2 instead of EC2 minus user ANS admin because on EC2 minus user we don't have privileges. Uh, so it, it was a typo, so it could it could not able to take it. Alright. Now let's execute this playbook okay if i go to my sud su minus ans admin ls minus l you can see there is a file it is a file right so there is a file called text and uh, it is under home directory so it doesn't use the privileges of the root user even if i go here ls minus l but still it should create it as a root user let me see VA become true. Let me try it on other directory. Whenever we try it on other directory, like I am going to create this file under OPT, and uh, if I am doing under OPT, it should do it as a root user. Okay. So again, I am trying. So same file I'm creating under OPT and LS minus L. You can see here. So here I have a privileges to create. So it used the ANS admin user, but same I'm creating under OPT. Under OPT, ANS admin doesn't have privileges to create a file. So it used the root privileges. Nothing but as a root user, it's used the become true option. Even if I go over here also. Okay. You can opt ah okay so text file you can see here root user now i don't want to get it as a root user i want to give the ans admin user itself then we can do little bit of change we just need to add owner once we create this file give the ownership to ans admin okay so now let's try And file is exist but it is changing the permission that is the reason it is changed and if I do ls minus l this time you can see here owner given as a ans admin if I want to change the group also then group also I should provide it as a ans admin okay 
so this is how you can create a file and if you would like to create a directory just change it to directory okay directory and uh, here we need to change the some directory dir1 i am giving so there is no dir1 directory over there and let's create and if i see ls minus l sorry ls minus l this time it's created a dir1 and ownership we have given to ans admin same thing over here now it's created a directory called dir1 with ownership of ans admin so this is how we can create a file and also sorry file or directory by using file module and also we can delete files by using file module okay so let's delete it to delete we should give the just option either it is a file or a directory okay okay absent is the uh, command which we need to give while deleting while deleting we don't require all this right nothing to change while deleting so i am deleting dir1 and if i check minus now you can see only test file is there because dir1 has been deleted here as well all right so this is how we can use the file module to create files or directories clear any questions okay so next is we are going to deal with the with items okay so with items uh, sorry not with items conditions i can say so in the conditions we have uh, three frequently used options that is when with items and notify and the handler okay even with items is not come under to the condition but still uh, i just added it so when condition and notify and handler we can use but still with items and also loops i'm going to show you so let's just enter i'm going to create a new yaml file and uh, the requirement of creating this file is i would like to install multiple packages on the target system i would like to install multiple packages on the target system whenever you want to install multiple packages then we can use the with items option but with items is uh, going to deprecate it in the latest versions if you see ansible minus minus version okay so we are using 2.9.5 in the latest versions it is uh, going to deprecate i don't know whether because i'm using around 2.9.1 or something in my office so there it is still working we we recently installed this system so we'll see if it is not there there is a easy method to use with items in the other format we are going to see that so i'm giving va with items so with items dot yml or packages install dot yml okay so packages install dot yml i'm going to write it quickly so name install multiple packages okay next hosts all next become true because it is uh, it must be as a root we are installing packages now gather facts okay for this uh, we may need it okay if you give them gather facts s or if you just ignore by default it takes as a gather facts s next tasks i am giving tasks as minus name installing packages okay so now to install packages we are using a module called m right so m then name name of the packages we need to give so i can give you a name of the package like a git or a w git or a tree okay like this we can give but here you can give only one file name so what we can do 
uh, I'm just giving you as a okay so git for this moment and state installed right so now what does it happen it is going to install only git packages but i want to install multiple packages with the same task in that case we are going to use a module called with items with items so in with items you can list out what and all uh, packages you want to install okay that is i want to install okay here this width should starts over here it is going one cursor is it same alignment no so here it should start and uh, this minus also should start where it is started okay minus you can give list of your packages gate w gate tree um, make okay like this you can give multiple packages and minus sorry minus uh, telnet okay gg like this you can give multiple packages uh, names using with items but here it is already given as a git so it doesn't take like this so what we should do instead of this one we need to change it as a just item okay we just need to change it as a item okay item nothing but by default it is going to take these items okay with items if you specify you can use as a item but the problem here is uh, it cannot able to replace it if you just specify item okay it just think that item is a package and it will try to install you want to replace this item with these values then you need to specify it in the flower braces okay like this you need to do but it should be in the colon double quotes okay so you understand right so this should be item and item should be in the flower braces braces and should have the double quotes why do we need to use double quotes because after name immediately if you are giving flower braces it cannot able to understand because two special characters right so if i give like this it thinks that colon immediately there is a special character so it cannot able to recognize that's the reason you should specify the colon but after colon if you have some text and then you have the flower braces then it's not a problem at that time this flower braces is optional it is not mandatory okay but in this case we don't have any content in later classes you can see the content okay so in this case we don't have any content that's the reason i'm just going to keep it under double quotes sorry okay so gather facts now save this file and simple playbook packages install just i'm doing with check okay it looks good so it is gathering facts and you can see here whatever is already installed then it is not going to touch i think git is there w git is there tree make telnet git make is not make is there right so in one system everything is there in another system it is changing something okay that's the reason only one system is changing and uh, if i go with without check it is going to install these packages on the target system even you can uninstall these packages as well and you can see here yeah you can see here deprecation warning deprecation warning nothing but they are going to deprecate this one so involving m only once while using a loop via okay scratch actions is deprecated instead of using the loop of the supply multiple items and specifying the name uh, like item you can use like this okay this is a array kind of thing in the python so rather than doing all this stuff we can just mention it as a name colon this one and you can see here this feature will be uh, will be removed in the version 2.11 okay this with items they are going to deprecate so same thing we can do with this one i am just copying this one so we can able to use it in our script 
so yep uh, if you come here it is not installed on one system it's installed on other system maybe few packages might be there few packages might not be there in the target so it's installed on the 215 system i think it is a uh, red hat server 215 ip added here yeah 215 in this system it's installed so if i check git if i check make okay everything is work telnet all this okay now what i will do i would like to remove all these packages i would like to remove all these packages then what i can i'm going to now i'm going to change the same playbook to remove the packages but this time i don't use let me copy it whether i copied it or not so this is array right so this is python way of de defining uh, a array so in python we will specify like this even ansible written in python so it can use the similar kind of syntax so rather than using with items i can use it as a i would like to copy it and the name is already there and also i should specify it in double quotes i believe and okay if you see the syntax it is in quote single quote git comma space single quote w get comma space single quote tree comma so like this you, you need to define multiple packages and uh, i want to remove this so to remove it is absent absent nothing but it is going to remove instead of installing packages uninstall packages uninstall multiple packages okay so even the file name also move packages install to remove packages dot yml i'm just giving the appropriate naming conventions so if you see here we are un uninstalling multiple packages the packages are so on so so on so let's try this one ansible playbook remove packages dot yml minus minus check you can see here it is gathering facts and it is trying to remove uninstalling the packages so why it is let me check it out m module let me try it actually without check okay now i'm trying to remove my packages so gather facts could be fine and it is uninstalling packages no okay interesting va remove packages so instead of absent i'm using remove removed so minus minus check here also it is not uninstalling should not be in quotes because whenever i specified in the quotes it is taking it as a entire thing as a single package okay got it so it should not be in quotes if it is in array so let's check now this time it should work okay now it is changing so it means that it looks fine in other system it is not uh, 215 in red hat server it is not removing one of the service maybe that could be which one git or something but anyway it re it can remove whatever packages are there remaining it is giving error okay failed to remove it right okay you can see the error also dip solve error occurs problem the operation would result in removing the following protected packages it is used by the kernel that is the reason it is not uh, allowing maybe make uh, make could be the one of the package okay so let's uh, edit our ansible playbook because we'll remove only un unnecessary packages git anyway we need it so i will keep it git 
W get we can remove tree we can remove but uh, make we should not remove and the tell net we can remove and git I'm ignoring okay only few packages I'm trying so we just tried with the check option now I'm going to give option instead of remove still it should work in the same way if I do now I think it should not throw error in the red hat system okay now there is no error right so if error is there your play playbook is going to fail uh, whenever I say it is failed it doesn't going to revert the changes on the other systems whatever is successful it will continue on those systems whatever is failed it is going to stop over there we are going to see that one in the later sessions now I am going to execute this one actually so that it remove the packages okay it's successful and if I go and check for the telnet now there is no telnet even over here also okay and also we removed a w gate you can see here w gate is not there even here as well so this is how we can use with items option all right now next thing is uh, we are going to do the same thing with the loop okay loops are there so by using loops we can use the similar way of with items and uh, if you want to give the multiple options if you want to give multiple options then we can use the uh, loop in in this case i will just open remove packages so in this case we are just using a single variable then we can use this one but if you want to give multiple uh, not variables i can say multiple values as with items like that then we can go with the loop option so let's let me give you an example that i want to install few packages in the same uh, playbook and i want to remove few packages in the same playbook then what i can do i can give something like this i want to install packages like git okay in single quote it is git comma i want to install w get comma i want to install make okay assume that i want to install these packages so then i will say that install next i want to remove some packages that is next module i sorry next task i'm using to remove the packages name so install packages i want to install only one package that is assume that telnet okay or else i will give the array of stuff so telnet and tree i want to install okay so what we are doing we are doing two tasks state okay that is install this is room remove right so uninstall i have given so let it be removed state so we are going to remove we cannot uh, remove the make so i will just ignore the make here we want to install the make as well okay so now what will happen absent sorry it is install installed and here it is removed okay either removed or absent will work now what it will do it takes as a two different tasks and first it is going to uninstall these packages then it is going to install these packages either i can use the state as a installed or latest okay usually we can give the uh, installed okay that would be the common way installed latest or present three options that works over here so now ansible okay maybe name is not relevant but let me check it minus minus check so first it is trying to uninstall packages in two systems at least one package could be there to uninstall that's why here it is changing even here we are uh, doing the installation okay 
so now let's uh, try to execute it so it removes few packages and it installs few packages all right so this is how we can add two tasks or in a single ansible playbook we can remove our add packages now we'll change a little bit of this one because i don't want to execute two different uh, tasks to do this one i want to do it in a single activity as a or a single task in that case we are going to use the with uh, sorry for loops so in for loop we can give the something like this so a single so i'm giving a single sorry i'm giving a single task in single task i can give the i don't give the names over here okay and state also let it be removed for this time for now then we can use it as a loops okay l o p s okay loops is the option to give the multiple values while executing your ansible playbook so here i want to change the name of the package depends upon which package i want to install and state also it could be either installed or removed then what i can do is i can give the list of the packages names over here that is git git i would like to install it okay so package package equal to git okay so i'm saying that i want to install package called git package colon uh, yeah package colon git comma setup i will give because i would like to differentiate it so setup i'm giving install okay installed sorry so i'm giving installed now what will happen so package whenever i use package it takes as a git and setup whenever i use it is used as a installed next one is i want to specify again same thing i want to do the multiple activities right so instead of git i'm going to give make make i want to install and state installed then one more i'm giving this time i don't want to install i want to remove so w get i'm removing w get while i'm removing i want to just specify it as a removed okay next thing this variable can be anything it doesn't mean that you should use the same variable it can be anything next i want to remove tree also so tree comma setup then option i'm using all options even here instead of installed i can use the latest okay so what i have done is i have specified the list of the items which i want to install or remove here you can see here i have listed listed out list of the packages which i want to install or remove at the same time here what i have done i have given that whether it should be installed or removed whether it should be installed or removed it is single quote here all right so i hope it is uh, so this, I have a question. Mm. Uh, this package and setup are the they are variables or they are predefined somewhere? No, you can give any name. These are not uh, predefined. Instead of package, I can just give the PKG also. There is no issue. Okay, whatever variable name you want to give, you can use. But all variable names must be equal, because okay. we are going to use this one in the uh, above name value so earlier we were using item right now we need to give okay so here now we need to give the package name right so usually we were giving pkg okay something like that sorry we were giving item 
so item right this is how we were giving the width items but here we have two items it doesn't know that with which item i should take under the name parameter then we can give item dot pkg nothing but take the item called pkg over here similar way here we need to specify that sorry it is not in yeah here also double double quotes flower braces item dot setup it can be anything okay even uh, instead of setup i can use the state or some uh, random variable name it can be anything but while calling over here you need to call the appropriate one so setup nothing but these all are valued for the state right either installed it's this setup is going to item that setup is going to replace with the first one whenever it take the git it replace with this one whenever it take make it replace with this one whenever it take w get it replace with this one that's how it works it's not loops it is just a loop it is loop all right so let's execute this ansible playbook ansible playbook remove packages still i haven't changed the name let it be so with check i'm doing so you can see here first what it is doing setup installed git okay setup installed get it done next one it is trying to install make but make is already there and w get also is there here it is uh, make is there in this system and here if you see uh, what i can say tree tree is not there so it's installing tree w get is there it's not installing here tree is not there it's installing so in 13 and 25 system tree is not there at this moment if you just check tree sorry it is there it is removing then so setup option nothing but it is removing so tree is there in the both the systems yes tree is there and the tree is there once i install packages it should remove the tree command then any command which installing yeah git okay git is currently it is not there in the both the systems okay here it is there both the systems it is there then what we are doing setup get why it is changing it should be okay and you just see the purpose of this example is how the values are replacing okay so clear and i'm going to execute it maybe it is installing latest packages of git that could be the stuff i might have tested the version and absent tree is removed let's check the tree now so now it is not there now it is not there okay so this is how we can use the for loop okay so this is how we can use the for loop so sorry not for loop loops so whenever you have multiple variables you want to give in your task then loops is the one of the easiest way clear any questions all right so if it is clear we are going with the conditions so we have we are going with the when condition now we have discussed just now with items and loop loop i'm going to add it so we'll go with the when condition so when condition is usually usually helps us that if target system is so and so so and so then try it out or in the target system if this is not satisfied or this is satisfied do this activity that is how you can do so usually when we use the when condition is whenever we are doing installations uh, depends upon the operating system the command may vary let's take an example that if i am installing the uh, a package on rhl kind of systems then the what i can say installation uh, the to install any packages we can use the m module but whenever it comes to the ubuntu operating system you cannot use the m module their apt get module we should use uh, so to experiment this one quickly i am going to launch one more ubuntu system so let's go to launch so this time i am going to use ubuntu system because ubuntu system uh, installation commands vary so our playbook should work with the different depends upon the operating system it should work so ubuntu server 
so i'm using devops sg devops sg okay next launch and same key pair i'm using okay so meantime what we do we are going to write a ansible playbook to work with ubuntu as well with the when condition so you can see here now our existing package itself we are going to modify that is install httpd.yml if you see here okay we are not gathering packages and we are just installing by using m module httpd and install and starting the service and the copy the file onto where www html okay this is the activity we are doing but i want to do it with the when condition nothing but in case if it is a red hat then only m module works if it is a ubuntu then the command is apt get install i will just show you let's connect our ubuntu system server session sorry to minus user sorry for ubuntu it is uh, ubuntu username is ubuntu okay if you don't know what is the username you just go here okay it is not giving instructions so huh? yeah actions connect if you give it will tell you that what is the username you can see here ssh minus i your key pair and followed by the username ubuntu but whenever you check for the rhl systems or uh, you can say amazon linux system if you give the connect it is easy to minus user all right so ubuntu i am giving okay to connect so i have connected to my ubuntu system and become a root and host name i am giving va slash etc host name ubuntu server then host name ubuntu server this is to switch uh, sorry keep it as a temporary purpose so it is a ubuntu server once you have kept it then you just need to do the again login as a root user so that you will find out the name now if i do yum install git over here it throws an error because yum yum is the not actual package in the ubuntu system we need to use apt command apt install package name so apt install git right so this is how we are going to install package and it, it is saying that git is already installed all right so now my playbook if i want to execute it on ubuntu systems as well as red hat systems then i need to identify that what is the operating system on the target system before installing packages if i just specify the m then it doesn't work let's try as it is on the uh, what i can say our existing systems it works then we are going to add our ubuntu system then i will will try then on ubuntu system it is going to fail then we'll update this file so first what i'm doing i'm just testing my ansible playbook ansible playbook minus i sorry install httpd.yml so i think already httpd is there so nothing to change so both the systems it is showing green and httpd it is trying to install anyway it is already there and copying file is already there nothing to do okay so it is starting uh, because installing uh, it is already green but starting it will still try to change it because that's how it works so it's fine now what we do we want to add this system also in our hosts file i cannot able to manage ubuntu system directly right i need to add this system to our hosts file so vi slash etc okay now what we will do we will introduce a little bit of hosts file itself i am not going to use the default hosts file i am going to create a hosts file over here that file name i am giving hosts itself okay i am giving file name itself hosts i will add the servers so what is the server name ip address ip addr so this is the one server that is red hat system and this is tomcat system right ip addr this is tomcat system sorry here right so this is tomcat system and 
IP ADDR. You can see here most of the commands works on all the operating systems. So this is Ubuntu system. But in inventory, what we can do? Yeah, go ahead. The last one, the IP address is 126. Yep, sorry, here 126, right? So and also I'm giving one dummy IP 172 dot 31 dot 39 dot hundred nothing but it doesn't exist so in what I can say in host file okay rather than giving blindly everything as an IP address we can give the groups groups nothing but you can combine list of the hosts or list of the servers into a one group so for example I want to name it as a RH sorry RHEL servers okay I want to create a group called RHL servers and I will keep these two under RHL servers. Then I want to keep it as a uh, Debian. So Debian, so Debian servers. Debian servers I'm giving even here I'm giving RHL servers. So RHL servers mean to say whenever I give RHL server rather than all, then it is going to take up this one. Whenever I give Debian servers instead of all, then it is going to take up. So like this, we can group of list of the hosts in the our in our inventory file. OK, we can group up list of the hosts in our inventory file. So these names can be anything. It's whatever you want to give. You can give. Usually we will give like this. OK, web servers. And uh, application servers or database servers something like this okay app servers i'm giving so let it be relevant name now what i want to do i have given it as a host file and also i need to enable passwordless authentication right for that i need to do some changes on ubuntu system that is we should create a user right user add ans admin and password of ans admin okay abc is one two three i don't know what password i have given but abc one two three i'm giving and uh, in ubuntu whenever you create a user it doesn't create a <coughs> sorry it doesn't create a home directory for that user so if i go to slash home okay see here there is no home directory for ans admin user so ch user mod to create a home directory there is a command minus d directory so user mod minus d what is the directory name slash home slash ans admin and the username why no change i think this directory is not there mkdir i'm creating a directory and try it okay other way is we just give this as a ownership we just created this one right if i do i have a home directory i will give ownership of this home directory to the ans admin so he can able to take up so ch one minus r recursively owner and group of the ans admin slash home slash ans admin directory so now if i do ls minus l of course it is owned by the ans admin user and if i switch to sudo minus ans admin i should go to my slash home ans admin okay so that's how we can do anyway now what i can do i need to copy ssh keys right before that we need to add this ans admin user to the sudo's file these all steps we have done for all the client systems here so vi sudo so here i'm going to give the ans admin ans admin so we need to give the okay all is equal to all not this one we need to give the no password actually way so i'm going to give slash etc sudo's file so this is the one we need to give all is equal to all no password all so that it don't ask for the password for ans admin oops sorry it is open in the nano way so control o to write out you can see here to write out control o control o 
and enter and control x okay to exit control x right here you can see control x that's it and one last thing is vi slash etc ssh sshd underscore config here we need to update password authentication value to no to yes that's it so i have set up my ubuntu system service sshd reload okay everything is fine now what i am going to do i will copy my ans admin keys onto this system so ssh minus copy minus id and ubuntu system yes i would like to connect ans admin sorry password is abc123 right abc123 i have given target server password i need to give because as a ans admin i am logging on to this system so you can see here number of keys copied one key key has been copied onto this system now if i do ssh just ip address i should be able to log into ubuntu system okay i have logged in means now my ubuntu system also a client to my system clear now we have set up everything we have hosts file where we have mentioned our target system and our target system is allowing the passwordless authentication to log in from my ansible system now let's execute same playbook on the all the systems whatever is there now it should execute on the web systems because these two are rhl it won't execute on this system because it is not a rhl system so let's see what will happen ansible playbook okay and i am not giving any value so it is just going to sorry minus i right minus i hosts or else i can give the full path if i give hosts in the same location it is going to check for the host slash home ans admin playbooks hosts right so i am just giving the full path and minus minus check if i do we'll see the error so you can see here it could not able to okay gather facts and spill facts it could not able to gather on 170 126 okay sorry installing http yeah so you can see here installing packages this is the playbook what it is doing installing httpd it could not able to install on httpd on the 126 because it could not able to find what is the module but in remaining two systems it is successful whenever any task is failed it stops on that particular point of time and whatever is success it is proceed with the remaining all tasks only on this so in this system in the first task it is failed so it doesn't stop your ansible playbook these two systems it is successful right so it is executing further tasks on those systems that's how it works but my case is irrespective of whatever uh, uh, operating system flavor it is i want to execute this ansible playbook if that is the case we need to twinkle our ansible playbook according to that now if you do remember we have the setup module right so let's execute our setup module ansible minus i inventory file hosts in our current location there is a hosts file my all minus m ping sorry setup so what does it do it is going to gather setup um, nothing but gather all the gather facts from the all the systems which are there which are there in the hosts file okay so it gathered it could not able to connect to this system i just would like to show okay which system is this if i see the ip address i may identify it this is it is giving 4.2 amazon anyway everything it is giving same yeah you can see here ansible os family debian what is the ansible host name node name is ubuntu server so in ubuntu server ansible os family is debian because ubuntu is a debian operating system flavor okay how we have rhl similar way we have debian okay so 
this is debian packages so we need to give the ansible os family to debian okay just we need to copy this one i will tell you where we are going to use it so i'm just removing it so ansible os family is debian and also similar way if i go up to the other system so this is ubuntu system 126 and i'm checking for other system so other system you can see here ansible os family red hat is there okay so i'm just copying this as well next if i go to little bit above we have collected two systems information so this is 215 nothing but red hat system and one more system is there and uh, you can see here this is a tomcat server and on tomcat server also os family is red hat so os family is red hat nothing to change so now what does it mean whenever i use m module it is going to install on this one whenever i use uh, another module to install on debian i mean to say i cannot use m module now what is the module to install on debian packages you can just go and search for okay ansible sorry module to install on debian or you can search for ubuntu why because ubuntu also a debian package right sorry debian operating system so you can see a module apt there is a module called apt to install packages on the debian operating system nothing but whenever it is a ubuntu operating system i can use the debian as a uh, what i can say package and also there is one more thing if you want to install http on debian we should not use the https we should give the apache 2 we should use the apache 2 as a package name and state present are installed we can give but starting the services and copying everything would be same now what i can do i can modify my ansible playbook little bit so vi install httpd dot yml so with the current tasks what does it do it is going to install only on the red hat uh, operating system but i want to install on debian also now name i can give install http d on ubuntu okay install http d on ubuntu and install http d on red hat okay so this is one next apt name so to install uh, httpd on ubuntu the package name is apache 2 right so this is the one and state is installed okay so this is how we can add once it is installed http apache 2 then it is going to start the service but uh, to start the service also there is a change sorry so to start the service name start apache services on ubuntu okay so next to, to start the service module is same service but name is name is apache 2 state starter okay so now what we are doing is just i will run through with what i am doing uh, what we are doing first it is going to install the m module through the m module it is going to install the httpd and uh, what i can say httpd it is going to install once it is installed httpd it is going to start the httpd services and copy the whatever file we have in our current location that file it is going to copy into where www.html okay and similar way this is to uh, what i can say install apache and ubuntu system and it start the services okay so this is how it works now if i save this file and if i execute does this playbook work as expected or not can somebody tell me does it install httpd on red hat and does it install apache on ubuntu 
is it going to happen no why uh, maybe no condition uh, to figure out like which uh, uh, which service is to be installed on which system yes that's where the problem comes if you do remember we have discussed that ansible work on a sequential format first thing what it will do it is trying to install httpd on the red hat of course on red hat systems it is successful this particular task whenever it executes on ubuntu system it fails right so it stops the ubuntu system to execute the further tasks now it comes to this one by this time already ubuntu system is eliminated now this task it is trying to install execute on the red hat systems and red hat systems there is no apt now red hat systems also fail so by coming over here the uh, playbook get stops and it says that no uh, further to execute because all systems failed that is what it is going to happen so to figure out this one we need to use the when condition nothing but use the m module when it is a red hat use the apt module when it is a ubuntu all right but before doing the when condition let's try to execute this ansible playbook ansible playbook httpd what is the pack file name ansible playbook install httpd okay minus minus check but i need to give my inventory file name right because explicitly we have specified in our own hosts file and let's see what will happen you can see here first thing what will happen installing httpd on red hat of course on red hat systems it is successful it failed on ubuntu system and it stops executing the further tasks on these two systems anyway this system is unreachable here itself it stopped now it went to the install the httpd on ubuntu in ubuntu system it tried to install by using apt on these two systems so it's failed so in the task two it's the first and second task itself all the systems failed so there is no successful systems okay if any one of the system is successful with these tasks then it will go further okay so to overcome this one i want to execute only specific tasks on specific systems that is where when condition comes into the picture okay now install httpd and uh, that is where we have we are using right so gathering facts is necessary by this time if i don't use the gathering facts you can see the error what error it is going to happen so let it be first we'll comment it out gathering facts here i want to use the when condition so when should start over here okay so when what is what i want to do red hat sorry ansible os family we have collected that information right when ansible os family is red hat then execute this one execute this one okay here it is may not necessary but for red hat you just mention but uh, this is how we can define or in double quotes also it's fine similar way here i want to execute only when ansible os family is debian okay when ansible os family is debian similar way to start the services also here also apache services runs only on uh, ansible sorry debian uh, system so here i have i need to give the debian and next here i need to give when and i can give the ansible family okay i'm just giving different ways even you can specify in course as well i hope if it is failing we'll come and test and copy is same for the both the systems there is no problem with the copy we are just copying our index.html file onto the var www.html okay this is how we can give the conditions now let's execute with check so check there is a typo sorry not quotes it is equal so it should be equal okay sorry it is double equal here so equal nothing but it try to assign the value double equal to red hat yeah so double equal to space double equal to debian nothing but when that value is a uh, 
what i can say similar to or sorry when that value matches to this one then do this one so we need to use double equal to if i give only equal nothing but we are assigning the variable such kind of thing it comes okay so now let's try it okay double equal to where it is throwing error so i think we should not specify in the double quotes over here okay so it looks fine now let's try to execute it so it is gathering facts this time and you can see here first one is successful on the three systems nothing but anyway it is going to skip and second thing you can see here second one you can see here in these two systems it is going to sorry first thing is gathering facts right so gathering facts it is gathering facts on these three systems and the task installing httpd on red hat it, you can see here 126 system it is skipping why because it is not uh what you can say complaints with the are not satisfying with the when condition so it is skipping over here and it's executing on these two systems and if you see here it is satisfying these two and values must be absent installed maybe i just given the installed or present or latest i might have given so i will update it and here this task is skipping because you cannot start the apache system by using the sorry you cannot start the red hat system by using the apache command here it is starting and doing so let me correct our ansible playbook state is it is not installed present okay with the uh, apt module there is no installed so we just give the present let me execute one more time this time it should work on three systems so gathering facts is fine and it is skipping on the first system here it is installing on the ubuntu and starting the services and copying the file onto target system all right so this is how we can do now what i will do i'm going to execute this ansible playbook at this moment I cannot access my Ubuntu system from the browser. Once the application installation is successful, I could able to install it from the browser on port number 8080. Sorry, not 8080, it is 80. Okay, currently it won't work. Uh, so what I will do, I will test it once I have installed. So just execute it. So if I go and check it out, my target system, Okay, there was no HTTP or where dub 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 HTML default one is there. We are going to replace this one with the new one. Now. Cat index dot HTML. So it is still referring to the default one. So starting the services. Okay, copying. Okay, copy is done. Let me see whether it's updated our file or not. Okay, yeah. So it was the default one. Now it has been updated. And if I go and check for our server, not this one, this is the server, right? So I'm giving the server IP address in the browser. We should be able to access it. Okay, so on Ubuntu server also, we have installed the packages. So this is how we can uh what i can say use the when condition is it clear any questions and uh, you can see here on each system it's executing only four one how many tasks we have one task two three four five tasks right five tasks are there five and gather facts one is there so total six tasks out of six it is executing only four tasks on each system because here it is skipping one and here it is skipping one here okay that's how it works any questions now what we are doing is we are just installing httpd packages on the target system okay and uh, starting the services let's take an example that you you have a already a production environment where you have already installed httpd and uh, a application is serving whenever you are uh, client system already serving an application and uh, 
what i can say starting again services is not a good habit nothing but already services are running why do you need to start already httpd is installed why do you need to test it out again okay maybe while trying it again it may not install it but uh, while it is starting the services of course it may restart your services okay if it is a production system restarting services or uh, starting again the services may disturb your production environment to overcome this problem we need to do some checks nothing but if we are installing httpd first time if we are installing httpd first time then only you can start the services if it is already installed then don't start the services if we are changing anything in the configuration files then you need to restart it not the sorry not restart reload it not uh, start the services okay so you understand right whenever you are installing first time then only you need to start the services once it is installed the services might be up and running either you just need to reload the services or restart the services right okay so that is where we can use a condition called uh, notify condition okay so next topic is notify and handler right so in notify and handler yeah so in notify and handler what we do if the above task is executed then only execute the below task if above task is executed then only execute below task if above task is not executed then don't execute the below task that's how you can uh, tell to your client systems okay so i will demonstrate this example so that you can understand clearly how the notify and handler does work so let's execute edit this file again va install.httpd okay before editing uh, what i will do i will just give the gather facts no and we'll see what will happen i'm giving gather facts no so whenever you give the gather facts no it cannot able to retrieve this when condition value okay and uh, it is going to fail same playbook it was successful earlier and if i execute the same playbook now with check okay it is going to fail why because it could not able to gather the condition you can see here the conditional check ansible os family red hat failed the error was error while evaluating the condition ansible os family red hat so on so so on so is undefined undefined nothing but i don't know where you have specified the ansible os family okay that's why gather facts is the important one whenever you are doing the installations okay so next i'm setting it back to gather facts to yes by commenting it out and then for comments there is no alignment no need to do next what i want to do is i want to start my services okay i want to start my httpd services when i install the httpd when i install the httpd in that case what we can do we are going to use a option called notify okay so what will do the notify whenever this particular task is changing something then only this notify will take your input okay notify start httpd services okay so now what does it mean that whenever you are going to install httpd then only start the services otherwise don't start the httpd services at the same time notify is going to okay so notify is going to use the handler option okay handlers let me write the playbook then we'll talk about this one so so what i am doing is i am starting the apache 2 services and here also name start httpd services okay okay so this is how you need to do and one last thing is i'm just copying this one onto here i will tell you why i am copying also cancel so so i just modified my playbook 
what I have done is yeah so what I have done is you can just check this installing httpd and red hat we are installing the httpd and red hat whenever it is os family is red hat then only you can do okay let's avoid the confusion what we can do uh, just to save this file and the cp install httpd apache.yml i am giving so this is the backup of current file now vi so to avoid when condition i am removing so that we are going to install it only on red hat systems okay when condition okay yeah now you can see this playbook so what tasks we are doing we are executing three tasks first task is we are trying to install http till here but whenever you are installing httpd if httpd is already is there the services might be already running right there is no point of starting the services okay if you don't specify notify what it will do it is going to execute all these three steps all these three steps but whenever you execute notify or specify notify what does it do this handler will take up only this task is successful this task is successful or this task is changing something then only your handler will take up if this task is not changing anything your handler doesn't touch your system at all your handler doesn't touch this task at all okay so that's where we need to give the notify and uh, you need to give the handler and handler task become all these should be in the same alignment because these two all these all are belongs to the same level you can see here handler where i started it is started from where the name or hosts are defined and this is handlers okay not handler it is handlers and one more important thing is this name value is there right this name value and this notify value both should be same you can see here both should be same you can see here start httpd services and start httpd services so it looks for this particular notify value as a name otherwise it cannot able to take it up and uh, it start the httpd services okay so let's save this file okay now cat install dot httpd sorry now can somebody tell me how many tasks it is going to execute at this moment hold on let me rephrase my question does it going to execute this task or not if i execute on only our hl systems no no right no yes that's true it is not going to execute this task why because httpd is already installed so nothing to do with this one so if there is no change this notify is not going to send the instruction to your handler so it just execute again copy and it skips now let's execute our playbook ansible playbook minus i hosts okay this time i want to execute only on rhl servers right so in rhl servers we have given group name as a web servers so like this you can give your group name so web servers if i give in this particular hosts file it go and check for the web servers group if that group is exist it is going to execute on that playbook so now install httpd okay minus minus check limit we can give sorry so what we can do we can limit on this particular system to uh, only web groups so if i give like this it is going to execute our ansible playbook on the all the systems but i don't want to execute on the ubuntu system i think there is a typo in the playbook let's correct that first so while copying okay there is one space is missing over here okay so now let's execute anyway it is trying to execute on three systems even with ubuntu as well so it is going to fail in the third task okay so it is trying to do on the ubuntu system anyway ubuntu system it is failing now i don't want to execute on ubuntu system then what i can do minus minus limit minus minus limit 
web group okay minus minus limit web group we can give sorry web servers right web servers minus minus check now what does it do it is going to execute only on the web servers group which is there in the hosts file now let's execute and you can see here it is trying to gather facts only on the two systems because on that particular group only these two systems are there and you can see here what and all tasks it is executing first it is executing gather facts then it is common because we have given gather facts now then what it is doing it is trying to install httpd on red hat but you can see here it's just given okay then there is no what i can say task as a start the services why because this is okay this is not changed then it is not going to execute the start the httpd services it's just going to copy the uh, index.html file and it escapes and the total you can see here three tasks out of three one is gather packs another one is installing httpd next one is copy so that is the advantage of using notify okay so now again i'm going to do little bit of changes to this one so this time what i want to do sorry let it be what we can do on target system i'm going to remove the httpd so whenever we remove the httpd it should uh, install the httpd and start the services and we can see the four packages it should run so to remove the httpd i'm going to use a remove packages no i will create a new one vi remove httpd dot yml so minus 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 name remove packages hosts all become true gather facts we, we may not need gather facts no tasks minus name remove http packages okay next m name httpd i'm going to gather facts it because i will write for ubuntu as well so state abac and t absent similar way i'm writing it for name ubuntu as well remove aps apache 2 packages apt name apache 2 state absent next when condition we should give right when okay an ansible os family double equal to debian all right so just copy this one and also when and splois from this red hat okay it should be same red hat h should be caps you should not give rhl see here red hat okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to execute this only on mm -hmm. web group sorry web servers ansible playbook minus i hosts remove httpd minus minus limit web servers okay it should remove on only two systems there is a typo so name yeah apt should starts from here okay so we are removing the packages on the system so gathering facts is fine and it removed on the two systems now let's execute our ansible playbook to check the our install httpd.yml to check that it should execute that this time the services also should start right so let's see ansible playbook minus i hosts 
install httpd minus minus limit web servers let's execute and we'll see what will happen you can see here first it is installing the httpd packages okay why it is not installed okay we haven't removed we just did check right sorry here so we haven't removed it we just did the check now let's remove it packages first i'm removing the packages so remove httpd packages and also we need to stop the services so that it would be graceful otherwise it won't be graceful now httpd yum list installed grep httpd okay that is how we can test check it out but these are not actual files okay even i can do the one more package should get installed over here so there is no actual one now whenever we install it it is going to install the httpd so now i'm installing packages you can see here ansible playbook minus i hosts installed httpd limit web servers now let's execute and you can see here it has been changed it has been changed and uh, you can see here copy is done now running handler why it is running handler because this has been changed if it is not changed i don't consider the running handlers it is changed that's the reason i am doing handlers and if i check this time you can see one more package you can see here this was not there earlier it's installed now even over here also earlier three packages now it is fourth package right so this is how we can use the handlers is it clear okay so all these playbooks i am going to update in our uh, github repository so that you can refer to this one so let's use our git now quickly git status sorry git it is there right no it's not there yum install git sudo yum install git okay how to manage our local system because even git is necessary in my ansible control node also then what i can do i can give the my host name in the uh, host what i can say hosts file here i can give ip addr okay this ip address i can give to the hosts file and i can manage or else we can just give the local host also so local host means it takes the our own local system and we need to copy our ansible keys to local host ansible sorry ans admin keys so for that ssh copy id okay local host right yes i want to copy abc1235 i am not running the password yes it's copied now now i can manage my own system with the ansible playbook so what i can do install packages right here i can update that only install the git okay git and we have given all over here and we can change it to just to local host also okay here also we can change our web servers web servers if i give it is going to install only on web servers rather than specifying the limit while executing our command so ansible playbook install packages minus minus limit local host and connection local like this we have different options i will discuss all this stuff later but for now we are going to install on our own system that is git packages i want to install so that i can push my changes to our github repository git status okay so it is not a git repository i am going to initiate it as a git repository git init git status okay these packages are there git add dot clear git commit minus m 
I think it asks for user and password username. So git config minus minus global user dot name yar shankar git config minus minus global user dot email okay now git commit minus m ansible playbooks so i'm going to create a repository on the target system and we'll add that one so github.com slash revdy now i'm going to create a new repository do i have ansible repository yes i have a ansible repository okay few files are there but you can just ignore i'm going to upload new so i'm going to use the same repository so to use same repository i need to use the git remote add okay git remote add is a command to add the remote repository so i'm adding this one as a remote repository oh there is a problem because i need to copy all this stuff into local system again so let me remove it i don't need this repository anymore it's almost one and a half year before i think delete this repository revd ansible okay i have deleted and i will create a new repository with the same name okay let me create it as a ansible it is a public repository and you can see here to add the remote repository get remote add okay i missed origin i should do that one so git remote add origin git status git push origin master okay my username revdy okay i have pushed my changes you can refer to ansible repository in my github account so this is how even we do activities in the real time to push our changes onto the remote repository as a devops engineer okay so use this one and uh, you can play with this one and you should create your own playbooks i'm going to check it out and we'll give the assignment and in next class we are going to uh, see the error handling and variables and then we'll set up a jenkins server by using ansible nothing but either we can provision a server and install jenkins or a fresh system we can set up as a jenkins server that we are going to see in the next class so that's all for today if you have any questions you can ask me hello everyone good morning and good evening today we are going to cover the concepts what i'm showing right now over here so first we'll discuss about ansible variables if time permits we are going to discuss about ansible vault okay uh, in ansible vault we are going to see ansible vault introduction and uh, using ansible with git this is what we are going to do and uh, additional concepts converting a shell script into a playbook okay this i'm going to show you how we can do that one and gather facts we already discussed about it how the gather facts does use with when condition in our last class error handling yet to discuss and tags so these are the com concepts we left out so first let's discuss about ansible variables so i hope everybody knows about what is mean by variables we can have a variable value sorry variable name and variable have value instead of using value directly in our program or in our application we can use variable so you can change your value of that variable whenever it is necessary let's take an example that in your program you are installing version 1 at this moment maybe after few days it it is going to change it as a version 2 so rather than updating your program directly version 1 to version 2 you can use a variable called version in your program and you can assign a value to the version while executing your program okay let's take that i'm executing my uh, 
program as a version one at this moment by passing variables from external source i mean to say while running your program version is equal to one now i need not to alter my application i mean to say i need not to alter or change my application according to the what version i am executing later point of time again i want to change the version to version uh, version 2 then again i can run it as a version 2 value while running my application so these are the advantages of using variables and it is quite common in in any programming language so it give the more flexibility and uh, yeah more flexibility and uh, efficient way of utilizing your application if you are using your va uh, variables so same thing is going to happen over here so we'll take some examples uh, once we understand how the variables works and then we can use it but before discussing about examples let's see how many ways we can define variables in our ansible playbook there is hell lot of i mean sorry there is lot of ways we can define our variables in our ansible playbook i am just showing few ways which we can use in the real world in most of the cases so define within the playbook this is one way we are going to do in our real world so we define ansible variables within the playbook but this is again not a good practice next passing from external files yes this is the one more efficiently used way so we keep all variables in one external file and we pass variables to the uh, our ansible playbook because we are writing ansible playbooks over here next passing from the host inventory so we are creating inventory file right in inventory file also we can define the variables but that is again not a recommended way next to passing while running ansible playbook so this is sorry this is another way to pass variables while running our ansible playbook we can pass variables uh, if you do remember in a previous class we have passed a uh, host value i mean to say inventory information either group or a node we have passed by using minus minus limit okay similar way we can pass variables while running our ansible playbook next using group pairs and host pairs and so on so this is one of the uh, what i can say advanced level way but i want to show you how we can use group pairs and host pairs okay it is quite important concept and uh, in real world uh, whenever we use roles this is the way we are going to use it uh, uh, alternatively compensate the way of using the uh, passing from external files okay so these are the some of the important ways of passing variables apart from this we have different various ways to pass variables i will just show you so if you search for ansible variables In the documentation they have given the how we can use variables and also variables preferences i could see some yeah you can see here variable preferences where should i put a variable okay you can see here around 22 ways you can use your variables command line values nothing but while executing your ansible playbook you can give this is one of the way and role defaults inventory file or scripted group wares inventory group wares playbook wares so these are the different ways hosts fact hosts facts and play wares play wares prompt like this we have different ways to do that one and uh, the efficient way we are going to see anyway so these are the different ways you can define your ansible playbook you can choose um, any one of these any one among these to define your variables but in our case let's start with simple i have already logged into my ansible control node over here and these all are my ansible managed systems this is rhl server and this is tomcat server and this is ubuntu server okay these three are the managed nodes now 
we are going to our ANS admin home directory and clear the screen sorry clear the screen ls we have a directory called playbook here we are going to write our ansible playbooks so let's create a file called vi user okay let me take the create user file itself okay so create user file is there and if you see in this file we are creating a user called sonia while executing this ansible playbook it is quite simple ansible playbook okay but assume that when do we use uh, creating a user playbook in the real world usually whenever a new guy joining in our team or in the respective team where these managed systems are managed by that particular user let's take an example that sonia is joining in our company and she want to manage all these client systems whenever she want to manage she has to she has to log into these systems by using her user id so we are creating a user id called sonia but after a few days one more guy joined again we need to create other user so assume that this playbook is a simple task a single task so i mentioned directly a username if you want to specify this username in 10 different locations maybe we are creating a customized home directory and we are giving a or editing sudo's file or granting access to some other uh, directories all this stuff you want to do through this ansible playbook so changing in the different locations uh, uh, sorry change updating this playbook with the same user in the different locations may may not be the quite good way whenever you want to execute it that is where we can use and roles so sorry variables now uh, just to demonstrate i'm going to add one more task that is name grant access to i'm going to i'm going to create a directory so to create a directory name create a directory so i'm creating a directory by using file module and name sorry path where do you want to create i want to create under opt and the directory name is dir1 next state state this is directory right so directory and uh, owner i want to give it to the sonia and group sonia okay so or else i'm going to create a sonia temp dir okay sonia temp dir i am creating like this for every user i need to create a temporary directory under opt okay so let's and uh, mode 0755 and just giving a mode and save this file and ansible before executing let me go and check whether sonia user is exist or not cat slash etc of course this user should exist and if you go and check under opt she doesn't have any directory at this moment same thing over here cat slash etc password and sonia user is there but under opt she doesn't have any directory same thing is applicable over here i think here user itself is not there slash etc password because we have created it recently so there is no user sonia here it is going to create a user sonia under opt it is going to create a directory as well so this is the that is what we want just i will just show you one more time create user dot oml so we are creating a user called sonia now let's execute this ansible playbook minus i hosts okay then ansible playbook name create user dot yml okay and we are creating user so we need the 
become true option if you are not passing become true over here you can give minus b over here while executing your ansible playbook we have executed with minus b option while executing our adac commands right similar way we can give minus d option but anyway root privileges are there let's execute this playbook now ansible playbook minus i host okay so it is going to create in our local system as well why because we have used local host as well yeah you can see here we have used local host also in our hosts file right so in our local system also this is my my local system right so if i see password sonia user created and now if i check a directory got created under sorry sorry opt you can see here sonia temp directory even here as well even here as well sonia temp directory is there as well as here as well okay in every locations it's created a sonia user now let's take an example that i'm switching back to my previous directory for that you can use cd minus that is the option you will switch back to your previous directory i came back to my playbooks now assume that now one more user came and joined in my company now i would like to create his user you can see here one two three four locations i need to change even five locations i need to change the username it is quite difficult right so now assume that modi is going to join in my team so rather than changing this one i, I can give a simple way that is instead of here instead of a uh, specifying name i will just specify name as a sorry variable the variable name is a user i'm giving variable name as a user or username i can give username don't give user minus name okay this doesn't a valid variable name you should not use minus in our variable variable name so you just use username so everywhere instead of directly giving the name i'm going to use the user underscore name okay variable name can be anything user underscore name and here also user underscore name Something is not required. Huh? Dollar or anything is not. Required. No, no, no. I will, I will tell you. Okay. So now we have replaced it with the user minus name. But now we need to specify the uh, username, right? Where we need to specify. That is where you can go here header. Under header, you can define your variables. Okay. So vars you can give. Vars is there. One more header and variable name is you can specify it as a user underscore name is equal to modi okay something like this you can specify all right but if you do remember whenever we are replacing the variable name with value you cannot directly give the variable name right usually in cell script we give dollar in cell script we give dollar but in ansible we are going to give flower braces in ansible we are going to give flower braces okay whenever you give flower braces it is it treats it as a variable even if you do remember while using the items we have specified the same thing because even items also going to use with items whenever we were using we have used a variable called item even item also is going to do that one and i told you right whenever you are specifying it as a uh, variable you need to specify under quotes double quotes right but in this case it is optional okay in this case it is optional why because if it is next to your semicolon then it is mandatory why because it treats like this it is there then it is treats this two as a some different special character and it could not recognize this as a variable that's the reason if you are using this one in front of this colon then you must specify in the colons sorry double quotes otherwise it is not necessary in this case of course we need to specify this one in the double quotes otherwise it creates a problem so i am creating in double quotes variable next here as well and here again it is optional double quotes 
but it is up to you whether you want to use it or not we want i want to show you in the both the cases how does it work here it is mandatory and this space is uh, i'm just giving for my reference okay it looks good and moreover this space is not mandatory after double quote sorry flower braces the username we are giving right so it is not again mandatory i'm just going to show you all the different ways here i haven't specified case spaces here i have specified spaces here i mention in double quotes here i didn't mention in double quotes okay so we are trying trying everything and you can see here user underscore name is equal to modi but let me check whether the defin definition is correct or not here you can see here yeah where's it's not equal to colon it's not equal to colon so it is not equal to it is colon right so we have specified user colon this one should come here more, more sorry modi now this should create a user called modi in the all the systems as well as a directory under opt let's check this one before executing hosts create user right minus minus check okay there is typo so name creating user where should starts from here okay because username is not a valid information that's the reason not a valid header that is the reason it is throwing error now let's try okay it is creating you can see here just to check it out it has been creating user mode now it has been updated if you see previous one it could be user creating user sonia because that was hard coded now we are not we haven't hard coded it now let's execute this playbook okay so we don't have any directory called modi and uh, in few servers modi user is exist in few servers modi user doesn't exist you can see here in local host it's created as well as on ubuntu system it's created but not in the other systems but creating directory it created in the all the systems now if i check here minus ls minus l slash opt now you can see here a directory called modi underscore temp has been created and also earlier there was no modi user so after sonia modi user got created same thing over here okay one more directory for modi here as well one more directory called modi one more directory for modi here as well and here user also should create okay so user also got created this is how we can define variables in our ansible playbook okay so this is about the first condition how we can define our variables within the file but assume that now one more user getting create is going to join in my company so if i want to create his user comparatively previous uh, what i can say way of executing your playbook this one is good or a sorry this one is good so assume that a new guy called rahul is going to join in my uh, company and he want to manage the same uh, how modi and sonia is doing so i am doing rahul so i can replace it okay this is one way but i'm i don't want to change over here okay every time whenever uh, a new user is joining i don't want to change my create user ansible playbook because while editing it may create unnecessary problems uh, because my l1 guy uh, may change this file or uh, may change the syntax so if it is changed it creates a unnecessary problem so if that is the case then we can pass variables from the external files nothing but we can create a file called vi user start yml you can give any name it's not a mandatory and you, it doesn't mean that you must give yml but you can specify like uh, your username over here by specifying external file va user dot yml i'm giving 
and you may give username dot yml or just username it's up to you and here we can specify the variable name so variable name is user user underscore name so username we are giving what is the username here we need to specify the equal to so r a h u l we are giving username equal to rahul now let's save this file and just check the username so username is equal to rahul and uh, i just need to edit my file name that for variables please go and look for the user.yml file that is what you need to specify so va so now we are not using bars i'm just commenting it out because we don't want to pass variables from here so i want to specify the variables file from external sorry variable file is available outside of this playbook for that you need to use a again one more parameter called vars underscore files okay vars underscore files is the this is the what i can say keyword you need not to, you should not change it you should specify like this only then the file name is i need to specify user.yml right if it is in some other location you need to give the full path like slash home ans admin slash playbooks slash user.yml okay this is how you need to specify your variable now whenever it requires a variable it go and check in the variables files which you specified over here okay let's save this file okay so just i'm just checking whether path i have given correct or not our user file should display okay it's good and let's execute our ansible playbook this time it should create user called rahul rahul we haven't created yet so ansible playbook minus i check sorry hosts create user.oml then check it it is taking this value but it is okay i think i should give colon rather than equal okay user dot name so let's try it you can see here i am giving my username from external source and it has taken over here here also it is displaying sorry yeah creating user rahul creating user rahul and it is going to create a so it is going to create a user called rahul now let's go and check in our systems if i go and check the directory over here sorry okay we haven't executed it actually right so let's go without check okay it is creating user and if i go and check it on my system ls you can see here a directory called rahul temp directory has been created and if i check the password sorry password file you can see a user called rahul okay same case over here ls minus l you can see a directory called rahul got created even here as well all right so this is how we can pass variables from the external source okay i will explain it again we have seen using variables by passing it from the file itself directly so here we could see that we are passing it from here another way is from the external file so by using var files apart from this we can pass our variables from our command itself while executing our command okay let me clear the screen and uh, we have executed this ansible playbook right so from this ansible playbook we can sorry from this command we can pass our variables while if you want to pass your variables while executing ansible playbook itself we can use a option called minus minus extra vars okay extra vars is a uh, variable sorry value which you need to specify while if you want to pass your variables through the ansible command line now our variable name is user underscore name right so if i give user underscore name is equal to priyanka now we are creating a user called priyanka so if i pass this one okay even though uh, our 
variable file have a user called Rahul whenever you pass any variable from your command line this will have the highest priority okay not only variables anything if you are passing from this particular uh, playbook while executing your ansible playbook if you pass it as a runtime variables runtime variables have the highest priority so it overrides with the all the values which you mentioned in your ansible playbooks now we'll check with the minus minus check option you can see here even though the file contains the rahul value it replaced with the creating user with the priyanka and it is creating on the four systems user called priyanka and also creating directory on the four systems so now we'll execute it by without check option all right so this is how we can create users by using ansible playbook by using variables now you can see here priyanka directory is there and if i check the password file priyanka user is there same thing over here you have a directory called priyanka over here and if i check for password file you can still see the password sorry user called priyanka same over here right so this is how we can use variables now we have seen three types we are going to see two more types that is providing variables from the hosts file and also from group wares that we are going to discuss in later classes shankar can we pass multiple variables uh, using command line yes we can do that one we just need to give comma and uh, one more variable name okay like uh, then why this method is not most common method used to pass one? this one like just using command line it, this seems more easy and yeah it, it is easy but assume that while you are executing your ansible playbook you don't know which variable you need to pass right you, if you have a proper readme file then it's good otherwise i don't know i just usually i I'm tempted to executing like this, but this is expecting some variables. Uh, we are using one variable that that fine that's fine, but while executing uh, actual playbooks, we are passing 10 to 20 variables. Maybe it may grow, um, keep on growing depends upon your Ansible playbook. So passing yeah. all those variables through the command line is not a good idea, and you do uh, mistakes. That's the reason usually we we use the external file kind of thing here We are going to pass all the variables so that it would be easy. We will ask them that okay if you don't take change the uh, Variables it is going to take these default values That's how it would be So that's all about uh, variables for now again We are going to use while you we are using roles and uh, we had to discuss about our hosts or inventory file during that time also again we are going to use where where's now we'll we'll do one more ansible playbook that is uh, if you do remember we have set up a tomcat server right and the tomcat server setup instructions are already there in our github repository so devops demos if you go here and uh, tomcat yeah so tomcat installation this is the procedure we followed while installing our tomcat if you do remember we have created an ec2 instance with java and then we have downloaded this okay then we have changed the permission this all stuff we haven't done but uh, this is to startup.sh right so starting this one and create a linked file to create a link file if you create what we can do we can start up or stop the service once this is done we can access our uh, tomcat from the browser this is the checkpoint okay so these i would like to convert into the ansible playbook simple thing i'm just explaining one more time we need to download the apache tomcat packages okay then give the execution permission on the startup.sh and shutdown.sh file then create a linked file and then start the services this is what we are doing okay now we would like to convert this one into a ansible playbook 
let's write that one so vi tomcat setup dot yml i am giving okay setup dot yml instead of writing here i am going to write it over here file new okay so it is going to starts with the three minuses next minus name playbook book playbook to install apache tomcat okay next hosts i'm just giving web servers why i am giving web servers here we can give the uh server details okay whether if you specify all it is going to install on all systems if you specify web servers group it is going to do on only web servers group if i specify it on the uh, what i can say only server name it is going to do or execute only on that server name so now we are going to use the group name over here because i don't want to install on all the systems usually apache is a web web application right so i want to install only on web servers next become true and uh, i'm not going to maybe yeah gather facts even though you don't specify it is yes but it is best practice to specify so gather facts then we are going to tasks all right so we are giving a first task as a name first what we are doing sorry let's run with this one first thing is we are downloading the package okay where we are downloading under opt right so to download a package we we have a module called let me close all this okay just check for ansible module to download to download packages there is a module called get url so get url is a option to download packages it's like a wget it's like a wget we can use the get uh, get url and if you scroll down you can see here get url it is going to download the foo.count okay this is the url you should provide and the destination where do you want to copy and mode nothing but what is the permission you would like to give so this is how you can do so even i want to download the packages from our github repository sorry from our tomcat server so i will go and take the url download tomcat and it takes us to the tomcat.apache.org so tomcat 8 is a stable version that's the reason we are using it and you can see here core 8.5.56 so we are using tar.gz okay or even zip also we can use so right click copy link address now let's go to again our playbook name downloading tomcat packages then get url right get url is the module and uh, url i think url sorry sorry i need to copy it again so copy link address and paste it so we have we are copying the url now get url yeah url next test so nothing but destination where do you want to copy i want to copy it onto slash opt then mode i want to give the permission as a 0755 that's it so we have given the what i can say we have downloaded packages once it is downloaded we need to extract it right because it is a tar.gz tar.gz we need to extract it okay to extract we have one more module in ansible okay so extract packages we have a module called archive i will just show you again ansible module to untar packages okay you can see here anarcho is the 
module which we can use to un untap the packages and you can see here an archive source nothing but where is your file is there destination where do you want to uh, what i can say X <clears throat> where where do you want to extract it and one more thing is remote src so remote src is the option if you don't specify remote src what will happen this anarchive file looks for the file in the ansible server itself ansible server itself but we are downloading packages onto the client systems this particular get url is going to download the packages under the uh, managed servers okay not uh, sorry not yeah managed servers not under the control server so we need to specify the uh, remote source to s so that it will check for this particular package on the remote system otherwise it checks in the ansible master node itself so let's take this module on our cave on our cave is the module next src src is it is downloading under opt right so slash opt slash after downloading the file name only this one right we have only this file name so i am going to change it to this file name next thing destination where do you want to keep it after extracting i just want to keep it under slash opt itself i don't want to change the directory and the next thing remote src we need to specify it as a s because it is under remote src this is to extract file once it is extracted we need to give the permissions right so where is my yep so downloaded and extracted next thing is we are giving permissions so let's change the permission to change the permission so now once it is extracted you cannot see the tar.gz right so name i'm giving so file module we need to use path what is the path of this file slash opt Till here it will come once it is extracted tar.gz will disappear on this file mode 0755 I can give I can give owner all this stuff so already now I am going to give yeah 755 on this file earlier we have given on the tar file this 075 now we are giving on the Apache Tomcat directory itself okay then next name next thing is once we have given the permission we need to create a link file so link file is slash opt so and so and here 3.5 is there but in our case our pack sorry our version is 5.6 so same thing we are going to copy so we are going to do the link file so this is the location instead of this one 5.6 right 5.6 sorry not here name creating link file to create a link file again we are going to use the file module itself and path src and the destination this one should be So USR local bin nothing but this is the default directory which can recognize all your commands. So if you create a link file, what will happen? This file logically create one more uh, file that is like a shortcut, one more file in this location. And whenever you execute this particular command, tomcat up, it will check in this particular location. That is the default behavior. How do I know it will check? If you specify where is where is the ls if you specify you can see here it is going to check the usr bin and uh, you can see here it is saying that whenever you give which command it will look for that particular uh, command where does it exist you can see here it is looking for slash usr bin and uh, 
slash usr local bin usr bin usr local s bin all these paths it looks and if this particular file or command exists in these locations it is going to execute that particular command that's why whenever i do which ls it is going to check in this particular location and it found and it giving that this is a ls command is exist or where is where is ls also same thing it will give so it found over here as well as another locations as well okay so this is how we are going to create one more file called tomcat app and tomcat uh, this particular cell script what i mean to say this particular cell script is a script so whenever we give tomcat up it is going to execute this particular cell script that is what we are going to do so i'm sorry i'm going to create a link file so destination next we need to queue the for stop also shutdown dot sh file this one i will name it as a create link file for tomcat startup dot sh startup and shutdown are the commands which can help us to start the services and stop the services now again file module and it will be in the same location so i'm giving source is equal to, this is shutdown dot h sh tomcat down i am giving i can give this value anything it doesn't mean that we should specify same thing i'm just it is easy to remember right tomcat down means it is going to bring down the tomcat service all right next thing is once we have created symbolic links now we can start the services okay to start the services service okay if you see the our playbook how we can start the service just we can give the tomcat up so that it it is going to start the service whenever i give the tomcat up it will go and check whether this particular command is there in the different locations among these location we have already specified under usr local bin so it identifies and execute it it, it indirectly means that it is executing this particular stuff right so now we are going to start the services to start the services we can use the command called shell okay shell is a command just we can execute it as a command or else even if you do remember command module also we were using right even we can use command okay so we can specify the command as well and uh, startup dot yeah just to start up okay if you execute a command as a startup it is execute as a cell script but what will happen in ansible once the command is executed ansible come out from that system usually whenever you come out from that system whatever process you have executed will die if you don't want to kill your process even though you log out from your system then we can use the no hub command okay no hub is a command which will help us to run your process even though you log out from your system that is the advantage so this is how you can write your ansible playbook you can see here i am explaining one more time so what and all tasks we are doing first we are downloading packages once it is downloading we are extracting that packages once it is extracting we are changing the permissions on that particular directory and uh, yeah one more thing we need to give is recursive recursive nothing but recursive nothing but within this one we have multiple directories right so all those directories we are going to get the same permissions on all those directories so that's why recursive is we should give let me check that one under file module i think i have already opened yeah you can see here recurse it is not recursive recurse yes i need to give okay that's it now we are changing the ownership sorry permissions on the file once it is changed then we are executing sorry we are creating a symbolic link files and two tasks we have created i am going to again uh, what i can say change it few more stuff over here but for now we just converted our tomcat and uh, shell commands into the ansible playbook 
now let's copy this one okay and i am adding it to my ansible playbook what file i have created setup tomcat right tomcat underscore setup dot yml file i'm creating and just add this one okay so we have added it why it is no hub i think everything looks good okay now let's save this file okay maybe it, it may or may not work let's try it first so cat i'm just showing this one so we are running on web servers first let's open our hosts file web servers means we are getting these two 215 and 13 and the tomcat server as well as the rhl server this is rhl server and tomcat server we have already installed the same thing if you go and check under opt we have the tar.gz file we have extracted it sometime back and uh, then we started the services and accessed it from the browser and if i still if i go to my tomcat server from the browser i can still access it you can see here it runs on port number 8080 right so 8080 but services are not up let me quickly bring the services up so to start up apache under this one you should go bin okay i'm going it as a normal user let me become a root opt apache under apache bin is there under bin we have startup.sh is there right you can see here you can just give dot slash startup.sh rather than coming here and executing what i have done is i just created a symbolic link even you can create a symbolic link over here so present working directory is this one right so ln minus yes okay ln is a command to create a symbolic link link file this means so this is the one slash startup.sh2 which path we are specifying usr local bin right so this one we are creating a link file so if i create now i just execute a tomcat tomcat up you can see here it is starting the tomcat services and if i access it from the browser it should give the tomcat home page all right so same thing should happen even for my rhl server at this moment because here it is already running it is going to create a symbolic link now if you check shutdown.sh tomcats down right tomcat down we haven't created a link file so it says that command not found again if i create a link file like this it is going to give the whenever we give the tomcat down it says that it it brings brings down the application so once we have executed our ansible playbook this tomcat down also should be enabled anyway this is already downloaded and extracted nothing to do over here okay on this server nothing will be done but on this system it is going to download the tomcat packages and uh, just to make sure i'm removing all these files we don't need all these files rm minus rf star with sudo command so nothing is there now what it should do it should download packages on this system extract it and create a symbolic link file and start the services that is the expectation right ansible playbook hosts okay tomcat setup dot yml minus minus check i'm just validating it i don't know whether syntax is correct or not okay there is some typo is there there is indentation is not given oh yeah, sorry, yeah. yep okay all right it looks good for me now let's check it out one more time okay it's executing now you can see here it is downloading packages after downloading it is trying to extract it but to extract we are 
trying with check so there is no files it cannot able to extract and it is giving that source slash opt apache tomcat does not exist of course the file is not yet downloaded right so let's try this without check now clear the screen and try without check so it is downloading packages on the both the systems you can see here we have given web server so it is executing on the two systems extracted file is fine then creating symbolic link <clears throat> what it is saying the source option required the state of the link are hard so let me check the what was the name we have given yeah we haven't specified the state right so state is colon link similar way over here state link right now let's execute one more time so files are already there i think it is not downloading and if i check ls over here earlier it was nothing now you can see here extracted it is downloaded as well as extracted so previous command itself it was executed right so it takes extracted and created the symbolic link and start the services while starting it is throwing an error okay it could not able to identify the startup.sh we have given startup right it should be tomcat up so let's change it va tomcat setup.sh so no hub tomcat up right so we are creating symbolic link for this is the symbolic link right all right so we have created it one more last time this time it should start the services on my tomcat server but before executing just check that ps minus ef grip tomcat okay no services are running okay again tomcat up no such file or directory let me execute manually oh okay we need to set up the java right we forgot about that here so first thing is prerequisites itself we need to install java so let me add my edit my ansible playbook to install java so to install java we are going to add one more task that is name 1.8 star so i'm going to use a module called m and name name is equal to just you can give java it is going to install default one so name java state installed okay it is not open jdk it is not going to install let me check i'm not going to use install it but just i will check yeah sudo m install java which version it is going to install on this one so libraries yeah java 1.8 open jdk it is going to install okay that is what i need because it is a red hat system it is installing 1.8 in ubuntu sorry i don't want to install manually but in uh, amazon linux it could be something different but uh, let it be so save this file and start the service sorry run our playbook this time it should install java as well in one server it is already there right because that is a already tomcat server so it won't do or it won't install it but in another system it is going to install i mean to say on red hat system no hub i think yeah. and what we can do is we can go to this path directly and start the service okay so so this is the one we need to execute right we are going to execute dot slash startup dot sh this is how we need to execute a cell script and also we need to give the 
directory chdir nothing but into which directory you want to execute this one so you should provide this one don't give entire path in the command itself first chdir nothing but change the directory over here then run this particular command that is the meaning okay so let me check the command module once so command module as it is it runs as a command linux command it is going to execute it and if you scroll down you can see here yeah sorry i need to provide args so command you need to give the command what do you want to execute and args okay directly you can provide command over here as well so args so in args we should specify the chdir let's save this and execute it i'm just bypassing the link file i will check it out uh, later why it is not working means whatever link file we are create we have created we are not using those for now okay this time services are started successfully so we are checking the services on the system ps minus cf grab tomcat yeah so as i said what will happen the services has started but whenever your ansible playbook come out it is going to stop the services that's the reason we should give the no hub over here okay no hub we need to give and save let's execute this time even though your ansible come out from your ansible sorry server still the services would be running okay this time it is successful and if i go and check for the services yes it's running and if i go and access it from my browser so copy this one and give it over here colon 8080 now you could see the tomcat application running accessing from the browser so this is how we can install tomcat by using ansible playbook so next thing is what we are going to do it is more like a hard coded the intention of writing this playbook is i want to show you how the variables works okay so now what is the thing is today my apache package type is this one our version is 8.5.56 tomorrow it could be something else right so in those case it is not a good habit to hard code your variables value over here it is not a good practice of uh, providing hard code the hard code the values which you can frequently change that's the reason what we can do we can create a variable file and we rename it as a variables for that we just going to add a vars underscore files and uh, add the variable file name as tomcat underscore vars dot yml okay so now i am going to remove this one and i will give just as a tomcat url okay tomcat url is the option next this one rather than this one i am going to use the tomcat package okay tomcat url and package both are differ because tomcat url nothing but full url okay you can give something like this where's tomcat url sorry this one underscore i should give okay tomcat url colon my url name sorry my url name i can give what is the url name this is the url name right so my url name i can give next tomcat package colon i will give only this package name okay so package name i can give but uh, i don't give the tar.gz because i just want to reuse this one here again it is you can see here only till here right so i can use this one till here so this means that it is going to replace the opt tomcat url not opt opt i need to specify so opt this one 
okay again here also i can replace with the same thing here also i can replace with the same thing okay so this is how we can change it here also i can replace with the same thing so we you can see here i am using the uh, variable values and either i can specify the variable values over here or i can pass it from here i don't want to pass it from here as well i am going to create a tomcat dot underscore vars dot yml file and i will pass it from there so clear the screen vi here i am going to add these variables all right so i have saved it now i can remove this one where we are not passing it from system itself this is how we can edit our ansible playbook and uh, va tomcat sorry cat greater than tomcat setup nothing but what will happen whatever content is there in my file it all going to void and we are going to add the new data okay so oops yeah that's it now again i can execute this playbook just before executing if i open it you can see the how we are using vim package name you can see here we are using variables rather than hard coded script okay variable names we are using okay where's on sorry tomcat user here we are using variables and here we are giving url here we are giving the package names something like this and one last thing we are giving url in the tomcat wares right so url over here so some special characters are there just better to mention under quotes so that uh, it won't create a problem hopefully now let's execute this playbook uh, even though it is not it is not going to install this should be successful that is the intention of this one so tomcat setup dot yml minus i hosts okay even if you want to give all hosts then minus minus limit and you can give all over here but i don't want to install on all the systems let it be only on those two systems typo not here set up dot yml right. so where's where's underscore files colon so let's execute now you can see it is going to do the same activities anyway all right so it's successful nothing but it took our variables successfully and clear the screen and va we can do one more uh, change to our setup.yml you can see here we are using same module for the link file couple of times rather than specifying two times we can use with items right so i'm going to change it one more thing one more time so here linked file i'm going to give these two right i can use loop so loop what i can do i can give here again i will give source nothing but tomcat script tomcat script equal colon so this is tomcat script right so i'm going to give it as a tomcat script again here we are using variables that's the reason we should specify in a single code like this okay and uh, then tomcat command i can give the command over here okay destination here i am going to give just uh, item dot tomcat command here tomcat command colon so startup dot sorry tomcat up similar way we are going to add one more thing 
because two variables we need right that's the reason so same thing here shut down right shut down here tomcat down so what we are doing we are changing the tomcat script to this one over here or else what i can do only i can change instead of changing all this stuff startup.sh and shutdown.sh and here only i can change just so item dot dot tomcat script right so now what we have done we are just replacing the item dot script tomcat script to startup dot sh whenever it is startup dot sh link with the tomcat up whenever it is shutdown dot sh link with the tomcat down okay so this is again here i need to give colon and this is also going to work let's copy this one i'm just using loops over here so clear the screen cat greater than tomcat setup and use your loops and let's try to execute this playbook minus minus check oh, check should be we should specify the comma over there so here we need to specify the comma now let's execute it again with items why it is using with items item dot tomcat yes okay maybe i have used the keyword command does it creating issue because sometimes I'm specifying like a variable value it is it should be single so okay let me try it without that okay you can see here it is creating a symbolic links for this one but it is already there so it is not touching anything and it's just created and started the services so this is how you can keep on updating your Ansible playbook. All right then. So that's all for today. Hi, good morning and good evening everyone. In today's session, we are going to deal with Ansible Vault. Once it is done, we, we deal with Ansible roles. First, let's start with Ansible Vault. What is Ansible Vault? Ansible Vault is a feature Ansible Vault is a feature of Ansible that allows you to keep sensitive data such as passwords or keys in encrypted file rather than a, rather than as as plain text in a playbook or roles. So it is mostly we can store our secure data in the Ansible Vault. So you you know the meaning of Vault, right? Vault is a secure place where you can store your important things. Even we can store money in our vault, uh, sorry, wallets. And uh, a vault is nothing but we can store our backups in the vault. Like that, we will use the vault for a purpose where we, we can store our secure data. Sorry, sensitive data. So even in Ansible vault, we can uh, store our passwords, keys, or any other important data which you don't want to share with any others. You just want to use it whenever you want to run okay in those cases we can use ansible vault and ansible ansible vault is not a separate place where you can store it is just like a feature where we can act on specific files if you uh, use ansible vault on a specific file it is going to convert as an encrypted file rather than a readable file Okay, so by using Ansible vault commands, I mean to uh, I mean to say all vault commands starts with Ansible vault. 
by using ansible vault command we can encrypt a file or decrypt a file we can read the encrypted file we can edit the encrypted file all this stuff we can do so the major intention behind this is uh, just to secure your data uh, which is private right now if you want to create a file with encrypted format we can use a create ansible vault create is a option so all commands will start with ansible vault how we run ansible playbook right all playbooks we run with the ansible playbook command similar way all ansible vault commands starts with ansible minus vault space this option create and followed by the file name so this is to create a vault file in the encrypted format directly you can create a vault file in encrypted format next view view is to see the data whatever is there in the encrypted format and edit to edit a file encrypt if you already an existing file which is readable format now you would like to convert into the encrypted file then we can use the encrypt decrypt if your file is already encrypted now there is no sensitive data then you can use the decrypt option next ask vault pass so this is to provide the uh, vault password while running your playbook uh, now one more uh, thing you need to remember is if you are encrypting your file you need to store one more password maybe file have the contains the sensitive information now if you want to encrypt that one you are going to encrypt and give a password now you may ask you may ask me a question that why we are encrypting a file with the another password which i am going to answer in the later but if you want to uh, what i can say use the encrypted file in your playbook then you need to also pass the uh, also pass the vault password then instead of passing the password uh, while running your ansible playbook whenever you are using ansible vault commands then you can pass your vault password by using this one you can understand this one uh, later but these two if you don't understand just skip this i am going to explain with examples so here i have already logged into my systems first one first session is control node sorry first session is control node which is my ansible node and this one is rhl server and this one is my tomcat server and this one is ubuntu system let me clear the screen and here as well right now i am going to create a file with encrypted format then we can use ansible vault okay this is the command to create a file with encrypted format but let me switch back to my ans admin user here we have okay i was doing something yesterday so cd playbooks and you can see here here we have all our playbooks now i am going to create a encrypted file to create an encrypted file you can use ansible vault create and file name i am going to give vault one dot yml you can give any name it doesn't mean that you should give the yml format but in your system if it is in yml format it is easy for you to understand it is related to the ansible uh, file that is the only intention you can give any extension so i am giving vault one dot yml and you can see here it is asking for a password i am giving abc123 as my password same thing again sorry doesn't match abc123 abc123 i'm giving simple password but usually we use complex passwords now you can write your data assume that my gmail account just i'm giving gmail mail at gmail.com 
and password a b c one two three okay just i have keep my sensitive data okay my email id and my password now i don't want to uh, nobody can able to see my uh, password that is the reason i have encrypted my file now if i open this vault my uh, dot vault one dot yml you can see you cannot able to read the data because it has sensitive information who knows the password of this vault they can only able to open or read the data now if i want to read this file i can use ansible vault view okay view is a command to read the file view and vault one dot yml if i give this one it asks for password i know the password because i am a authorized person to open this file and you can see i can able to view the data so this is how you can create a vault password and this is how you can view the data okay now assume that if you do remember we have created user.yml okay so in this one the username is rahul we have given okay it doesn't have any sensitive information let's take that just just for namesake i am changing it so i am giving rahul password we are not using this keyword nowhere but just i am giving abc123 as a rahul password now what happened this user.yml file contains the sensitive data so i should encrypt this file I should encrypt this file. I cannot leave the like this. Everyone uh, leave like this because everybody can able to read his password. So then, what I can do? Uh, I'm trying to give you an example that you have a already created file which is having sensitive information. Then I'm going to encrypt this one by using Ansible Vault encrypt and followed by your file name so this is how you can encrypt it is asking for password i am giving abc123 abc123 okay passwords can be anything for simple reason i am keeping like this okay now if i try to open user dot yml now nobody can able to read this one why because it is encrypted uh, due to some security reasons this is how you can encrypt your file after some time you have removed this one okay now i don't want to keep the rahul password in this file then you can use the ansible vault edit okay view is to just to read view is to just to read the file whenever you are viewing you need to provide the ansible vault password and uh, if you want to edit ansible vault edit and user.yml now it is asking for password and giving my vault password and you can remove this one and save this file now i have edited my file and if i use still it is encrypted format even though you removed your password so once you were you have removed your password there is no sensitive data right if i check ansible vault view user.yml abc123 is my password so now there is no sensitive information so it, it doesn't have any meaning to encrypt your file if it doesn't have any sensitive information then we can use the decrypt option ansible vault decrypt and your user user.yml file and abc123 now if i see cat user.yml i can able to read this file okay so this is how we can use our ansible vault commands so ansible create ansible view sorry ansible vault create view edit encrypt and decrypt these are the maximum passwords we use is it clear how ansible vault commands does work if it is clear i am going to show you in which cases do we use it uh, Shankar, can we uh, encrypt a particular line in a file? No, it doesn't work. You can encrypt entire file. 
there is no option to encrypt a specific file okay okay so now what we are going to do is uh, we will write an ansible playbook where we can clone our code from our github repository but that is a private repository so if it is a private repository we need to provide credentials right so we'll try to provide credentials but i don't want to give the sensitive information in the file then how can i accomplish that one we'll see that so for that one quickly i'm going to change my github account password because it it doesn't accept the special characters what we are going to do now is we are going to create a repository so let's go back to your repositories and uh, create a new repository and uh, i am giving vault test okay vault test repository it is a private repository not a public repository and i am creating a readme file let it be and i am editing this one ansible vault and this is a test file just uh, i have given some updates now i would like to clone this repository into my system if i want to clone it i need to use my uh, credentials why because it is a private repository right let's go and try it manually i'm cloning my repository you can see here git clone am i copied https yes if i try to clone it it is asking me the username and password to clone it if i provide username and password then only i can able to clone it but i don't want to do it with the command line i want to do it with the ansible playbook i want to do it with the ansible playbook so let's write here quickly an ansible playbook how can we clone private repositories into our systems so va git clone.yml triple minus minus name cloning repo hosts web servers i am giving become true i don't think so we need become true option over here gather facts we don't need it then tasks so we need to write a task that is minus name minus name cloning repo okay now to clone your repo we have a ansible module called git let's go and know about what is git ansible module so git module ansible if you give so if you go here you can see these all are the parameters which you can able to pass just to try to come down examples if you see the examples it is easy for you to understand you can see here exa example git checkout checkout nothing but downloading check in nothing but up updating the code okay so example git checkout from ansible playbook so git is a module and repo what is the repository name then destination nothing but where do you want to copy this code and version okay version nothing but the branch if it is uh, if you don't give anything it is a default branch it is going to take this is how you can able to download your uh, repository right so there are few other examples but in our case we want to download it okay so git is a module then src source our repository name this is our repository name and uh, destination where do you want to copy i haven't given become true so it doesn't have access to any other folder so let's download in our home uh, ans admin uh, home directory okay so this is how we can do so let's find right let's save this file 
and uh, if I try to execute Ansible playbook minus I hosts then Ansible playbook minus minus check okay so instead of giving minus minus check we can give another option minus cap capital C both are same okay minus capital C is also do the same thing let's execute and you can see here what it is saying I'm trying to clone the repository but it is a private repository right okay accept host key something you need to provide the ho accept host key so accept host key nothing but you can add your public key in the repository and the private key you need to provide by using accept host key but rather than that one we have username and password right in that case we can provide our username and password in the git url itself okay so if i open this one in this url itself we can provide our username and password i will just grab that command how it uh, works so git command to provide username and password if you search okay you can see how do i provide username and password while running your git command okay so this is how the syntax git clone okay so you can see here git clone https username colon password then your repository this is how you can pass your credentials right so same thing i'm updating in my repository so this is uh, after here where our username is revd right revd uh, colon right and galaxy one two three we have given password and here at we should provide okay so let me check whether it's correct or not yes after https you should provide username colon password at your repository okay now let's try to save this file and we'll execute this ansible playbook with c option okay there is a okay indentation error here as well now let's execute again okay what it is saying ansible repo host key chicken This is remote, I think, not SRC. Where is Git module? Repo, yeah. So repo and dest we should provide. It is not SRC. We are giving repo name, right? So let's save this file and execute again. You can see here, this time it could able to clone the repository without any issues, but we just tried with minus C option. If I go and check in my target system, you cannot able to see that one. CD slash home, or right, let me switch to ANS admin user. And uh, you don't have repository even here also. okay we don't have any repository yet if i do without c it should able to clone okay clone so on so vault vault to test home and spell admin slash home okay I'm sorry so after this I need to provide the directory name where I should copy it because uh, I cannot give the directly directory name so VA and uh, directory name I am giving wall to test okay so wall to test is the directory name I am giving and let's try it again and it is going to clone and keep it as a vault test if you see here there is a directory called vault test even here as well 
okay so this is how we can clone our repository into the target system but if you observe the problem with this playbook okay we are providing our credentials directly to in the uh, our ansible playbook and it is not right way to do this one right because you come to know that what is my credentials ansible sorry github credentials that is the reason we need to encrypt this file now if i encrypt this file entire file okay let's take this example ansible i thought it is having a sensitive information i am trying to encrypt it encrypt and i am giving encrypted password as a abc123 abc123 now i have encrypted this file right so now if somebody want to know what is this playbook is doing okay they don't know what is happening inside this playbook okay they can run it but they don't know what is happening if they want to do something some changes it is difficult so encrypting entire playbook is not at all a good idea now is there any option uh, we can uh, bypass this problem and still i want to secure my credentials does anybody give any clue and just decrypting it again kit. okay see now my question is i don't want to show my passwords at the same time i don't want to encrypt this file i want to encrypt only my passwords how can i do that one can anybody have any idea how can we actually uh, use external file yes that is where variable comes into the picture right so in this case what i can do i can give my password username is no issue i can share with everyone but whenever it comes to the password i can use it as a variable and variable file i can encrypt it so that this file won't be encrypted at the same time my credentials are secure information uh, sorry sensitive information is not displayed okay now let's try that one what i am doing i am creating my uh, vault vault 2.yml same way how we have created ansible vault create vault 2.yml here i am going to give my git password i am giving vault password again vault password here git underscore passw password okay just think that this is a variable name and i am giving velaxy123 so save this file now i am going to use this variable name in my file rather than directly providing the password okay while providing variable double braces and again here as well that's it now i have replaced my password and uh, uh, i can specify the double quotes over here if it is uh, it is not necessary because it is in in between of line if it is starting of line of course you need to do and also i need to provide my file name right where's underscore files my file name is vault2.yml right okay so this is how i can do and uh, if i see my ansible sorry git clone playbook there is no sensitive information in this playbook at this moment at this moment and also i am using vault2 so if i open vault2 my password also not uh, decrypted i mean to say is not readable it is encrypted now i can run this ansible playbook without any issues before running let me remove the files in the target system i'm just removing whatever we have created previously now again i'm going to run this ansible playbook so where it is yeah no ansible playbook minus i hosts git clone uh, git clone dot oml but as i said whenever we are executing this ansible playbook we must provide ansible password right to pass ansible password 
okay ask vault ask vault pass we need to do otherwise what will happen it doesn't ask for the password and you cannot able to utilize your file okay your ansible can identify automatically try to read all the files while executing your ansible playbook if some files are encrypted it will ask for the password you can see here error attempting to decrypt but no value secret found okay so that's why we need to give the ask vault pass why because we have given the uh, our vault 2.yml in this ansible playbook minus minus ask vault pass sorry pass right yeah so here we need to provide our password abc123 i am providing and it automatically takes uh, decrypt the file and clone the repository now if i go and check it out again you can see here vault test is there so this is how we can extract our sensitive information from our ansible playbook and keep in another file and we'll encrypt the file okay this is a basic example but usually we need to pass the keys or uh, some cert certificates like that we would be passing during our ansible execution time is it clear any questions uh Shekhar, can we pass more than one uh, encrypted file yes we can pass it but so uh, it should password? it should have the same password okay no yeah it should have the same password if you are encrypting so usually what do we do rather than creating multiple encryption files let's take this example assume that you want to store one more password okay in the uh, sorry you want to pass one more password in your ansible playbook rather than creating a new file and storing the password in the separate file why can't we use the same file right so that's the reason you never pass it there won't be such kind of requirements because all encrypted or sensitive information we keep in a single file and will encrypt it as a single file and will pass it uh, there is no meaning of uh, keeping the sensitive information in the different different files until some exceptional cases okay so usually vault ansible vault we use to keep our sensitive information and we have seen examples how we can store our sensitive information okay if it is clear we move on to the next topic that is ansible roles so let's search for ansible roles over here okay it is quite simple here ansible roles it is not complicated but in the real world whatever we have done so far okay uh, only little bit we are going to use but the actual thing if you are uh, working started working more on ansible then ansible roles are the one which you are going to work but without the previous knowledge you cannot able to work it okay that is the problem that's why i spend a lot of time over there but ansible roles okay the purpose usually they say that ansible roles is the reusability reusability nothing but uh, you can write your ansible playbook okay in your team assume that you are writing your ansible playbook same playbook in other project they want to use it again then uh, if you write in ansible playbook it is quite easy for them to use it okay that is the intention behind the ansible roles but uh, as per my experience uh, i can say that it is very less useful in the other projects even though they say it is a reusability i haven't seen much advantage so far in my experience but what is the advantage of using ansible roles is you can write your ansible playbook in better way comparatively writing in a single ansible playbook all your instructions you can split your ansible playbook into different different uh, files that is the use of ansible uh, roles okay you can split your bigger ansible playbook into the different different files so that it is quite easy for you to handle or manage or you can understand what changes you need to do in which location that is the advantage of roles okay all right so now whenever you use ansible roles it is going to create these files here 
sorry this directory so i can say so it create tasks directory handlers directory files directory templates directory where's defaults metadata okay these all are the even tests are there okay it is not displayed over here but the tests like this it creates eight directories whenever you are start writing your ansible roles okay and uh, each directory contains a specific reason if you see here tasks so tasks nothing but what and all tasks you are doing in your system you can keep it over here handlers if you do remember we have discussed about notify and handler if i want to start my service i can give the notify and handler then you can keep your handlers over here files if you want to copy some files from your source uh, sorry your ansible system to target system then you can use the files templates templates nothing but you can feel that files and templates both are mostly similar but templates you can use variables while you are using templates depending upon target system you can change your template type you can see that one next variables what and all variables you are having all the variables you can specify over here next defaults defaults nothing but if somebody doesn't provide any variable you can go and check in the where sorry default so that is how you can specify defaults next metadata metadata nothing but uh, how the playbook does work all that information will be there it doesn't have much priority so this is how the ansible roles looks like but just to think that whatever ansible playbooks we have written so far if you want to manage it in better way then you can use the ansible roles if i take an example okay we have written tomcat setup.yml right so in this one you can see here you have done very uh, sorry you have written big little bit big file and you have different tasks over here and uh, if you start adding few more tasks to this file it will be keep on sorry so it will be keep on growing right so it will be keep on growing so to overcome this kind of problem we are going to split this ansible playbook into the different files by using roles that is the intention of this one so this is the ansible playbook which we have written some time back and uh, we were having to start the service as well as to replace the port number first we are going to make it work instead of replacing this one with the line in file i am going to use a uh, what i can say file module which i can just copy the file from the source to destination okay so i will just run uh, run you through this playbook once again and uh, we'll correct this playbook what and all mistakes we have done then we are going to convert this one into the role all right so VA Tomcat setup dot YML. So if you do remember first first one Playbook to install Apache Tomcat then hosts web servers We are giving become true gather facts s and variable file name. We are giving Tomcat vars dot YML Then comes to the tasks first. We are installing Java then once Java installation is completed then we are downloading tomcat packages okay this tomcat url is there in the variable file and we are downloading it unto under to otp sorry opt so once it is downloaded we are extracting those files once it is extracted we are going to change the permissions of the apache tomcat file to 0777 it is not apache tomcat file it is a directory right okay once it is what i can say once we have changed permissions then we are going to create a symbolic link for this one so slash opt so once symbolic link has been created uh, we are changing the port number okay so this one i am going to add at the end <coughs> so so then we are starting the services so these two what i will do i will add it as a handlers okay so 
whoa okay so i'm introducing one more uh, action that is handlers right okay handlers what we are doing once we have created this uh, symbolic link sorry not handlers we need to notify use notify once the symbolic links has been created we would like to notify so notify start tomcat okay start tomcat i am doing and i am going to use handlers it starts from here so handlers and the name should be the same as a notifier right start tomcat okay next we are changing the file port number okay rather than this one what i am going to do i am going to use a file module over here okay file module so in file module i am giving src so src is settings.xml okay this is the file destination where do you want to copy i want to copy it onto slash opt tomcat package slash conf okay slash settings.xml okay so i will just show you on tomcat system this is tomcat server right if you download okay the tomcat file name is this one if you go inside to your tomcat file okay tomcat 6 came i think so tomcat 6 then you have a conf file sorry conf directory if you see your directory this is your directory right so then you you have here a server.xml not settings.xml if you edit this file and search for port you can see next you can see here connector port number 8080 whatever port number you are having over here on this port number the application runs we need to change this port number that's it right so for that what i am doing i am just uh, we'll have we have different uh, ways first what i am going to do i am just copying this file entire file i am copying and i will keep in my ansible server okay so i'm going back to my ansible server let me uh, change it to ser server dot xml right that is the file name we need even server dot xml all right so here what i'm going to do i'm going to create a file called server dot xml i think i have already copied so let me remove server.xml after uh, last class i was experimenting it so okay i have copied again i need to copy it again okay here it has been added anyway i'm going to update it so control c and va server.xml and port number i am changing to 8081 okay and shift g this is not required so just what i have done i just copied as it is of the server.xml from the tomcat configuration and i changed the port number from 8080 to 8081 that's it where it is You can see here i have changed port number 8080 to 8081 and uh, this is not commented out this is commented out you can see here if it starts with exclamatory mark and this one it means that it is commented out so this is commented out no need to change over here only we have changed over here now i would like to copy this file onto the target system right so th that is where i have written my ansible playbook so
So change port number server.xml and source means in your current location it is going to check for this file. Okay, this is not file, you need to use the copy module. You are copying source nothing but in current location there is a server.xml file and copy it onto the destination slash opt and so on so location. Okay, and conf server.xml. That's it. Now what we are doing is once this is done again I want to use the notify. Okay, restart tomcat. Okay. So first thing is we are uh, what we are doing is we are starting the tomcat whenever you are starting the tomcat uh, That's fine. You can use uh, uh, Once the link linked file is created you can start it if you are changing your configuration You need to restart your tomcat server. So again. I can go here under handlers Again, I will add okay this time. I don't want to use this one. I just want to use our command like tomcat up okay if i do tomcat up it should start if i do tomcat down it should uh, shut down okay similar way here i am going to give one more minus name restart tomcat and command i am giving tomcat down for this no hop is not needed and no hub tomcat up so what does it mean that we are running two commands because we need to restart tomcat to restart we don't have command to restart our tomcat we are bringing down the tomcat application and again we are starting it we are bringing down tomcat again we are starting okay so i am going to explain it one more time so first we are installing Java then downloading Tomcat packages. Okay, so whatever version is there it is going to download it from the Tomcat URL. We just specified Tomcat URL in our variable file. I will open that uh, Tomcat variables file as well. Let me open in new tab duplicate tab. If you see here. Sorry, CD playbooks. Here we have Tomcat wares.yml, right? Here we have the URL of our Tomcat URL. You can see here we are downloading 5.56 version of the Tomcat. Once it is downloaded, we are extracting that file. Where we are extra, uh, what is the file ex we are extracting? OPT and the Tomcat package name and then extracting. Then change the permissions of the Tomcat. Of course, we are changing. Then we are creating link file. Okay, so once we have created link file, we could not able to start the tomcat up command. We are going to see today. I missed to troubleshoot that one. But uh, once that is done, we can start our tomcat services. Okay, once we have started, again we are changing the configuration. Nothing but port number 8080280081. If you are changing your configuration of tomcat, you need to restart your tomcat. Then your notify will again get executed because we are changing this one. So, and it is going to stop your Tomcat and start the Tomcat. All right, that is what it is going to do. But before doing this one, we'll just try to execute this one. This is the where we were having error. So at this moment, there is no Tomcat services are running. So Tomcat up, I'm trying it as a root user and ps minus ef grep tomcat okay tomcat services are running tomcat down so ps minus ef grep tomcat so it's not running same thing over here as well we are not touching ubuntu system so i'm becoming a root over here and uh, pwd go to opt and uh, go inside to apache tomcat and conf because i was doing some experiment after our class so this extra character extra line got added let me remove this one and uh, tomcat down if it is running
okay connection refused maybe it is not running tomcat up ps minus cf grep tomcat now it is running tomcat down yes okay all right everything is working fine now so let it be and hope handler definition is correct right so let me validate my ansible playbook ansible playbook minus i hosts what hosts i'm using i kept web servers only okay ansible playbook minus i hosts tomcat setup minus c right and let's notify okay here it should start so notify should start here even here as well yeah it's correct only now all right this is successful so this time i think it is everything is fine now what we are doing is we are going to remove the configuration on the target systems and then we'll rerun it so first i'm going to remove all the packages in this rm minus rf star okay it removes everything even over here cd slash opt ls rm minus rf star we don't need all this stuff nothing is there then linked file also usr local bin we are creating linked file rm minus rf star okay linked files also not there and uh, usr local bin rm minus rf star all right so we have removed all our configuration and let's try with this playbook again this time what it should do it is going to download the required packages and uh, extract it then uh, create a link file and start the service and then copy our uh, server.xml so once it is copied port number get changed from 8080 to 8081 and our application should run on 8082 sorry 8081 so let's go and check it out cd opt i am checking only one server so for file is not yet copied once download is completed we can see that one yes it's downloaded now it is extracting now you can see two files it's extracted and handlers no hub tomcat up no such file or directory tomcat up okay where it is now we'll see so whether linked file is created or not us or local bin okay link file is there okay now i'm switching back to my home directory tomcat up yes it's starting here tomcat and let me see whether file is copied or not restart tomcat where it is start tomcat handlers let me give the full path usually it should take up the without full path but still just as a validation step no hub slash usr local bin right tomcat hub i don't give no hub in front of the tomcat down because we are stopping the services there is no point of giving the no hub but here we need it that's the reason i have given let me try it out one more time 
no such file or directory as a which user if i execute that error should come if i do as a ans admin tomcat up no it is permission error it is showing all right let me try to use the shell module okay now it's working so command module is the issue here okay so now what i'm i'm doing i'm removing everything one more time and we'll try to do it cd slash opt sudo rm minus rf star nothing is there and usr local bin so rm minus rf star so nothing is here same thing I'm doing here as well. So, out of minus out of star, cd slash opt, out of minus out of star. Okay, nothing is there. Now let's re-execute this Ansible playbook. This time, it should be able to download the packages and start the services. Then I can access my application from the browser. So let's go and grab my application IPs sorry my server ips so on tomcat server we are installing as well as on rhl server so it's completed successfully and you can see here both the handlers are worked because linked file we created freshly as well as we copied the port number so now let's cop go here and search for 8081 right it should run on 8081 not on 8080 all right even on uh, rhl server as well if i search for 8081 okay so now i mean to say that tomcat could able to install my packages successfully the intention of writing this playbook is I would like to install Tomcat. But if you see here, we have keep on adding so many tasks, right? So identifying problem also, it is difficult if your playbook is like this. That is where we can split our Ansible playbook into the different files. That is where Ansible module comes into the picture. Okay. So now I have opened my Ansible control node in two terminals. Okay. This terminal last terminal i will bring it here okay so both are next to next both are same terminals ansible control node and ansible control node now what we are going to do is we are going to convert this ansible playbook into a ansible role this playbook into a role okay so to create a role you can create a directory and inside you can create the files which i have shown okay these these directories you can create inside the roles directory okay rather than that one you can use a command called ansible galaxy init and your role name our role name is tomcat setup right i'm giving tomcat setup okay tomcat setup is my role name i'm creating a ansible role whenever you execute this one it is going to create a directory structure which is required for your ansible role okay you can see here it has been created a tomcat ro role uh, successfully and uh, this is our tomcat setup.yml is my our ansible playbook and tomcat setup is our role now go inside our role and if i do tree tree is not there sudo m install tree all right so now if i if i do tree here you can see here directory structure there is a default directory files directory handlers directory metadata readme file text dot sorry tasks directory templates tests vars okay these all are the directories which are by default uh, what i can say needed for your role and it is not mandatory that you should have all the directories the mandatory directory is tasks directory 
okay without this you cannot able to run the your ansible role remaining all are option optional if you are using you can keep those directories if you are not using you can skip those directories right so now what i am going to do is i am going to convert our ansible playbook into role so let's go here and if you try to read over here so first it is talking about the hosts where your servers next become true gather facts and variable file we are going to use okay this variable file rather than creating a separate file whatever variables are there we need to copy it into the vars directory under vars we have a main.yml right that is where we need to copy okay so but anyway for now just ignore this one we are going to do it at last first we'll copy all the tasks into the tasks directory so this is our tasks right tasks under tasks we have main.yml let's open this file everything you need to keep under main.yml you can change the file name but we usually use the main.yml only so vi i'm already under my role so vi you can see here tasks is there right vi tasks under tasks we have a file called main.yml in this we are going to keep all our tasks so o okay so just copy your tasks what and all tasks we have so you can see here these all are tasks right till here yeah till here these all are tasks okay just you need to copy all these tasks and we don't have this indentation if you are copying in a dedicated one it says it should start from here so there won't be syntax error also this minus should start the starting only okay so you can see here all tasks you have copied over here okay so then tasks are done again if i do tree so so far we have updated only tasks next what else is left out in our ansible playbook so till where we have copied did i copied all tasks copy server.xml yeah till last task i have copied next one is handlers are there so handlers we don't copy into handlers if you see here okay if you see here there is a directory called handlers under handlers we have a file called main so what we need to do is we need to copy our handlers into that main file so vi handlers main.yml so o and copy your handlers so now i have copied my handlers so now what we have done is we have copied under handlers whatever is there under tasks whatever is there next thing is variables right so where's so variables are available over here let me open this file so these are the variables let me copy these variables into my variables directory so i have a vars directory under vars again we have a main.yml so va vars main.yml sorry vars main.yml here we need to copy our variables now we have copied variables and the next one if you do remember we have copied everything and you can see here you are copying your file right server.xml so if you keep in your home directory it cannot able to recognize in roles we need to copy all files under files directory so we need to copy that one over here so in the current location itself sorry not in current location here we have the server.xml this one in copy it into the where our ansible role is this one right in this one there is a directory called files you need to copy under to that one that's it so now i have copied the required input files as well so if you see here we are not using templates we are not using defaults also metadata also we are not using tests it is optional how you can execute it then tasks we are using handlers vars and files <clears throat> now whatever is not required we can remove those so mostly we don't use uh, all the time metadata and tests okay so i am removing this one 
and uh, one more thing defaults so what does it mean by defaults is if you see your wares okay assume that you are not providing these variables these two variables only we are using in this tasks file assume that you are using variables but you haven't specified the variable values in the wares directory then you need to define it under the defaults directory so that if the wares are sorry if you don't define it takes the default variables let's take an example that i'm going to add one more task just to create a user just to create a user you can see here where tasks main.yml so i'm just adding even though it doesn't do with uh, our tomcat just for a namesake i'm adding create user modi so user module name modi right state present okay so we are creating user called modi but instead of using modi user i am going to use a variable called user underscore name okay so i am using user underscore name and uh, here also user underscore name okay just to test it out i am doing and if you see here username this value i am not providing under my variables i should provide over here right rather than that one if somebody doesn't provide the username by default create a user called modi for that we can add it to the defaults main.yml so variable name is name is modi okay so now what it will do whenever we are executing our playbook for username it go and check for the uh, where where's main.yml file if it is not there it takes the default value which is there in the defaults that's how it is going to do okay now our uh, what i can say file is ready we are not using templates any anyway so templates uh, we cannot experiment it with this example later point of time i will show you where we can use templates so these all are the directories we are using all right now we need to create a ansible playbook now to execute this uh, particular role we cannot execute role directly again role should be called from an ansible playbook okay so now i am going back over here this is our tomcats setup.yml role right so i am giving pa tomcat underscore role dot yml okay i'm just giving one name and here you need to specify on which servers do you want to execute if you do remember header section we haven't copied yet right so this one you need to copy over here okay in your ansible playbook and then you are going to call roles rather than tasks tomcat setup that's it so now what you are doing is you are created a ansible playbook but instead of writing all your tasks over here you just created a directory sorry you just created a role and you are calling the role tom calling that role our role name is tomcat setup right this is how you can call so tomcat setup is our role now if i execute this one it is going to call this role and it do the whatever tomcat setup uh, we have done same thing it is going to do before executing our role i'm going to remove again our uh, all configurations rm minus rf star sudo rm minus rf star and slash opt sudo rm minus rf star and also if i have user called modi i'm removing user there is no yeah there is a user called modi user del modi okay user del is the command to remove a user so we have deleted and if i check again there is no user called modi same thing over here under opt i'm removing everything under slash opt tomcat sorry slash usr lib sorry usr local bin 
here we are removing these two files as well and uh, cat slash ctc password we have a user called modi user tell modi okay now if i check it again there is no user called modi all right so now let's execute our ansible play sorry ansible role i can say so to execute our ansible role same thing ansible playbook minus i hosts okay we should pass the host name hosts then our ansible playbook name so tomcat role just i'm giving with minus c then user underscore name okay colon we should give so i'm just updating tomcat setup slash defaults main dot yml here now it's not equal it is colon so let's try to execute it again you can see here it is going to take the user called modi first time so it's creating user called modi and it is trying to download and extracting of course it is not actually downloading so it cannot able to extract it and you can see here what it is trying to extract 8.5.56 so let's execute without minus c and it should install it okay it's created user called modi let's go and check cat slash etc password you can see a user called modi got created sorry this one right then installing java it's already there now downloading packages opt i'm here still not yet downloaded yes it's downloading okay it's downloaded next thing is it is extracting file yes it's extracted next thing it is copying uh, port number yes it's copied and it, it happened both right first what it has done okay so first what it is doing it is starting the sorry creating linked file that's why startup uh, sorry start tomcat is executed and it also copied the file that's why this handler also got executed now if i run it is not going to create this one that's why only this handler is going to get executed but anyway if i go and access my application again from the browser it should work okay it's working fine without any issues now we'll do one last test that is i'm changing the username so tomcat setup.yml sorry not va go va tomcat setup dot setup slash vats then main.yml here i'm going to provide user underscore name okay i'm explicitly providing user underscore name i'm giving uh, name as a okay i'm giving user called mark so now what we do if we execute our ansible playbook it is going to create a user called mark rather than modi why because modi is under what i can say default configurations okay now modi will have the sorry mark have the highest priority comparatively modi so now let's execute again our ansible role and this time we need to observe two things that is once it is creating mark user you can see second thing is it is going to execute only one handler that is stop and start the tomcat services because we are not creating linked file anymore so it doesn't do anything you can see here only it executed only one handler that is tomcat setup at the restart tomcat not the start the tomcat okay and one last time i'm going to execute i'm executing with minus minus extra Words. okay so we are providing variables with the command line itself okay comparatively remaining two 
it will have the highest priority nothing but whatever you provide with the extra words so user underscore name i'm giving stephen i'm giving so let's execute this one and we should provide in the colon sorry braces and instead of extra verse we just give minus e also okay both will work minus minus extra verse or minus e also now you can see here it is going to create a user called stephen rather than uh, john or uh, sorry rather than mark or modi so whatever you provide through the command line those variables will have the highest priority if you want to provide multiple variables with this one you just need to add comma to this command you just need to add comma and uh, again provide comma space and provide the another variable like that you can provide multiple variables okay so that's all about in today's session if you have any questions you can ask me now oh shankar i have a question go ahead please um you haven't shown uh, how to use vault password file right so will you be taking it up later or oh vault password file right yeah uh, i will i will show you quickly so usually if we want to provide a vault password so vault 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 yeah git git clone so here we are using the password right and we have the password over here okay now what we can do is we can use the rather than uh, what i can say providing our ansible vault password while running our ansible command like ansible playbook minus i hosts then followed by our playbook then minus minus ask vault pass okay here we are specifying ask vault pass right so if i execute this one it is going to ask me the password i need to provide the password to uh, run the playbook rather than that one what we can do we can give uh, vault password file okay so we can provide the vault password file while executing our ansible playbook let me grab that whether is it correct or not vault yeah vault password file yes so i can provide the vault password file but you need to create the file before executing this command so i am creating a vault password okay dot yml and this extension is uh, what i can say optional dot oml extension so i'm just giving abc123 i just kept my password over there and uh, i can give the file name while executing my ansible playbook okay and uh, here this password file should not be encrypted again was vault password file should not be encrypted but we can pass it from your file and you can see here this time it is not asking for password just it is trying to clone the repository because it takes the password from here and it executes this playbook that is how ansible vault password file works but still the problem with this one is your password is exposed vault password is exposed so again it is not a right way but if it is your home directory you are using specific uh, password of course you have security in your home directory you can keep it and don't push it into the github repository now if i push these changes to my github repository even my vault password also will go that's why usually we keep this one in our home directory and we'll pass it while executing this playbook that's how it works is it clear yes and in next class what we are going to do is we are going to integrate our ansible with jenkins and uh, we we take an empty server okay empty ec2 instance will take okay we will run a jenkins job what our jenkins job should do first it install the tomcat up, uh, application 
on top of tomcat application we build a var file and that var file get deployed into the tomcat server and we can access it from the browser that is our next step which we are going to do so that is how we will be keep on increasing our uh, roles and if you see it is quite easy for us to uh, what i can say identify where the problem in your tomcat server assume that some task is not working i will go and check it over here some variable is not uh, fine then i will go and check in the where's are defaults some file is missing i will go and check it over here some handler is missing i will go and check it over here so it could be quite easy to manage uh, if it is in under roles rather than in the uh, single file if it is in single file it would be creating lot of confusion okay yeah one more point i would like to uh, highlight at this moment okay we just created tomcat setup.yml right if you do remember i have used notify over here and handlers i'm adding over here okay uh, why we we need to keep handlers handlers at the end of the playbook is once it read the handlers even though some tasks are there below to handlers it doesn't execute okay so under handlers whatever you keep it treats it as a handlers only okay now let's take uh, this example itself okay quickly i will do a small modification assume that okay here i am using notify i may think that i will ha add handlers immediately to this one now if i copy this one so i deleted this task and if i add the task over here okay what will happen now handlers is going to treat this one also as a handler okay that's why you should not add your tasks below to handlers under handlers you need to keep only your handlers and also make sure that your handler is at the end of your file rather than on uh, what i can say in between of your files now it became it treats these three as a handlers okay that is one point you should remember while uh, doing with handlers clear i'm just updating this uh, all playbooks in my repository okay you can use it get push origin master Okay, all right, that's all for today and see you again on Friday. All right, in previous session, we have seen what is Ansible Vault and also Ansible roles. We are going to deal with Ansible roles again today and uh, we need to see deploying Tomcat and var file using Ansible and set up a Jenkins server using Ansible. So today we are going to deal with these two, how we can set up a Jenkins server using Ansible, then how can we create a Tomcat, Tomcat server and deploy a var file using this Jenkins file. So for that one, we are going to write a Ansible playbook to install Jenkins. If you are doing Jenkins installation manually, this is the procedure we were following, right? We need an EC2 instance and security group with port number 8080. After that, these all are the shell scripts, sorry, shell commands which we are going to execute. Now we are going to convert these shell commands into our Ansible playbook to install our Jenkins. Right? Let's go and write our Ansible playbook. So I'm using Sublime Text Editor to do that one. It starts with the three minuses and name, install Jenkins and hosts. I'm going to specify host name as a Jenkins. I will update my hosts inventory according to this. Become true. Okay. So let me save this file so that you will see the format of our yaml here i'm just adding this one jenkins.yml okay now become true then 
gather facts we don't require gather facts so just i'm giving no then tasks and under tasks first task is we need to install java sorry yeah we need to install wgate if wgate sorry not here yep we need to install java so to install java we need to give m install java 1.8 rather than this one this is the full name okay so this is how we need to give let me give this is the one right open jdk not table just open jdk till here we can give so let's give this command into as a ansible task so install java under java we are installing java by using m module name what is the name of our java that is java 1.8.0 open jdk okay so this is the name and state installed or present whatever we want we can give so that is the first step we need to do next thing once java is installed we need to set up the java home path again it is optional for jenkins so we are just skipping i don't want to make it as a complicated if we want to do this one we may need to execute the inline file sorry inline module and java version once that is done i'm going to do the installation of jenkins to install jenkins we need a package package we need to download it from this link in this link the procedure is there how we can download our packages you can see here these are the steps we need to execute then we can do the m install so first we are downloading wget nothing but let me increase font size so here wget nothing but we are downloading this particular repo and adding to this one here you can see slash etc m repos.d and jenkins dot repo so this is the our local uh, i mean to say on our system in this location we want to copy the jenkins repo so let's do this one wget there is a module called wget to download so downloading jenkins repo so to download we are going to use uh, get url okay get url is the module for the wget but before uh, using get url we also need to check whether wget is installed or not if it is not installed we need to install wget otherwise it won't work so install wget and m name wget state installed okay so we are installing java as well as wget i can use into a single task by using the with uh, what you can say with items but we'll enhance this one later now we are downloading our jenkins so to download jenkins we need to get the url so that is the get url module you can just search for it wget module for ansible you can see here get url is there and if you scroll down you can see get url download the file url then destination where do you want to copy and mode so we just need to give the source and destination in our case where is this value so url is let me grab the url again so this is the url copy this url then destination where do you want to copy i want to copy it over here so once we have copied our url then we need to add key you can see here rpm import we are importing the key jenkins.io because it is a public repository we need to once we have downloaded we need to add key so for that one let me search for module how we can add key 
RHEL key in Ansible. Okay, so authorized keys. Okay, add a repo key. So this is the key. Okay, APT key for Ubuntu for uh, yeah for uh, RHEL it is RPM key. Let's see. You can you can see the uh, syntax RPM key state present. Okay, this time state should come on top. Then the key key URL. So same thing we are going to do. Let's copy this one. I'm just going to make it as a adding Jenkins key. Okay. Then. Shankar. Shankar, what is RPM key? Uh, RPM key, nothing but it is a uh, usually whenever we are downloading public repositories. In this case, you can see. In this case, what we are doing by default, you don't get the Jenkins repository to download packages. If I do on my system, okay, uh, let me take any new system. Yeah, this one RHL server yum install Jenkins if I do okay okay RPM key yeah you can see here it is saying that I could not able to find what is Jenkins because uh, I don't know whether uh, I explained this or not usually we have repositories let me explain quickly usually we have repositories like this so this is the repository that is cloud here. No cloud symbol. Okay, let's take that. This is the repository we have. Okay, this is RHL repo. RHL repository. And by default, all servers, all RHL systems can able to communicate with this RHL repository. And RHL team is keep update the RHL repository with the latest packages whatever latest packages or latest softwares are there they are going to keep it over here but they cannot able to keep all the softwares because we need to get the authentication from the software owners as well right if it is open source yes they can keep sometimes even though if it is open source they need to get the approval from them in those cases they don't keep those that's why whenever I try to use the yum install Jenkins, it's not working. But if I do yum install wget, it works. Why? Because it is a authorized one or it is a open sourced one. So these kind of packages you can install without any issues because those are available in your RHL repository. But whenever you don't get uh, required packages in your default repository, you uh, there could be another repository which you need to communicate now Jenkins what they what they did they didn't allow RHL to keep their packages over here they said that we have separate repository called Jenkins if you need these packages you need to connect to this one so that is the reason we are executing this command okay we are trying to clone the repository once we have cloned it is available sorry it is available or communicated with our system but to connect to this one we need to authenticate ourselves means Jenkins has to tell that okay you have downloaded you need to also authenticate with the key that is where we are configuring this key this key if you have this key then only you can able to communicate this repository and download the packages otherwise you will get this kind of error got it Hello, who asked that question? Nidhi? Yes, Shankar. Okay. So for that one, we are adding the key. So here you can see we are adding the RPM key. If it is a RHL server, we need to add RPM key. In case if we are installing same thing on Ubuntu, then we need to give the uh, APT key, right? So state present and key I'm just giving instead of this one 
we are going to give the key which Jenkins is giving. This is the key we need to add. Okay. So we have added key. Next thing is we need to install Jenkins. Now once we have added our repository, we can able to install Jenkins. If I do Jenkins installation in the above step, it doesn't work because we don't we don't have we were not communicated with the Jenkins report all. So now yum install Jenkins yum state sorry name Schenker, uh, a hyphen yeah, yeah okay yeah, just now i realized okay so name jenkins state installed okay so this is how we can install our jenkins by using ansible playbook for this one what i am going to do is so far in rhel sorry in red hat system there is no jenkins if you search for like this it is not working so i am going to install jenkins on my rhel server so i mean to say that i am making my red hat rhel server as a jenkins server okay so let's this is my ansible server pwd i am under root let me switch as a ans admin clear the screen cdo playbooks here i am going to add a new playbook that is install sorry jenkins setup dot yml okay so here i am adding our playbook all right so i think everything looks good and we need to give the hosts information and the remaining all looks fine for me let's add this one and uh, hosts file we need to update va hosts we have hosts file here itself so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a separate group called jenkins under jenkins i'm going to give the ip address of our rhl server so i am giving private ip address that's it so now what does it do a server can be part of multiple groups here there is no issue at all so now if i execute my ansible playbook it is trying to install on our rh it is trying to install uh, execute on our rhl server it's only so ansible playbook minus i hosts and minus c okay java was already installed because we were setting it setting up this one as a uh, what i can say tomcat server right that's the reason it's already there even wget also but uh, downloading and uh, adding key is successful but after that installing it is error why because we are trying with minus c right so this is not actually downloaded so now we'll execute same playbook without minus c so this time the jenkins should be uh, uh, installed and i i should able to access the my what i can say i can able to access my rhl server from the browser whenever i access it i should get the um, oops. Hmm. so i should get the uh, jenkins page okay so before that one let me check whether anything is running on port number 8080 net start minus t u l p n grep 8080 why because if already something is running it doesn't start okay so nothing is running so far the tom because we have installed the tomcat tomcat also use the po same port number right that's the reason okay now let's execute 
Uh, we need to add one more step here. Once we installed, we need to start the services. We missed that. So now it's installing Jenkins. Meantime, I will add that step. So we should add one more step. That is to start the services. So name start Jenkins services service module we are going to use for this name service name is Jenkins state started and enable yes okay this enable means uh, even after rebooting your system still the Jenkins server will start if I don't give this one You need to restart your Jenkins. You need to start your Jenkins every restart or stop and start Okay, it's still happening. We'll add this one once it is completed Any questions? We can little enhance this script uh, by what I can say using wget over here or else first directly we can download it then we can try to install all three together rather than doing independently then we can start okay I will just show you that enhancement once it is done yes it is installed now if I check in this system the services is not running so service Jenkins status you can see Jenkins is installed and service is not running. I will update my Ansible playbook for that. Shift G. Okay, I'm at the end of the This one we should add. All right, again, I'm rerunning it. Okay, what's the error? Is there any type of module enabled? Okay, it is enabled here, sorry. All right, now Jenkins has been started. Let's check for the service. It's running. And if I go to browser with this IP and 8080, yes, you can see here Jenkins has been configured on RHL system and we just installed with our Ansible playbook. So this is how we can write an Ansible playbook to install Jenkins now what we can do is we can just uh, update this little bit that is here I will give just item and it should be in quotes then with underscore items here i can give my item item names that is java 1.8.0 minus open sorry dot open dot or minus is that minus open jdk minus jdk then wget okay so this is how we can give rather than splitting it into two sorry two tasks right so i just saved it any questions 
so so far what we have done is we have done with the Jenkins we have just completed Jenkins installation but our Ansible playbook works with only RHL system assume that I may install on Ubuntu system as well if that is the case again I need to add few more tasks according to the Ubuntu operating system like Jenkins installation we need to give the apt module and this too is uh, of course same again uh, installing Jenkins again apt module services this also works so we need to update our uh, playbook according to that one so this is moreover it is a generic again you need not to write your playbook independently so if you want to utilize already written playbooks nothing but you don't want to start from the scratch which is already quite a generic one or quite common one then there is a community who can help us to give such kind of roles roles nothing but so far we have written it in an ansible playbook we can get it uh, sorry we can convert it as a role as well but usually people will give a role to do such kind of installations let's take an example uh, sorry now if I want to get any roles who is already written and uh, if I want to utilize where can I get so that is where we will get the Ansible Galaxy if you search for Ansible Galaxy so Ansible Galaxy is a public community for sharing of your Ansible roles okay so here there are multiple options which playbooks do you need and you can choose that particular category and you can search for that playbook let's take an example that i need a tomcat server playbook sorry uh, yeah tomcat installation playbook it is something related to the web application so if i go here you can check you can see a lot of authors authors nothing but who is updating their ansible playbooks and uh, how many people has downloaded so when this was updated okay you can see here when this was updated like this people will be updating their ansible playbooks and keep it and you can see this guy it is almost 37 lakhs downloads are there this particular php playbook this apache 35 uh, 35 lakhs downloads so we need uh, assume that we need apache web application then we can click over here okay so here he was up he has updated this under on 23 days ago and you can see how can you download it so ansible galaxy install uh, gerlin guy dot apache okay you can copy this one and you can download it so this is the public community where you can check out your ansible uh, necessary ansible playbooks so you can download it and uh, whatever default version is you are downloading if it is not suitable for your environment you can update it according to your environment and execute it so this is the one of the easiest way to use or uh, utilize your sorry uh, yep, uh, getting the playbooks from your public community okay and if you do remember even whenever we are creating our ansible roles we have executed this command right ansible sorry not here in our system so clear the screen ansible galaxy and we have done init so init nothing but initialize it and we have given as a web server sorry tomcat installation right so something like this you can give whenever you give it is going to create a directory structure that's it okay so if you see here tomcat role has been created and uh, you can see all the default files if i give the tree all the empty directory structure has been created similar way if you want to get i'm coming out here ls and a similar way if i want to get it any playbook for example i'm going here and i will search for tomcat i need the tomcat playbook okay it's still loading i think i'm going back again so i will search for tomcat you can see here 
tomcat ansible role tomcat tomcat there are lot of options are there by looking here you can download you can see here 26000 downloads so whatever is having highest downloads it means that that is a, a more efficient way you can see here ansible role installation uh, ansible role to install and configure apache tomcat and sent os and rhl so let's open this one and uh, you can see here you can use this command ansible galaxy install so and so so and so by using this one you can download this particular role into your system so you if you want to know about readme you can see the readme file how does it work and what you need to do you can see here installation and example playbook how you need to execute it this is in this playbook you are going to call your roles you can see here roles so like this we have the readme file you must go or uh, you must go and read the readme file otherwise it is quite difficult for you to follow the uh, a role why because they have given their assumptions under readme if you don't follow readme you will mess up something because you need to provide some variable names but you miss those variables so it installs some default variables all this stuff will happen if you do remember in tomcat system we are going to set up a user right you can see here tomcat user and we might set up the tomcat password as a secret here you can see here this is the password even example user is creating and this is the password if you don't follow this one you cannot understand uh, what is the default password it is creating and how does it work right so this is the readme file which you need to go through with whenever you are downloading any role from ansible galaxy now we'll we'll download it in our system so ansible galaxy i'm just going to download it ansible galaxy and go here so let's execute this one this time this is not in it this is install whenever you do install it is going to check for this particular playbook in the ansible galaxy server okay let's execute it okay so download is successful once you, it is downloaded you can see here there is no playbook called with this name right so usually whenever you download your playbooks it will go and sit in your home directory okay in home directory i am at my ans admin home directory here if you give ls minus la there is a default dot ansible sorry there is a hidden file called dot ansible get created under this you can find your roles you can see here galaxy token and uh, this is the roles if you go to roles you can see the role which you just downloaded so usually whenever you do ansible galaxy install it will go and create a dot ansible directory in your local sorry in your home directory under that you will find roles in these roles it is going to download now let's go okay so this is this could be very uh, big playbook i hope and uh, also a lot of options are there it will come with the practice if you want to write this kind of playbooks okay but anyway you just to see this there is a default handlers okay license metadata modules all these are there and uh, this is the actual file you need to first open so tasks so go inside to tasks if you go here because this is the root of your file from here only it is going to start if you read this one or try to understand this one then only you can understand other stuff so under tasks we have a main.yml cat main.yml so in our case we might have only main.yml but if you see here apart from main.yml they have given the another uh, names okay so we'll see how does it help for this particular task if you see instead of keeping because again what and all he is doing configuring install sorry installing configuring set up non production permissions and set pro, uh, production uh, permissions and uninstall like this there are various steps are there so rather than keeping all the tasks in a single main file again we can split that into the different 
files and we can call those by using include option you can see here include option and when when we are going to install install.yml when tomcat state is present nothing but whenever we want to install this we need to provide of course tomcat status we need to provide then only uh, it is going to call this one then you can see here uninstall when we call the option okay whenever we give the tomcat state as a option then only it is going to uh, call this particular playbook like this we can include other playbooks but by default we need to check out the install.yml where we have all the steps how we can install you can see here lot of variables we are using but uh, if you try to understand it is similar to how we have done so first we are installing java java name we are giving variable and with items what is the java package name and when we want to install java package then check the tomcat is already installed in this path okay by default it is going to some path and checking for whether tomcat is available or not so we are registering whether tomcat is installed or not is installed nothing but this is the keyword okay you should follow the this keyword so register it is going to sorry this is not keyword this is a variable kind of thing whatever output you are going to get that output is stored over here then create a group then create user create temp directory like this all are variables these variables will be available under your default section because if you provide custom variables then you need to update your vars file otherwise all these variables are defined under the default so some version he might assumed and uh, taken users and all this stuff he is going to specify in the defaults so that's how it works let's go back to again over here and go to defaults and you can see here main.yml you can see some of the default parameters are there you can see here cat main.yml yep you can see here default files for the tomcat ansible role see here tomcat state present nothing but if you just execute that playbook it just treat the tomcat state as a present and if you do remember here we are using right state which state when condition we are giving right there it is yeah here include when condition we are using tomcat state present nothing but by default if you don't provide any variable it try to install the tomcat and the tomcat version which version it is trying to install 8.5.42 but latest version is 8.5.56 is there so you can change either here or you can take this variable and define in the variables file like this we have lot of options and by default it is going to install under opt okay so all this information is there and by default port number is 8080 it is not changing anything configuration file so all this information is there so this is how we can import roles from your ansible galaxy is that clear that is how uh, ansible galaxy works here okay so we have seen that how to install jenkins and we have seen how the ansible galaxy does work and it is more advanced feature ansible galaxy once you are familiarized with roles uh, very well then only you can start using ansible galaxy but if you are uh, uh, fine to what i can say use roles uh, even though you, you don't write okay then you can go with this one but the problem here is it comes with a lot of default settings you may not identify which where you need to change uh, which variables until you you have full understanding of roles that's why usually uh, for beginners it is better to write their own ansible playbooks or roles so that they have full control even though if it is not much customized but here whatever we are getting it will be more like a uh, suitable for any environment until you know the variables how does it work clear even we will have the jenkins as well okay you can search for jenkins we have written a simple ansible playbook but if you go here yes jenkins 7000 downloads are there another are there yeah 
this is nexus we don't need nexus but jenkins we can install so so i'm just copying this one and again i'm going to execute this one this time it is going to download jenkins all right it's downloaded jenkins i'm under roles directory itself you can see here this is the lean delivery jenkins if i go inside again here you can see the readme file better to read the readme file whenever you are you want to use the default ones and go inside to tasks ls and you can see here under these tasks so many are there again in this we need to concentrate main why because this is the default file which calls and this file can call any of these files okay so va sorry more main.yml you can see here including variables error control loops okay a lot of stuff is there here first he is upgrading pip pip through pip he is installing installing pip packages creating a group creating user and you can see here jenkins in uh, repository installation okay so this is what we were doing right first jenkins repository we were installing then jenkins installation he is calling from other uh, yaml file we need to go and get the information from this repository sorry this yaml file this directory i can say like this there are a lot of options here he is restarting it is more advanced which you can set up lot of things by using this okay maybe you can find out the simple one ansible ray sorry ansible role jenkins slave installation we don't require ansible role to install jenkins slave system and some plugins i think this is simple one let's try it each one have the custom name okay so i'm going back and again i'm executing okay so here i have just now in open this is the one we have downloaded and you can see the tasks here cat main.yml this is also lengthy playbook yeah first thing he is including other roles as well with this one we got other roles as well open jdk these libraries also we got anyway if you see install os family so which os we are installing i think so role install jenkins we are installing it is calling from other file and again role configuring the jenkins user ensure jenkins is installed configuring the jenkins launch launching settings restarting jenkins all these configurations are there okay now okay let's come back so that's what i would like to discuss about ansible galaxy now we are going to see how we can deploy a var file on the tomcat server now till now what we have done we have set up the jenkins server and administrative password is available over here let me complete the setup of this jenkins server so cat okay i'm a ans admin sudo sorry sudo cat this is the password and continue oops not here yeah sorry sudo cat there also i have installed i think sudo cat i was experimenting on my system last time so there i installed i think okay here this is the password for this system 
and continue and install the suggested plugins uh, whatever the, uh, Jenkins roles we have downloaded in that all these stuffs might be included okay so select install suggested plugins I don't want to go to the selector plugins let it install the default plugins meantime what i will do i'm going to set up an ansible playbook to deploy a var file on the target system okay so this is my ansible server go to my home directory under here playbooks okay so we have already a role to set up the tomcat right go inside to the tomcat and uh, cat tasks dot main dot yml so in this system what we are doing by this time we are just setting up the uh, tomcat and we are starting the services now i would like to copy my var file onto this system right so to copy there are multiple ways we can do we can directly copy it from the jenkins server itself or else Yeah, we can copy it to Jenkins server, then I will update this one. So username, I'm creating a user called Jenkins and password is Jenkins. Jenkins at one, two, three. All right, so let's continue and uh, let it be the url and start using jenkins okay so now my jenkins system is ready now i need to create a new job which is going to set up the tomcat on the target system and install a var file okay so for that purpose quickly i'm going to launch a new system launch a new system I'm going to launch a uh, Red Hat or Amazon Linux because we are going to deal with the RHL systems. So T2 micro name Tomcat temp server. DevOps SG, right? So 80, 80 to 90. Okay, we have launched a system. In this system, I need to install Tomcat and also deploy my application. That is my requirement. Either I can write my Jenkins playbook, sorry, Jenkins pipeline script, or else I can create a Jenkins file, sorry, Jenkins job for this one. I'm going to do with the both the cases in while we were discussing about playbooks we haven't discussed about uh, sorry while we were discussing about Jenkins uh, pipeline scripts we haven't discussed about how to deploy on Tomcat server in today's session we are going to write a Jenkins pipeline to deploy on a Tomcat server all right so what I can say my system is ready I need to make this one as a Ansible client right so let's connect to this one so this procedure you know right creating user and enabling password based authentication without password based authentication still we can communicate with this system okay so i have created my system and i am becoming a root First thing, user add Tomcat I am giving rather than is uh, ANS admin. Okay, or else let me create ANS admin itself and password ANS admin ANS ABC one two three. We have given ABC one two three ABC one two three, and I am enabling password based authentication SSH sshd underscore config and 
password based authentication no to yes that's it and service sshd reload now i need to copy my ssh keys so that i can make this one as a slave ip addr so i am getting the ip address of new system and will update in my let me go to my playbooks okay yeah so here i am updating under hosts file so here i am creating one more group that is tomcat okay i am giving this ip address then ssh copy id i am giving the ip address yes to connect okay i am giving the password abc123 right okay we have copied now if i check ssh to the target system i can log in without password it means my system is ansible client now my case is i want to install tomcat on the new system on this system nothing is installed so far it is a fresh system i want to install tomcat on this system then deploy the var file let's create a jenkins job to do that one so if you do remember to deploy on tomcat server we need a uh, plugin called deploy to container let's install that one first we'll go with our uh, easiest way then we'll uh, keep on adding the complexity for that one okay jenkins gui has been changed i think in the latest version okay manage plugins and uh, available it looks so good man deploy on deploy to yeah you can see here deploy to container plugin is there select this one and install without restart and uh, by default to git or uh, git plugin is already installed even uh, maven also so we have installed yeah, few other things we need to do that is a java home path we need to set up maven okay then rather than using new system what we are going to do we are going to use the existing system because we need to do additional configurations even i should install maven as well so let me start the existing system so i'm just copying the public ip public dns sorry so 8080 let me close all the tabs okay maybe is it still up coming up So eight zero eight zero. All right, our server is coming up. Here we have already everything is set up, so we can directly create our job. Even if you want to do the Maven installation as well by using your Ansible playbook, you can do that one. Maybe take that one as the assignment. Okay, you can enhance the playbook to install Maven as well. So this is our Jenkins system. Now I am going to create a new job because here we have all the plugins and everything. And I'm creating a Maven project before that. Tomcat app deployment. Okay. So Maven project. so git url i'm choosing and uh, git url i'm taking the hello world program 
this hello world I'm taking. Take this repository. Then what we want to do, we want to build this clean package install. We can directly give clean install as well. Then post build actions here, deploy to container. Okay. So what we need to do is before deploying the container on the this system. Okay, this system we are doing right. But before deploying on this system, we need to set up our Tomcat server. Okay, so for setting up Tomcat server, we have Ansible playbook, right? That Ansible playbook we need to execute. That Ansible playbook we need to execute on this system. So now, if you try to understand the way, how does it work? Jenkins has to initiate your Ansible server. Jenkins has to initiate your Ansible server to run Ansible playbook on the target system. Let me draw it. So this is my Jenkins server and this is my Ansible server and this is my Tomcat server. Now to run I want to install Tomcat over here by using Ansible server. Okay, so now I want to install Tomcat on my Tomcat system by using Ansible. But Ansible, somebody has to tell to Ansible that execute this Ansible playbook. That is where Jenkins will come and has to has to oh sorry yeah Jenkins has to come and initiate this Ansible playbook. For that we need to add our Ansible to the Jenkins. Uh, sorry, for that we need to authenticate our Jenkins to execute this Ansible playbook on the Ansible system. For that we need one more plugin that is publish over SSH plugin. Okay, so sorry, not here. In in Jenkins, we need publish over SSH plugin. Let me save this job. We'll come here and do again. So go to Jenkins, manage Jenkins, and uh, plugins available. Okay, publish over SSH. Yep, you can see here publish over SSH is a plugin which will help us that okay send build artifacts over SSH or we can execute some commands on the target system. So install without restart. Let me refresh it. Yeah, installation is successful. Now again go back and uh, what is our last update? Yeah, Tom, Tomcat app deployment. Open this file and configure. So, so far, what we are doing, we are just downloading the repository and building it. Let's execute once just to check out that whether our build is successful or not. Build now. Okay, build is successful. It means that it is able to build our code and generate the var file. Next thing, we are going to modify this playbook to execute our Ansible playbook. Okay, to execute our Ansible playbook, we need to add. We have installed Ansible. Sorry, publish our SSH, right? We need to add our Ansible server information under system configure systems. Okay, under configure systems, we need to add our Ansible system information. Let's go and do that. So if you scroll down somewhere, you can see publish our SSH. Yep, you can see here publish our SSH and here you need to add your server information. Passphrase is not there. Okay. Path of the file SSH servers. Okay. Yep. You can see here SSH servers. You need to add a SSH server. 
so click over here and SSH server name I'm giving Ansible server and host name I'm going to give the IP address of our Ansible server so what is the IP address this is the IP address right hold on IP ADDR. so this is the IP address of our Ansible server then username so you can connect to this system as a ans admin user and remote directory is not required then you need to provide the password for that go to advanced and here you need to provide you use use password authentication you need to choose that option and here you need to provide the password so ans admin password is abc123 once you have provided this information you need to test it whether it is successfully connected to our ansible system or not i'm exp explaining one more time let me remove it so what you need to do is go to the publish over ssh here you need to add your ssh server so add and you need to provide your ansible and host name ip address of your system this name can be anything just for recognition and username as a which user i want to run the ansible playbook on the target system you need to run as a ansible user and go to advanced here if you have the what i can say we are providing password right so we should give choose this option okay here we should give the passphrase abc123 what it is saying remote directory is not mandatory these three are mandatory of course it is there anyway test connection it is success nothing but it could able to communicate apply and save so now again go to our tomcat job then configure and we are adding one more step that is add publish over ssh execute build execute shell top level yep you can see here send files or execute commands over ssh so this is the option you should choose and here you can provide your system ssh server we have only one server so that is why it is propagated only ansible and source file nothing but if you are copying any files you need to specify over here but we are not copying any files we want to execute command on the target system so usually to install our apache tomcat what is the command we are executing clear the screen so pwd so under this directory we have tomcat setup right so tomcat setup is there ansible playbook minus i hosts tomcat setup okay this is what we are sorry not tomcat setup this one right ansible playbook tomcat setup dot yml so this is the playbook we are executing here let me open the tomcat setup dot yml no not this file which file we have created yeah this one right ansible role so if i want to install tomcat on the target system i need to give ansible playbook minus i hosts tomcat role okay tomcat role dot yml if i execute this one it is going to execute on the hosts which you specified over here i need to update this one so same command we are going to give in our ansible playbook sorry jenkins playbook sorry jenkins job so go here and uh, on which server we want to execute this one we just named it as a tomcat server tomcat right so i am giving just a tomcat and if i check for my hosts file there is a tomcat group under this on this group it is in only one server is there in this server it is going to execute that playbook clear and let me validate my ansible playbook ansible playbook 
minus i hosts tomcat minus underscore roller yeah tomcat underscore role dot yml minus c just i'm validating it and yep it is saying that missing sudo password nothing but we haven't added our ans admin user to the sudo's file over here so vi sudo shift g this is one step we have missed ans admin and save this file all right so now let's execute one more time okay it looks good and extracting packages anyway it doesn't happen why because we are executing with minus c command now same command we need to execute from our jenkins job so go back to our jenkins job and uh, give this command but the problem here with this command is we are going to give this one and uh, it cannot able to identify the path while executing this command we are doing from the where from this location we are doing so we need to give either this full path of your ansible playbook uh, ansible playbook and ansible host or else go inside to this one and execute it something like this you need to change so in front of your hosts file full path of your hosts file it is available under this path right let me increase size so and even role also in front of role you need to give like this okay so this is how you can give the playbook or else other way is if it is confusing you can give one more command that is cd okay go inside to that one and then execute this playbook these two playbooks are executed continuously all right apply save are you guys with me so far just give you a quick confirmation in the chat window remaining people if you lost somewhere please let me know okay nothing we are doing here we are just trying to deploy tomcat application by using a jenkins job so first we are building the code using jenkins then we also giving a instruction to our ansible playbook sorry ansible server to execute this ansible playbook to install tomcat on the target system once it is installed we need to do the var file deployment but uh, let's first we'll deploy the tomcat then we'll enhance our job again okay apply and save now let's execute once i build this one what should happen okay this system what i can say this system this is the target system in this system under opt tomcat should set up and uh, tomcat should be up and running whenever i execute ps minus cf grep tomcat the services should be running then i should access this application from the browser all right so let's execute now build now i'm building this job If you can see here it is running ansible playbook it is installing java it is downloading tomcat packages and changing the permissions and starting the tomcat it is successful and if i go and check on my system i can see the tomcat is running and i should access this application from the browser so tomcat test server so take the public ip public dns colon 8080 sorry it runs on 8081 right because we are copying a file onto this location you can see here tomcat is installed 
So now Tomcat is installation is completed. Now I want to deploy my application. So far we are just building the code. Configure. So far we are just building the code and deploying the Tomcat, but still we are not deploying our var file over here. And you know right how we can deploy var file on the target system. That is under post build actions. You can deploy ER var var or ER to to a container. And here you can choose the var file that is web app slash target slash star dot var. Okay. In this location, the var file is created, right? Even you can check that path by going to again your job. I'm opening a new page. And if you go to workspace, you can see here web app target. Here you have a var file. That is the path I have given web app target var file. So I will give the var file name directly. So this is the path that is where var file is there. Deploy to container and I need yeah, to choose. Thank you. Yeah. Web app, yes. So web app target. Next credentials. We haven't added any credentials because uh, that server is uh, what I can say. We haven't enabled that one. So here we need to add credentials and deploy. But I don't want to do with this publish over SSH because everything I need to come and configure over here, right? Rather than that one, what I will do, I will copy this var file. Okay, whatever var file we get, that var file, I will copy it onto the Ansible server itself and Ansible let it copy into the target system. Okay, so we are going to copy var file onto the Ansible server and Ansible server is going to copy that one onto the Tomcat server. Same thing. Now I have initialized Ansible playbook to install Tomcat over here. Now what I will do, I will keep my var file. I will keep once I created var file, I will keep it in Ansible and do whatever you want. I will tell to Ansible that do whatever you want. I will just give the var file to you. Okay. Usually var file we don't store over here. We will store in the artifactory, right? So something like this, we will have one more system called artifactory. So var file we copy over here and uh, your Ansible playbook should download from the artifactory to your uh, what I can say Ansible system or else you can directly execute initiate your artifactory to copy that onto the target system either way is works. Okay, but uh, we are yet to configure all this stuff for rather than that one. We are going to just uh, copy the artifactory into the Ansible system and Ansible is again going to copy that onto the target system. Okay, so for that one we need to do few modifications to our job that is First send public send files or execute commands over SSH. Okay. This is to run Ansible playbook here itself. You can specify the your path where you want to copy your file. Sorry. What file you want to copy and where do you want to copy? So I want to copy web app. Target slash. What is the where file name? Web app dot where. So this where file. Okay, remove prefix nothing but this entire uh, stuff it is going to remove. Okay, I, while copying, I want to remove this prefix. I don't need this directory structure. Otherwise, what does it do? It creates this web app target directory in the target system and copies. And where do you want to copy this file? I want to copy this one into my home directory in this location only. Under Ansible playbooks only, I want to copy. Okay. So now I'm going to apply save. Let's execute one more time. If I build this time, the deployment will, uh, sorry, deployment is not yet happen, but it is going to copy our var files onto the target system. Nothing but in Ansible system. In this location, you can see a var file once that is completed successfully. Okay, it is installing. Uh, Tomcat anyway, it is already there. So nothing to do much over here. 
okay you can see here transferred one file and if i go and check over here so web app docket where we are copying slash home ansible playbooks okay same okay it hasn't copied this is the last one so let me check what was the earlier output okay files transferred zero now it's transferred remote directory home let me go only start this one okay let me give just uh, ans admin and build it again this is correct web app target remove this one apply save hold on so let me check my under my home directory yep you can see here it's created uh, what I can say under web app home directory. Why it is not creating under exact path? UWD. There could be some reason. Let me okay. I need to give slash I think at the end let me okay double slash we should give here I missed it so otherwise it cannot able to recognize these directories we should give the double slashes then only it can identify apply save let's execute again build now So now it is executed CD. Okay, this time it is successful. Let me try it out again. LS minus LTR. CD playbooks LS minus LTR. Yes, now you can see here where file has been copied over here. Now this var file I want to copy it onto target system, right? So I will just enhance my Ansible role to copy this file onto the target system. So let's enhance this one. VA Tomcat setup. Okay, we are using role right tasks main.yml. Here I'm going to add one more role. That is again copy only okay copy where file so we want to copy this one src in my current location web app dot where is there and where do you want to copy destination should be your slash opt and tomcat here we have a web app directory Okay, into this directory we should copy. I will just show you. So this is the Tomcat server slash opt Apache Tomcat. Sorry. Apache Tomcat. Here we have a directory called web app. In this directory we should copy. So this is the path I have given over here. So anyway, this is variable, right? This path is variable Tomcat package and web app is there. This location we are copying. And for your information, we should have access to this location. Anyway, we are doing it as a root. There won't be any issue. Now let's save this file. And uh, I will execute the Tomcat job. 
again and this time what will happen in this location under slash web app okay this is the path if i execute this one i should get my application at this time there is no application in this location once it is deployed we will get the application now let's build it again okay so everything is done restart tomcat copy a where file is done so let's execute why it is not is it copied properly so this is the target system mm -hmm. it's not copied oh uh, shankar actually this uh, yeah it's web apps yes so this is web apps let's build it again okay now it is successful let me load it and you can see welcome to uh, Velaxi technologies deploying using Jenkins pipeline okay this is the content we have so this is how we can deploy a application by using Jenkins and Ansible if you see the Ansible rather than configuration management configuration management nothing but we are configuring the system installing Tomcat is a configuration management and uh, we also doing the copying the var file nothing but we are doing deployment as well so we this is how we can use it as a deployment as well so to validate it one more time what i will do i will just modify our code this is our code right so go to web app and i will enable the pole acm on our job just to make sure configure so pole acm nothing but if there is any change in my code please execute this job okay so that is the meaning it is going to one two three four five yes save so it is going to check my code every one one minute and if there is any changes it is going to do the build i think initially whenever you set up it is going to trigger a build anyway either seventh build or eighth build should happen meantime i will update my code so index.jsp here i am just removing or updating this line that deploying using setup and deploy using ansible okay and preview changes i am just updating single line and i have committed and if you go here it automatically triggers our job and uh, it should deploy on our system and the latest code you can see over here without touching anything and also if you see what will happen assume that your tomcat server went down let it get run okay assume that your tomcat server went down and you could not able to recover that system then still you don't have any problem because your code has been converted as a script you just create a new instance and you execute this particular job it automatically deploys the tomcat and deploy the application maybe in our case we are doing uh, what i can say a test uh, page but usually it could be a application right let me refresh it you can see here whatever changes we have done it has been available so this is how we can make our environment more robust and uh, very easy for our deployments okay any questions i know that it could be a little bit heavy for today but still uh, you understand the concept right how does it work
Shankar, can you uh, quick recap? Yeah, I will do that. So what we have done is uh, in uh, first thing is we have set up a Jenkins server by using Ansible. Then we have done uh, Tomcat setup. Sorry, Tomcat setup by using Ansible again. But while doing Tomcat setup, we have we want to do the deployment as well. So for that one, what we have done is we have used our Jenkins system and we have written our Ansible playbook anyway over here and we set up a new Tomcat server. Maybe it is a new Tomcat server, but it is empty. Nothing is there inside the Tomcat. OK, it is fresh and empty system. So my Ansible system can able to set up Tomcat over here. OK, once the Tomcat is set up, then I want to deploy a where file over here. But where is our where file is generating under Jenkins? So whenever we generate any where file in Jenkins, we are copying it to Ansible. And we have modified our Ansible playbook to take this where file and deploy it onto the Tomcat server along with the Tomcat installation. That is what happened. And uh, here, instead of coming to Ansible and executing our Ansible playbook, we went to Jenkins and we installed a plugin called Publish Over SSH. The Publish Over SSH plugin can initiate any jobs in the remote system. Rather than coming here and executing Ansible playbook in Jenkins, I installed publish over SSH there. I have specified that go and execute Ansible playbook on the Ansible system. What does that playbook does do? It is going to deploy the Tomcat. That is the initial thing. It happens next. What we have done in our Jenkins job again. We modified something. Sorry again. We modified our job and we said that whatever where file I generate usually where file will be available in the Jenkins server itself in the this location workspace under workspace web app and target in this location usually it is available this may be changed but the target is common for every job under target you can see the where file and where file name also may change okay in our case the web app slash target slash web app dot where is the where file name so in my job i specified that okay copy the web app where file into the ansible and also in Ansible playbook, we have modified to copy this where file onto the Tomcat system. That is how the continuation happens. Now, whenever I execute job, Ansible is going to initiate your Ansible. Play, uh, sorry, Jenkins will build the where file. Once where file is built, it initiate the Ansible playbook and Ansible playbook create. Uh, sorry, set up Tomcat on target system. If it is not installed, if it is already installed, nothing to do then also Jenkins once initiated Ansible playbook. It also copies the where file onto the Ansible system and Ansible system again copy the where file onto the tar target system. That is what this job is doing. If I go to configure. What I will do first I will clone the code from Jenkins git. This is Polisium Polisium nothing but if any changes are there in this code. Every minute it will go and check if there is any changes. It pull the latest code and do the build automatically. That is Polisium does do. Then building the job we are do, building with the Maven. So it is building once it is built. Uh, the code will be stored under web app target where. Okay, that is where where file get stored. Once where file get stored, I'm initial initializing Ansible to copy the where file onto Ansible playbook into this location. Then execute this Ansible role. Nothing but this Ansible role is going to set up the Tomcat and copy this particular where file onto the target Tomcat system. That is what we are doing. Is it clear? Yes, Shankar. I mean, the concept is clear. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, all right. If you don't have any questions, we can stop over here. Okay, that's all we can talk more like Ansible. And we just left out uh, AWX. Okay, AWX, we cannot able to talk at this moment. Uh, but just to give you a brief, 
whatever ansible cli we are doing same thing we can do it from the gui that is where awx comes into the picture awx or we can call it as a ansible tower okay we'll discuss that one at the end of our training when we are doing our projects now it will be a bit confusing for you guys then ansible inventory maybe in next session we are going to talk about ansible inventory hardly 15 to 20 minutes then we move on to the sonar cube in today's lecture we are going to talk about ansible inventory then followed by we are going to just have a chit chat because sonar cube would be a a, a single class so i'm still preparing ppts for that one maybe on wednesday i'm going to take sonar cube class uh, then i think uh, from my side what is left out grafana and prometheus is left out i'm going to cover those once we complete docker and kubernetes so from monday praveen is going to uh, take docker and kubernetes classes once he has completed then again i will jump back and uh, we'll discuss our uh, grafana and prometheus then followed by uh, projects we are going to do by using all these tools whatever we learned in our course so that's how uh, it is planned so that is the one update i would like to share so mm, yep first let's start with the inventory then we'll discuss about uh, what and all we learned so far and uh, if you need any help uh, whatever we have done we are going to see in this week uh, because once it is done i i will be disappear for uh, 10 to 15 days not 10 to 15 days he is going to take three weeks okay so three weeks he is going to take almost uh, I, I will not be available for next three weeks to discuss with you guys so you should practice whatever we have covered so far and be ready for the devops and sorry docker and kubernetes classes right so let's start with inventory we are going to discuss uh, if you have any questions at the after we completion of this ansible inventory right so this is my ansible server and here i have my rhl server so for what we are doing we are just we have just created a hosts file and we just created groups you can see here we created groups under groups we kept our servers and start working on this one and uh, you can use more effectively your hosts file if you want okay because hosts file also given or instead of host file i can call it as a inventory file inventory file also given lot of features if you want to use some variables or some customization for your system so that is the uh, advantage sorry that is the future of inventory if that is the feature of inventory to use in our playbooks but so far we are just doing uh, server details or we are just keeping server details and we 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 are running our playbooks but in real world most of the cases it looks like this we don't uh, uh, bring or we don't uh, what i can say load with the, with other variables or other features in the inventory usually we use the separate files like uh, uh, variables files we use to uh, give the variables or to provide the variables let's go and see uh, the documentation of ansible variables sorry not ansible variables ansible inventory so how to build your inventory it is a very good documentation we can just follow so this is about ansible documentary and if you see here the default inventory is a sorry the default location for inventory is a file called slash etc ansible hosts as we discussed this is the default inventory file you can specify a different inventory file at the command line by using minus i path so this is how we are providing right so for whatever commands we are executing ansible playbook minus i 
and followed by our hosts path we are giving where exactly the hosts file or inventory file located right you can also use multiple inventory files at the same time and pull inventory from the dynamic or cloud uh, sources or different formats okay all this stuff that's okay now this is this is the type we are using so far you can see the inventory file can be in one of many formats depending upon inventory plugins you have the most common format are ini nothing but inventory or yml you can still write your inventory file in the yml format as well so if it is yml it would be little differ okay but we mostly use the ini format so here you can see this is how we are doing we created our web servers and db servers groups and we kept passwords sorry ip addresses why we are using ip addresses because we don't have uh, host names for those one of course we can use host names instead of uh, ip addresses as well okay this is the way we are defining it at this moment next thing you can see here default groups there are two default groups all and ungrouped the all uh, group consists every host nothing but whatever servers are there in your hosts or inventory file whenever you specify all it is going to take the all the inventory next one is ungrouped also is there group contains all the hosts doesn't have another group aside from all means you can add few ip addresses without groups as well then whenever you say ungrouped then it is going to call which is not specified in the any group next hosts in multiple groups so this we have already tried we can create a single host can be part of multiple groups okay this child one you can ignore this is yml format they have de defined so children's are there that we don't require we don't deal with those much but we can do the db servers he defined in the again it is a yml format but usually we specify the db servers and the hosts information next adding range of hosts this is another way of using uh, hosts assume that you have the same pattern if you have lot of hosts with a similar pattern you can add them as a range that listens each mission specifically so here assume that you are you have www.01.example.com 02.example.com 03.example.com like that up to 50 you have then rather than independently specifying those names you can keep it like this 01 colon 50 if you give it will take 0 to 50 let's uh, execute similar kind of example over here so assume that I have hosts yeah here I'm going to take okay 120 100 to 126 something like this 100 colon 126 so whenever I say this one it is going to try to this also come under to the same range right so it is 100 so come under to the same range so let's save this one and it is app servers app servers i am giving it should try to connect almost 26 servers 0 to uh, what i can say 126 among them whatever servers are reachable it is going to connect to those systems anyway most of our servers are down it may or may not connect you can see here it is trying to connect each server okay it connected only one server that server is up and running okay let local host server it's connected why it is because of okay local host also come under to this group so it is connected to the local host server that's okay so this is how we can use if we have the range of systems even instead of numbers you can specify the alpha alphabetic orders as well assume that you will have www.a dot example dot com b dot example dot com same thing we can do somewhere yeah you can see here db a colon f from a to f you have 
servers you can connect to this one next one is uh, this is uh, another one adding variables to the inventory so i was talking about we can add variables to our inventory as well right so this feature also is available here we can add our variables something like this host name okay http port what is the port number of your application in this system the http port number you need to use this one so uh, in our ansible playbook we use the http port as a variable and we are passing this http variable port uh, while what i can say while through the hosts file and also max requests per child you you can specify how many requests you can send it to this particular server and how many requests you can send it to this particular server something like this you can define but these variables are uh, should be follow the same methodology okay sorry not this one this one okay so this kind of variables you need to follow the same method methodology if you see you can store variable values that relate to specific hosts or group in your inventory to start with you may add variables directly to the hosts and groups in your mission invent sorry in your main inventory file as you add more and more managed nodes as, as you add more and more managed nodes to your Ansible inventory, however, you would likely want to store variables in a separate hosts or group var variables files. So if you are adding more, you need to add the separate host and uh, group variables file. But anyway, so variables we are going to define in another way. I'm just going to discuss in a couple of minutes but this is how we can define variables also inside the inventory variable inventory file and uh, this is quite commonly we use okay if i want to do some activities on my local system i use the local host and also ansible connection local so this is what we are going to use uh, let me try to do this one in our hosts file wherever local host is there we will specify the connection ansible connection local and this must be a what i can say uh, predefined variable you cannot change this name whenever you give the ansible connection then only it will treat it as a local so what do you mean by local is whenever you try to access ansible variable sorry ansible whenever you try to execute ansible file it is going to go through with the proper steps nothing but uh, it treat it as a different system for example if i am trying to do some activity on this system whenever you do something it copy the modules onto this system for example i am doing copy module copy module or get copied into the target system and execute it then remove those modules but whenever you do this connection local it won't do that additional activity copying modules because anyway so modules are available in the local system that's why sorry so modules are available in the local system so it use the ansible connection local option you cannot specify the same thing for the servers which you want to do on the outside of your ansible system only it helps with the local host or else the local ip address of your system right that's how we define and you can validate it by just executing your again uh, ping command but uh, i'm going to do it on all okay just for testing you can see here only okay that is database server you can see somewhere local host system and it is going to oops we haven't removed previous example yep you can see here local host it's connected but it could be quite faster if it is a lengthy playbook now you cannot see that difference i'm just removing this one or else i can give 100 to 100 106 just let it be okay next thing is you can see here ansible connection ssh ssh for remote systems usually this is the default uh, uh, service which we use so it doesn't uh, required explicitly to specify but you can specify ansible username 
in our case we are using ansible username as uh, ans admin right if you have some other username for some systems uh, in future if we are using docker we may create a docker admin user or if we are using kubernetes there is a admin user we need to use those users as a ansible users if you don't want to create the dedicated user then you can specify that one by giving the ansible user parameter variable sorry so that whenever i connect to this system it is going to use this username rather than default username okay whatever username you are connecting similar way here also you can give something like this all right next inventory alias if you want to give alias name in our case we are just specifying the ip address right so instead of giving ip address i can give the ansible host ip address then i can give the name of this one so let's take this example assume that i have rhl server here right i want to give the same name in my inventory file then what i can do i can edit this inventory file i can give over here this is our rhl server so rhl server and it doesn't require the ansible port number we are using the same port number if you are changing rather than double two if you are using some other port number you need to change it then you need to provide your ansible host parameter and provide the ip address of your red hat system okay so this is how we can define and uh, i can give cat hosts ansible this is web servers right web servers minus i hosts minus m ping i'm using just ping just to validate our inventory file is fine or not that's it you can see here this time the name has came as a rhl server rather than the ip address this is how you can rename your server name as well so from now onwards it to treat it as a rhl server means in the background it is going to connect to this system right next thing this is a, a group variables we can call yep group variables so group variables nothing but in these two systems i want to give the same parameters then what i can do i can give the group name here you can see here group name colon vars group name colon vars nothing but for this group for this group apply these variables whenever i execute something on host to one it takes these two variables and also on host two it is going to take the same if variables are same for all the oh, sorry nodes in this specific specific group then you can use the group variables okay assume that you have few other servers for them it could be another variables you want to pass then you can specify the another group name and variables and you can specify another variables okay so that is about group variables and uh, i think yeah this is for this one southern sorry southeast variables and children we don't deal much here next one yep this is the one of the important way of defining the group where sorry ho hosts and variables slash etc ansible group words and followed by the your uh, file name okay uh, even in my uh, what i can say organization also we are going to mostly use group words whenever we write the right uh, roles and also host words i will tell you the difference between group words and host words it is the important concept uh, let's take the example we have written our ansible playbook right so in the tomcat setup so here we have written ansible playbook now instead of providing our hosts file okay hosts file is not here hosts file is here right but usually we will keep inside our role itself not inside our role we create a separate directory something like this cd tomcat what is this all right let me do the mkdir tomcat 
role just i am giving tomcat role and i will move all my content tomcat related one to here okay so tomcat role under tomcat role we have a ansible playbook as well as role so i can run this ansible playbook now right so ansible playbook I need to give the inventory file so here what we usually do we will create a one more directory called inventory one more directory called inventory and if you see here this is the role this is the playbook this is the inventory under inventory we can create group wares again group wares is a directory group underscore wares so here we have group wares and also we have hosts file here we can specify list of the hosts web servers okay rhl server and the ip address of rhl server is this one ansible hosts right is it the parameter Yep, ansible host ip address then i'm going to take one more ip address something like this we define usually instead of web servers we will have the prod something like this dev next test next i'm giving some ip address 14 15 something like this and then prod usually we can create it like this or else we can create separate folders for each one 16 17 something like this we are going to create okay so here we have group wares and host wares now if i want to give the common variables or common values for all these systems then i can specify in the group wares i will go inside to group wares here we usually create all okay group wares all one more directory and under all you can create your variables assume that i want to give the username for all the systems username is same uh, let's take a example called uh, va username dot yml okay uh, yml is option again so ansible user ans admin you want to give ans admin next http underscore port underscore port colon 80 don't give hyphen for variables hyphen doesn't work like this it doesn't work okay like this you can specify all your variables over here and we call it as a group wares why we call it as a group wares for all our systems the variables is common all our systems variables is common i'm just executing tree how does it looks under group wares again we create all under all we can create multiple files for multiple variables now these variables are called while executing on this host file and these variables again optional if you are uh, giving variables in your ansible playbook itself then uh, sorry yeah ansible playbook itself those are going to have the highest priority than this one it's like a default ones again okay and uh, if you specify here and uh, as well as on defaults defaults will overwrite with this one it will have little highest priority comparatively default variables okay so this is how we can specify variables in the inventory file so if you see here all this is talked about inventory only and if i go outside and uh, tree if i do we have inventory under inventory we have two files sorry one directory and one file file name is hosts and directory name is so group name is wares under wares we have all and uh, username so this is how you need to define your group variables okay similar way we have host variables 
cd inventory and uh, if i go inside to group where sorry not group where here you can specify host where we create mkdir host underscore where hosts or host where okay here what do we do we will under host where we can specify the host name of each system okay so for example i want to specify only specific variables for this system then i can create a group with this particular username sorry with this ip address or uh, what i can say with this host name for example for rhl i want to give the dedicated variable something like this i want to change tomcat port 8090 something like this i want to do now what will happen whenever i run my ansible playbook okay whenever i run my ansible playbook uh, for hosts for hosts whatever default variables required it will take from the group wares then you have the customized variables only for the specific server means if i do cat host file slash server name okay server name and this must be a server name here this must be a server name you need to create with the server name a file you need to create and under server name you should provide your variables so what does it do whenever we are running ansible playbook on rhl server it will take the variables from this file and whatever is not whatever still required those it will call from the group wares and execute the ansible playbook for remaining systems there is no host wares in this uh, particular directory so it will go and take it from the group wares itself all right so that's how host wares will work so let's do what we can do some variables we are using in our sorry ansible playbook right i will change i will provide those from the group wares and will execute our ansible playbook this is our ansible role where we are using defaults cat defaults main okay what we are specifying you can see here user underscore name modi we are providing so i don't want to give the modi name then what i can do i can provide in the group wares okay so i will copy this variable name i'm just going to show you even though how the inventory file get fixed up group wares okay cd all i'm going to give okay username.yml is there so this is what i'm posting and i'm giving Priyanka. All right. So now let's. Uh, uh, what I can say. VA hosts. I'm going to create a separate group for our, our RHL. Anyway, dev is there. I'm going to execute it on a dev system. Okay. So now ansible playbook minus i okay our host file is inventory hosts right this is the our inventory file and uh, our playbook name is tomcat role dot yml minus minus limit okay and dev dev group i'm i'm going to execute only on dev group so let's execute with C option. What it is saying. Okay, sorry, yeah. VA in the inventory file we have given Tomcat, right? So it is looking for the Tomcat group. So it should be all. Now let's execute our Ansible playbook giving dev and we'll see what happens ignoring dev
it is hosts you can see here now it is executing on rhcl okay it is creating user called mark why because we have given in the variables file so we should not give the variables file so what do, what we are going to do is tomcat saltf and uh, i'm going to remove vars okay lot of stuff is there here i'm going to only remove the vars sorry username okay these also we should provide in the group vars itself not in the variables but let it be for time being now let's me let me execute it again so i'm executing only on rhl system oops i need to come out yep let's execute again now you can see here it is creating a user called priyanka uh, from where it has been picked up is from the group wares not from the what i can say uh default variable default variables file okay so this is how we can define our group wares so i'm going to explain one more time so what we have done is we have created a inventory file under inventory file we have group wares under group wares we have given a again all under all we have username.yml where we have specified our username and whatever another variable has given if it is called from our playbook it is going to execute otherwise it won't get execute right so this username is picking up so i haven't specified that you should go to the group wares group wares and pick it up right what i have executed ansible playbook i just specified the inventory I need to come out ansible playbook minus i inventory hosts i specified the hosts this is hosts then what i have done playbook name and sorry tomcat underscore role then minus minus limit okay I have given rhl server instead of rhl server we can give dev as well nothing but a dev group it is going to act and minus c so this is how we have provided and you can see here it is connecting to two systems because in dev group we have two systems and it is using the priyanka username because priyanka username is updated in the group wares okay here we have updated okay that's how the group wares will take and if i give the some other name in the uh, host swear then it prefers to the host swears so let's go and uh, update the host swear okay here we have with the server name so what is the variable name username priyanka right so it will have the priority so o i am taking username priya instead of priyanka i am giving deepika now let's execute again come back to your tomcat role and ansible and let me execute the same command this time For while executing RHL, you can see here it has taken the host swear, host swears, not the group wares. Even the group wares have the some other username. That's how the host wares and group wares does work. But uh, trust me, it will come with the lot of practice because I have taken very long time to understand and uh, work on the group wares and host wares. But if you understand the variables, how does it work? Just you need to create the structure, stru uh, yeah, structure, and uh, you you just need to keep under host wares and group wares. There is no restriction under group wares. Nothing but you can create a group wares. Let me give the tree. So under group wares, wherever whatever you want to do, even all also not required. Okay, you can directly provide your variables. Still group wares 
variables are picked up but whenever you are giving host wares you must remember that file name should be with the server server name okay otherwise it cannot pick up those these changes all right that's how that's how group wares and host wares does work and uh, this is how we usually defines the inventories when we run the roles and mostly in the real world we write ansible roles rather than the playbooks okay any questions but uh, what what you can do is start with the playbooks itself if you want to learn initially i wrote a lot of playbooks then only i could able to understand how roles works and uh, once you start feeling difficulty to work with roles then you can sorry playbooks then you can move on to the roles that's all for today's uh, lecture have a good day and again see you on wednesday